Madness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. <laughs> what? <laughs> Big boy 3000. Uh, I, I screenshot him a couple of times when he was posing, and I was like, he looked like an outcast uh, album cover. So I screenshot him. Uh, I'm using that as a mixtape cover or something. I'm using it as an EP. I was thinking with that black shirt and the chain, and then the red hoodie. I was, I mean, the red scully. I was thinking like an R and B Where's Waldo. <laughs> like if, like if, like if Waldo tried to get uh try tried to uh go to b- join Backstreet or something. You and talk- I mean I mean Blackstreet. That sounded dumb. <laughs> and what up, guys? Welcome to the Partners a Podcast with three friends separated by distance, connected by tech, uh, Zoom, and basically it's just a conversation with the fellas that we record for you guys. Uh, I am your boy Tiz checking in with. Your boy Pat here down here in the Southeast Virginia. I'm um, chilling down here with my homeboy down up in. Uh, uh, What's up, man? This face. I'm in the Tri City area, VA, out uh, here in the country of Blackstone. And I mean country. Uh, we recently got an aerial view of Face's crib. And when I say he is literally in Deliveranceville. Like you expect to hear banjos just looking at the, the terrain of what is surrounding him. He is, he had me scared. I was like, I need to come get you, bro. Like he is completely isolated from the outside world. If, like a if the rapture came the day of tomorrow, he would have no idea any of that happened. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so we got some cool topics lined up for y'all. Um, but first, just want to check in with y'all. How y'all doing this week? What's been up with y'all? Uh, anything going on in y'all lives that y'all want to just throw out there? What's up, man? Goddamn. God damn. Trying to get through the week. <laughs> and that spaz pretty much <laughs> pretty much my whole week this week. But chilling now. <laughs> I'm glad to see you without the chicken yeah, sandwich. <laughs> Face, why you go spaz out? You got the easy job. You be chilling. I need your job. That's why no. you be ready to spaz out. It's a lot of silence. It's a whole lot of silence. Yeah. So when you have one person that breaks your silence, it's easy to spaz. <laughs> so I, I wish kid. I had silence. I'm not spazzing out because of my job. I'm spazzing out because of my friend. It's been a very trying week with him. Uh, oh, yeah, I understand that. I have, have a five-year-old that wants oh, yeah. to be 50. He wants to be my father. So we're having some power struggles. <laughs> so that's always New cool. Alpha. You said what? New Alpha? What is No, 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 He's no. The new Alpha. Oh, he better beta or omega his ass hold up. Or he be getting Kappa kicked on up out of this damn house. He'll be living out in that little Fisher Price house in the backyard. You better get him a trade because he damn sure can't. He ain't strong enough to push the lawnmower. He damn sure lazy as hell. So I, I'd love to see what he gonna figure out. But God bless him. You know we gonna get. Leave the little man alone. Uh, I have no choice. You know he is he is little me. So uh, it's basically as as much as he pisses me off. Mind what I'm gonna do, but uh, so first up on the docket today, guys, uh, an election happened since the last time we met. Um, we actually officially now have a new president elect. Well, I will say it will become official on December 14th once the electors have officially elected him. But we have a person on paper that they're calling our president elect and Joe Biden. Um, what are y'all thinking about now that it's over, they kind of the counts are done, etc. The lawsuits are thrown out. Okay, I see the golf clap over there. What, what does that mean? What, what is that? What is that a feeling of there? Is that relief? Uh, uh, it's a feeling of uh, a little bit of positivity. 
you know, I'm glad to say the swing in a democratic way. I'm not a member of either party. Let me say that first and foremost. But I'm glad to see a swing in the other way. A repeat of the last four years would have drove me insane. <laughs> um, because a lot of ignorant stuff was coming from that office. And it was trickling down to the common man, thinking they could do a lot of ignorant stuff too. And it was leading to a lot of dangerous situations for a lot of ignorant people, for people to react with ignorance. So hopefully with this new change, we'll see more positivity come back to the light. Because that's my main thing. You feel me? I, I really couldn't deal with another four years of ignorance from the highest man. level on the land. I it mean, just didn't make sense to me. Mm. So this next man seems like he got common sense. I feel yeah. like I feel like I feel more comfortable after the electoral college do what they have to do because we were all feeling like Hillary won and then come, you know, the electoral college time, it was like, what? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'll feel more comfortable then, but uh, it's still well, a side. Well, you know, the difference with that is that Hillary did not win the electoral votes. She won the popular vote, but she didn't win enough states to get the electoral vote number on her side. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden got the electoral vote number on his side. Okay. But what I'm worried about is electors in each state. So like say your state got 20 electors or whatever. Mm -hmm. In some in some states they're not binding, which means that even though what the popular vote in that state is with their and they're supposed to vote, there's mm -hmm. nothing saying they have to. And right now the Republicans got this coup going on where they're like, the main reason they're holding up the votes and like trying to like keep poking at this and hold it up as long as possible is because of the runoff elections in some of these Senate races in states like mine. So like mm -hmm. down here in Georgia, like we got a runoff election coming up and it's like a big seat open, you know, John Lewis Congress seat is open this term. So we're trying to get that feel so a lot of the Republicans, that's why they're fighting. So I, mm. what I'm scared of is them trying to influence the electors in some way in those non-binding states, which some of the states where it's contested is. Like Philadelphia is one of them, I think, that is not binded. Um, and that's, a, that's one of the cruxes of where Joe Biden gets his majority from. So like in states like that, I'm, until December 14th and, it, and their votes are certified that they voted with the popular vote in their state, uh. I'm still hesitant. Because it's Trump we talking about. So it ain't, ain't nothing off limits with this guy. He beat in yeah, that child, Russia collude and come up with some scheme. And next thing I know, he beat and named himself emperor of North America, some weird shit, and we all be messed up. So, you know, I don't know. I, I'm That's that's what I'm saying. I'm optimistic. It feels like a relief that at least the first stage of things has subsided. Um, I love the the joy that it's kind of brought to a lot of people who had kind of felt just really like, I can't take nothing else. So I feel like I'm glad to see those people in my life who had like that weight on their back are like, please don't let this, I can't take nothing. I can't, this came, not this too. So like to see them having that, that just collective yeah. breath, that was cool. But we'll see these, what happens. These memes are hilarious. I don't know. Oh man, the, everything that they've been oh. saying, like they say, Trump the says. This one is still to me the Derrick Henry on Josh Norman meme, where like mm. Derrick Henry is running up the sideline and he got like Joe Biden's head on, and Trump <laughs> is on Josh Norman's. Uh, Trump head is on Josh Norman's body, and he chasing him, and Derrick Henry's like, "Bow!" It's stiff off, <laughs> and he go flipping. Oh my God! You know, um, Trump is not trying to leave. Like, he's saying that he's going to just stay in that bitch. Like, he, he just, like, he's just saying he, like, the, the whole... Getting up up out of, do you know that the military is allowed to get rid of trespassers? And if oh, on December 14th, them electors say that Joe Biden is the president? I know. Or, or uh, <laughs> right after Joe Biden is sworn in, you will also see in the background in the distance... A nice police escort with some uh, military police escorting Trump right on up out of there with his McDonald's in his arms and Melania waving back at him as she gets in the car, goes the opposite direction. Because, uh, yeah, this old yeah. Chain. And I wouldn't be surprised if the police detail that escorts him out of there as a trespasser go ahead and just take a right on in and book him 
for a lot of those charges that he tried to dodge. Because, uh, yeah, this fool mm-hmm. tried to pardon himself. Yeah. This fool tried to pardon himself. This this gonna be on on order. This. Man, this this stuff, man. I tell you, I, the only people I feel bad for right now is comedians because <laughs> they're gonna miss a lot. This is this yeah. Is gonna, man. So what? This is stuff fiction movies are made of, bro. Like this got to be a comedy with like Tom Hanks or some as true. <laughs> like this is not real life. But I'm glad it's over. Yeah. We at least have a real person back in the White House that's like thinking, breathing, you know, somewhat mm-hmm. normal, you know, yeah. other than groping people and stuff, but, you know, somewhat normal. Who actually has a history in politics. Yes. At least yeah. somebody who's competent and, and knowledgeable in how to do this. Diplomatic. And we'll, yeah. It won't get us nuked in the next three years, you know. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> but uh, speaking of kind of getting violent, um, Obviously, down here in Georgia, it was big news for us over the past uh, week or so, week and a half. Uh, King Vaughn got shot at Club Opium down here, a uh, little hookah lounge type spot after I was joined. Um, it was big in rap because, you know, he was like one of them little young necks up and comers. He was down with Dirk and them. Um, but, you know, when rap beef goes wrong yet again, you know, we grew up with you know, our era was the Big and Park, and now these kids are just, they got a Big and Park literally every month, it seems like now. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's right. ridiculous. And I then mean, on top of that, you got Mo3 just getting shot and killed in Dallas. Dallas. And then Lil Boosie goes down to celebrate Mo3's death at like a little, some type of event to honor him, and he gets shot. Now he's in the hospital with a hole in his leg. So like yeah. it's another black matter right now. An- another he, rapper. He really don't see that. That's big. That's that's a big question right there. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, no cop killed it. Uh, uh, blacks are shooting each other, so you know it's never is a big news when that happens. Exactly. Yeah. And an- another rapper that just got shot right in Texas. Um, Benny the Butcher, he got shot in the leg in an attempted robbery. That From happened. Griselda? Yeah, that was yesterday. And that was in Houston. I don't know what's going on in Texas. You hear about that one? Jesus! That happened just yesterday. I think the, um, oh. the news just broke like a couple of hours ago. For real. Yo, what is happening to like, young it's, black it's, men? Yo, they just like... I tell you what it is, man. Dude scared to take an L in a fight, yeah. man. Because, mm-hmm. like, when I look at even King Von shooting, like, when you look at the, the surveillance tape, King Von rolled up on them, no weapon, no, no, no yeah. nothing. Yeah. Just me by myself giving you the beats real quick. Putting these, right. putting these grown man hands all over you. Shoot and the pause, pause. That, that sounded crazy. Pause. Um, but, you know what I mean? Like, just straight old school... I'm going to beat you up. You're going to walk away from it, though. You're going to be able to go home. I'm going to go home at the end of the night. You might put some ice on some stuff, but everything all right. And these young boys is like, soft, man. I'd rather shoot you and end your life than possibly just have a black eye or a busted lip from actually manning up and proving myself based off of what I done said online. They're doing their job for them. It's voluntary self genocide. That's all it is. Voluntary self genocide. You're killing off your own culture with no no regard for it because you don't have no value for another man's life. I can understand in the, in the gang terms, it's just mine against yours. I can I can definitely understand that. But at no. what point do you the same people that's participating in these Black Lives Matter riots and Black Lives Matter this, but you're turning around and, and killing the same Black man that you was just marching with. Uh-huh. Did it not matter then? That's my whole thing. Like, now nah, we've all been in situations where, you feel me, it could have went right or left. But at the end of the day, most of my situations like that have been with another Black man. Uh-huh. Sad to say, you feel me? It's sad to say, real. but I blame the internet. That's only like that because that's that's what I'm around. 
I blame the internet. Yeah, don't just around black people. Cause we grew up, uh, you know what I mean? Like we had our, our share of runs in the street, you know what I'm saying? So we, we definitely understand the, the mind state of somebody that's in gang culture or there's, there's just in street culture in general where you feel like, you know, it's survival time out there. I get that. But I think what the biggest difference is, is we had social skills. We had, we, we still grew up in an era where we had to still have face-to-face -face interactions. There was going to be a consequence for your words or your body language, or how you approach the situation, because you had to see this person. Now, 90% of kids' communication is through a box like this. So for them, I can type whatever online, and all you see is my avatar. You see a picture of Goku or, or Mufasa or some simple, some dumb. You don't even see my real name. So I can say whatever to you and it don't matter. And people gonna like my comments and you know think I'm hard because of what I'm saying online. Or I can get on Instagram live and say da 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 because I'm at home and you 300,000 miles away or whatever. But this, I think that's the problem is like these kids never see the face to face thing of it. Like when I see kids in school, they don't talk trash to each other face to face, it's always behind a text or a group chat or I got on Instagram when I got home and talked to you. Not when you saw them all day in the class when, when this person could have popped off and you don't look, they look like they had a bad day and they ain't trying to have it. They want none of that then. Everybody was quiet. But then we get home and we, you know, trigger finger. So I, I think that the biggest difference is like there's no face to face accountability until now when I see you. Now, because I done talked it up so much online, now it's up. And now everybody around knows our business. Whereas when I was growing up, if somebody wanted to fight you, it might be you and that person. And until you was actually about to throw hands, until y'all actually met up to fight, it won't no whole bunch of like, let's keep circulating. It was, I want to fight you. Go tell him. Or... Walk straight up to each other. Hey, man, what you said about da-da-da-da, face-to-face, we going to do it, and then let's get it done. So it won't time for no big crowd. Now they hype it up online for like a month. Then see, forget, we're both musicians. We're going to have to be at the same parties or venues or concerts. We're going to see each other. Our crews who are also musicians, they're going to see each other without us. So now we've built this beef up just from trolling online, trying to be – Hard just to make some just to make some clicks go off. Now when we see each other, we gotta back that up. And now we're we can't really fight because we're not used to doing that. We don't we're not used to physical altercations in person. We're used to punch, you know, typing a boxing glove or typing a pistol emoji. So now we see each other, we gotta back it up because all the crowd around, we can't we can't lose our clout now. It looks soft. We can't actually go up and say, you know what, man. I was being dumb on that. It won't, it won't even all that. We ain't got to do all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or we can't, hey, y'all put the guns in. Like, let's just go square it off. Hey, let's me and you by ourselves. No cameras, nothing. We go around the corner, leave our crews here. We handle it. We come back. It's none of that. It's now I got to look like I'm harder. And now I got a bunch of videos with my guns in my videos. So I got to make sure they see I'm strapped because I can't think nobody think I'm a punk or I was lying. Or I'm going to lose uh. my body. Ain't nobody going to want to like my videos. This stuff's stupid, man. Just stupid. Big stupid. But yeah. And then uh yeah. I don't know if y'all saw. That. Oh, go ahead. Yes, sir. It makes people want to go out there and just do stupid shit just to see they can get clicks like that's one thing and then i'm not sure about like as far as the um just a random person trying to just come up on somebody or whatever or what I, I know what king does seem like it's more personal but was it another person i think it was another person involved right that actually um yeah i think somebody it was somebody it, was, it wasn't just him the guy that it was like um yeah 
I think it, the the whole part about you know always that's in you know social media the whole time, just saying what's up, but this, that, and the third. That person may be straight from the streets and whatnot. So, and you bring that around in that public area, he's going to respond just like he's been responding in the streets or whatever. So it's also like who you bring around you. You know, like you know, um, like. Most people, if they is the crazy one, they shouldn't bring at what social event. You know what I'm saying? At certain places, at this and a third. And then I know in some cases with these rappers, they may have, they may just built their entourage. They might just have bought their entourage out. I'm not sure about these two gentlemen. Uh, I think King Von feels. I feel like his just off of the. The way he come across his people around him is probably like day one people or what? Yeah, that's what his manager said that uh, the guys played. that he was around that was pretty much his guys from the they, back when they were growing up. So yeah, it's like a, a lot of these rappers they have like bought bought off entourages. Tech, you get what I'm saying? Like I don't know that whole culture is like weird you know said as far as like they go from place uh and get paid by total strangers and and everything um they just met to go uh you know do uh a an event or whatever host at an event mm -hmm. perform at an event or whatever and you got to trust these people and you might not know them at all yeah. just doing business or whatever and at the time they may know hey i got this person this person you don't know who's around them they may be waiting for you to come down because they know yeah. their homie is the from um of that shit so and that's that, the crazy part that, it seems that, like that rap been... culture that rap tour culture is Mm -mm. Yeah, like uh, a lot of that. I, when I look at a lot of that stuff, I just feel like it's a setup anyway. Period. I don't know. I feel like King Von might have went over the deep end, but like the other few moments, is I feel like that was straight setups, of course. But yeah, that's just how I felt about it. Yeah, you know, uh, Ti had a lot of flack for what he had to say about. Well, what he says was not exactly about King Von, but. The timing of it was just horrible. Like two days after the dude got shot, uh, T.I. put up mm -hmm. a post that said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but basically it said, Atlanta is a progressive city full of black excellence. Please stop coming here to kill each other. And he signed it management. And this is like two days after King Von got shot. And obviously, you know, King Von yeah, and uh, Rondo Rondo, Lil Tim, all them guys that were involved in that situation. None of them are Atlanta natives. So, uh, it had a lot of people online. Um, some of the people, um, I think, uh, who was it? King Vaughn's sister was really mad and was coming at T.I. pretty hard. 50 Cent spoke up on it. was like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And then T.I. put out a statement about not uh, it not being about King Vaughn. And he was not, he was cool with King Vaughn or whatever. But basically people were still kind of like giving him a lot of flack for the timing of it. And like, it seemed like, if it wasn't about him, it was weird timing. So, yeah, I wonder if that is why T.I. is not on the yeah, yeah. versus anymore against uh, Jeezy now. Maybe just the flack from that and the publicity from that was just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But speaking oh, of that right. versus, you know I mean? Uh, they did replace T.I. with Gucci Mane. Uh, how do y'all feel about this? Who, who, who y'all got here in this in this battle? Battle of the trap, the, the trap kings. I don't know. I, I personally, it's a toss up for me because they both got hits, they both got hood hits, they both got commercial hits. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, it all depends on what's at that time. It's it's crazy because you know, Jeezy got a cult following, Gucci got a cult following, so you can, uh, and then you never thought they would actually. What'd you say? You that, they, you, that they, was, you never that thought they would actually what? 
I didn't think they would ever do this peacefully. Man. You know, they've been like, well, you know, Jeezy seemed like he'd been trying, but Gucci seemed like he'd been running with it. Like, like yeah. Bruh, so. This is big, if, especially if they if they managed to get them both in the same room on the same, like, like sitting beside each other, like Monica and Brandy, because this ain't no Monica and Brandy type thing where one of them smacked each other back in the in the late nineties or something, and it was it. Like somebody got murdered over this beef here. So this is like, oh crap! Like these two dudes together. This is about to be written. Just the just the history between them and getting them in the same room is going to be monumental if they make that happen. Um, but. So I'm gonna give y'all some of the hits or the singles from Gucci Mane, and I'm gonna give y'all some singles from Jeezy, and y'all tell me like who y'all think might actually pull this one out. So we got a uh, wake up, we got wake up in the sky. This is Gucci Mane singles right here. Wake up in the sky. I get the bag. Ten seventeen. Lemonade. Which I know Tony said. With, I mean, uh, Pat said with his favorite joint. Uh, we got Freaky Girl. Both. Um, Icy. Which is a shared song between him and Jeezy. Uh, first day out the feds, legendary freestyle there. Um, I think I love her. Could you oh. help me? Um, my kitchen. <laughs> Who is him? Go ahead. Uh, pills. Wasted. Big hit. Wasted. That was crazy. Um, bricks. Yeah. Swing yeah. my door. Making love oh. to the money. Yeah, that's the shit. I'm a dog. Big booty. Yeah, that's Daddy. the shit too. Eat it up. Photo shoot. Big cat. Big boy diamonds. Poo shiesty. Are we getting into some of them I have never heard before now. Buck in the system. Cutting <laughs> off fingers. Mm, I, don't I heard that, but... we don't love them. Zone six. Coca. Coca, Coca. All right, so them like the main songs that I guess Gucci has put out over the years. Mm -hmm. So now we get into Jeezy catalog. We got Put On, Soul Survival, mm -hmm. All There, mm -hmm. Can't Tell Me Nothing, mm -hmm. Leave You Alone. Mm -hmm. This is about to get ugly for Gucci. Mm -hmm. God. <coughs> when I'm reading them mm -hmm. out loud now, like, like just these, these first five I said, all of them are definitely like top 20 hits. Uh, mm. I love it. Me okay. Mm. Street, street hit. Way too gone. Trap or die. Classic. Mm. And then what? Lose my mind. Super free. Go get her. Yeah. Standing ovation. <laughs> Mr. President. I'm so hood remix. Seen it all. Gangster music. Tear it up. Never ever. My hood, F A M E, go crazy, That's dreaming. I do, amazing. Trap star, get your mind right. I still know these songs. I I haven't fell off yet. Where like I'm, I don't know where I'm at no more. Still there. Hustlers ambition. Oh my, I hadn't yeah. even said that. Oh my god. Yeah. Bottom of the map. Get right, holy ghost. <laughs> bottom of the map, yo. Bottom of the T.I., come back, T.I. Gucci can't do this. He can't do this. Gucci's bottom. not equipped. I love bottom. Gucci. I love what Gucci stands for in so many ways, but. The only thing. This is that, get medieval. The only thing that will work for Gucci is if he timed his songs just right. Like, if. Bruh. My thing first. is this though. At it, any it, point, at any point in this, what song? Please tell me this. Mm. What song does Gucci have that he can play at the set, play right after or right before a standing ovation and win that round? What song does he have? Period. That can play with that song. I don't know, man. I ain't like you but know. The what I'm horns drop. Mm -hmm. I just want you to think back to the like at any moment. In our whole, like, think back musically to like, I remember, like, Jeezy got them songs, and like, I remember where I was at when that song was played and the reaction. I don't, I don't if, think it's. If Jeezy played Go Crazy, 
That when they played in the Ujis and all the dope, like Gucci has nothing that can play with that. That's he, that's like it's a rap. Good day. If Jeezy play any of the the the, the days collaborations that he have every five years <laughs> or whatever. Uh-huh. Soul yeah. Survivor. We talk about number one pop hit, not not number one rap chart, number one top Billboard top one hundred type number one, like the real number one, like Michael Jackson type number one. Like that's, I don't know, but this is gonna get. I hadn't until this moment. I had not looked at their catalog side by side and like really thought about it. I was just more thinking of like you know individually, like. But this is gonna get ugly, bro. Mm. Like I'm saying, the only way he could win, um, I don't, I don't think it would be beneficial for him to go first. I think oh, no. it would, I would think it'd be beneficial for Gucci to go to go last or whatever, so he'll know how to counter, especially if he got a good DJ with him. And yes. His- he gonna need a DJ that can switch songs quickly. Like, okay, no, don't play that one. Switch that one around and put this one here. Cause I'm looking at at least five songs just off the top, just off the first ten songs they got listed for Jeezy. And those out of those five, I don't see no five songs that can go anywhere with those five songs. So that's at least a chunk of this battle that is definitely Jesus. Out of twenty oh. songs or however many songs they do. Five going to Jeezy, that like yeah. yeah, like just like just when them beats drop, the general consensus in the comments gonna I'm be saying. just fire emojis, fire emojis. Do you say faith? Right off top, this is Jeezy. I'm sorry. After you start listing titles and listing names, I'm just saying Jeezy. Yeah, it's about to get ugly. Oh, God, I, I, regardless of what Gucci do, I'm saying she's. Yes, it's about to get ugly. Unless Gucci got some new music that ain't nobody heard that is so fire, it's, it's like, like it's guaranteed number one right now. Because otherwise, I, I ooh, ooh. yeah, I guess we all, well, yeah. I mean, they both got new. Matter of fact, I think Gucci easy just came out with something this year, but I feel like, mm, I don't know. I, I don't. I got a bias because when we used to go out, it was Jeezy going. You know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> That's what like, I, when I started reading them names, I was like, <clears throat> I remember exactly what club we was at, what what like what the crowd looked like when the horns drops, what everybody looked like singing along to this. Like I remember, like oh, I remember I had on that long black tee and them jeans and them sneakers, and I remember it was this crew and it was this. Like I re- like it's moments. With those songs, I remember we was riding to this to this CD at this time, and then he came out with this, this, and we was riding to that at that time. Like it, it's visual. It's 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 I live Jeezy. I love I love Gucci, but I live Jeezy. Like he was a, a he was a part of the soundtrack to my life at a at a point. So are they they're doing twenty songs, right? So I don't even know. It's going down actually right now. So I have no oh, idea, but I'm gonna watch the recording of it later oh, on. I feel like I'm my they, prediction. Hmm? My prediction is cheesy wins. Easy though. And I think it's gonna be ugly. Um, I say, I say was um twelve eight. <laughs> twelve eight, Jeezy. Twelve eight. I give That's it that. actually, re- I can see that. Well, but I, I'm, go- I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to give it, if they got 20 songs, I'm going to say the score is going to be 15-5. I, I feel like Gucci that. got some booty songs and like the Wasted Joint. If he played them against the right Jeezy song at the right time, he can like steal those. But like outside of like Five songs Gucci might got. I don't see no chance for him against them. Like, it's just hit after hit after hit. And, I mean, Jeezy hits is them, like, the crossover hits mm. that the 
that the trap love though, like that was the trap anthem that just happened to get all of the white people to love them too. So it's like it's like them super mega like bombs. He got he he's throwing all haymakers. It's not a jab in the bunch. Gucci got like four good hooks and a nasty right cross. Jeezy got them that, jump. jabs and limp noodles. It's a wrap. So uh yeah, the partner's prediction. Jeezy, easy. It's Jeezy now. Now, I, just, I think I was going to say Jeezy got the jumps that you you it'll be that one trap song while you at the white bar or whatever, and you were like, I know this is going to be the one song that they're going to play that I like that I can wow out on. It's going to be this one. Please play it tonight. Please. Yes, that's the one. So yeah, Jeezy. Jeezy, Jeezy, Jeezy. It is a consensus. The potter's prediction, Jeezy. Um, so my favorite topic of tonight, I'm, I don't even know why I'm excited to talk about this. I have no idea why I even care about this topic as much as I do, but it has genuinely been a source of entertainment for me for, oh my God, literally a, a decade now. Um, it's been like my little secret, uh, my guilty pleasure, if you will. The Umar Johnson FDMG Academy scandal. So for the partners out there that just have never heard of this guy or have no idea what I'm talking about, there's this brother named Umar Johnson who um, is a clinical school psychologist and a former school principal and I'm using air quotes for those that are getting the audio version of this because you'll get into, I'll get into why I'm using air quotes, but this is what he came into the black community as. And um, he came out around, I think it was like maybe 2010, 2000, late 2009, 2010, 2011, somewhere in that three year span, he started popping up in like videos of his speeches and audio of his speeches started coming out. He was making his way around like the conscious community and the black lecture, lecture circuit or whatever. And he had some cool ideas because he was um, coming with a new perspective on just like the school to prison pipeline, um, thoughts around like how kids are, how black kids are overdiagnosed um, with ADHD and other uh, mental disabilities that they may or may not have. And just, he, he was speaking and he sounded knowledgeable. He sounded like he was really for the call. So he got a lot of attention really quick. He became like one of those quick guys that like a lot of people go to. Um, cool, he was in Hidden Colors. He was in one of the Hidden Colors films, one of the first Hidden Color films. Um, so that really blew him up, um, but yeah. So anyway, as he started to get big on the electric circuit, he started talking about this school he wanted to do. It's this all black boys school he wants to do called the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy for Black Boys. And it was like a bunch of people was down with it. And it was like back in 2012, 13, maybe somewhere back then. But anyway, I remember that's this is 2012, 2013 is when I really got into him. And I, I really was like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah, that's that's what's up. So he started fundraising. He was saying he was going to try to buy a campus. He started saying he was going out around the country, looking around for schools that he could buy and start this wonderful black school for black boys that would be all Pan-African and would teach him economics. And, you know, he had the black community riled up and ready to go for him. So he ended up, he had like a GoFundMe and all these other little fundraisers or whatever. And he ended up raising like $2 million and he had a bid in on St. Paul's College in Virginia. Um, Storley back University, you know, like the school had kind of went bankrupt and they was up for sale. So people was like, yeah, let's get to school. He had raised like $2 million. Uh -huh. Ooh, the bid went through. Um, the school ended up selling to like an Asian collaborative group or like some type of funding group that like some hedge capital group or something like that, whatever. But he didn't get the building. So, you know, the community was sad, but he was like, you know, I'm gonna still be looking for another school, da da da, da. This was back in like 2014, 2015, maybe, right? But the $2 million was never discussed again. At least not by Uma, it was just. So just dropped that, school didn't get bought. 
a couple months go by, he's back fundraising again to try to look for a new school. So he started fundraising again. This time between then and 2019, last year, he raised over $750,000 that he claims that he raised. We don't know that. We have no books to see. He will not open up books or anything like that. Claims that raised $750,000. I'm using air quotes again, people who can't see me. Goes, buys, purchases a built a, a campus, a little a high school campus in Wilmington, Delaware that was boarded up and abandoned. By, it was a charter school that had been built or whatever. So he buys the building for like $400,000 that he said, we can verify that because we have the public records on this building. I'll get more into that in a second. So he buys this building for $400,000. And then this is when I started hearing about the Umar Johnson scam. So he buys this building for $400,000. Supporters of this guy start to like question things. Okay, so with the $350,000 you saying we got left, can we repair the building? Let's go ahead and get this open. He's telling people every day, we got the buildings. We're going to open this school in in the, what is it, the summer of 2019. He bought the school in February of 2019. We're going to open on August 21st, 2019. We're going to open our doors. So the people, you know, it's supposed to be $350,000 left. That's a lot of money to make some repairs. Uh, supposedly the buildings are in good condition. But he's still fundraising for repairs. He's saying he ain't got enough for repairs. So the supporters started to get confused and you start seeing these videos popping up like, but well, what is who am I doing with the money? How come he doesn't have enough money to repair the buildings? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So all of a sudden I start seeing these videos pop up on YouTube. So now I'm down the rabbit hole. So apparently these buildings Uma bought over a million dollars in repairs need to be done to these buildings, but he's not telling nobody that. He's saying it can be done for like a few hundred thousand dollars. But he won't tell nobody what happened to the $350,000 he's supposed to have left over. After he said he raised $750,000, the school is verified at being purchased for $400,000. They got the records on that, the tax number, all they got that pulled up. The, the receipts, he bought it for $400,000. But he's still fundraising and has been fundraising on this school Till this day, since February 2019, not a door open, not a person has seen him actually get keys to go into the building, but he keep on posting these dang on videos on Instagram and Facebook Live. Now, this is where it get even more juicy. So on his videos for the past year, you see him going into these buildings. You never see a key open, but you always see him up there doing some repairs or talking to contractors. When I said those words, I put air quotes up again here, audio only people. So you always see this, but you never see him take a key himself and unlock a door. But it's always a locksmith around opening up some door for him. He always talking about, oh, yeah, I got the locksmith opening up this storage room over here for me so I can see what's in there. And we can, you know, see what needs to be done as far as cleaning out this room. He says a bunch of contradictory stuff like he got a security system that the owners from the last school let him use until he get it turned over his name. But then the school gets, uh, somebody comes to the school and like breaks a window and like tries to start a fire at the school. No alarm is there though. Now he's the next day after the fire, he online talking about he need to raise money so he can get pay for the security system. But you said you had a security system, Umar. In February, 2019, he said he gonna go get the lights on on Monday. This is February, 2019. The first time you see him with lights on in this building is this year, literally a week ago. I saw that. This is hilarious. The man was outside. Somebody posted a video on YouTube saying they rolled past the school and saw him outside smoking weed. So this, so the counteracted. Five minutes later, he hops on Instagram live, smoking a a game cigar. Talk about you know I, I'm out here blowing smoke to the Orishas and the Ogoons. I'm out here blowing libations to the ancestors. So you know to bless Marcus. <laughs> Oh my God. I can't make this mess up, dude. The man is on tape screaming, talking about he, he's going to to liberate black people. We're going to have to go on the streets 
and 10% of black boys will not be able to be saved. So we're going to have to put them to sleep. Quote, for good! He literally yells it like that. That nigga's crazy. <laughs> now, on top of this, he got a bunch of fishy stuff with his credentials where they say he has a uh, if you look online, they you pull up his doctorate degree that he supposedly has. In his year of dissertation, all of the dissertations on there, you can pull up the PDF file and actually read the entire dissertation of that PhD doctoral candidate from that year that got a degree. His is the only one that has a PDF not found. Oh. You can see it's submitted, but it's like locked so that nobody can actually open the file. In his year that he supposedly graduated from this doctoral program. At this school, what is it, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine or something, every year's ceremonies from their summer and winter walking ceremonies are videoed. You can, find, you can pull up the videos online. His year, there's no video available. The Illuminati. There's a lot of stuff that's like, you can tell he was in college for something. He, he did something now. He it's submitted something. Year. But did he get a degree? We don't know. He said he was a school psychologist, but nobody knows what school he worked for. He was a school principal. But at the same time, he was claiming to be a school principal. He was also overseas for extended periods of time doing lectures over there. And on Instagram Live almost every day, all day, still making videos as he was going about doing lectures. He claims to be the most requested scholar of the 20th century but is always trying to find somewhere that will let him host his book signing or let him host his event. Fool put a book signing up at a barbershop. The barbershop went on Instagram live and said, we have no affiliation with Umar Johnson whatsoever. There is no book signing at our establishment. We will be, see we will be reaching out to the authorities to have our name cleared up on this matter. Like this is the stuff that's been happening for the past year. Now, this is the funny. This is the gotcha, gotcha. And then I want y'all to just give me your takes. This is a man, again, who was saying he wants to open a, a school for black boys, and he wants people to send their black boys to him to teach them. So now he had a podcast interview with Lord Jamal. Oh, yeah. This was his chance to, like, clear up stuff in front of the black community. Lord Jamal is a pretty respected voice in the black conscious community, especially Mind you, a week after this interview, Umar is supposed to have a book signing at the Nation of Gods and Earth Temple up in uh, New York City. Lord Jamar is a member of the Nation of Gods and Earth, the 5% nation for those people in the podcast world that don't know, right? So you're supposed to have a summit at this venue that this man is a prominent member of, and you're on his podcast. This is your chance to clear your name, Umar. Go. So obviously, over the past year, it's been a bunch of YouTube videos popping up about Umar, like exposing his little scandals, his lies, catching him in tax fraud and catching him in like, OK, well, he said this, but this is what's really going on behind the scenes. This is what the electric bill is on this building that he ain't paid in this long. This is the tax bill. He owes over $100,000 in taxes on these buildings that he ain't paid. Like, it's crazy. Videos popping up everywhere. So when he goes on, excuse me, Lord Jamal's podcast. Lord Jamal asked him about it. As any sane person would, you come on my podcast, I'm going to ask you about the things that are going on online about you that people would know you for. So they get to talking about the school. So Lord Jamal asked, like, well, where's the money from the school? You know, they say you bought it for 400000 Umar started laughing, like, oh, that's what they say, huh? Yeah, I don't, you know, it was more than that, but you know. Now, mind you, you ain't said it, it's worth 400000 This what the, 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 the bill of sale online, like the actual records, the public record says that it's sold. So whatever you saying, no matter. This is what the state of Wilmington, this is what the state of Delaware said that the building sold for. So we're going to go with the state. They probably know a little better than you. So uh, Jamal was asking them, like, you know, where's the extra money from? You know, what you said you raised. You know, they say you raised over 750000 Where's the extra money? How come it's taking you so long to get the repairs done on the building so you can open? You know, you said you were going to open in August of 2019. It's now, at this time, it was what? Uh, maybe September of 2020. 
you know, what's going on. What's the what's the whole of what are the difficulties? So Uma going, you know, we just trying to get the donations to open up. You know, the HVAC alone is $250,000, you know, my brother. So with the money we had left over from the donations, you know, we can handle the electrical repairs. We can handle the plumbing repairs. We can handle the roofing repairs. We can get the building painted. We can handle the cleanup. And the, and the security system. But what we cannot handle is the 250,000 for the HVAC. So that's what we're currently to collecting donations for. And then he started plugging his PayPal and his uh, Cash App and his other fundraising devices. So Jamal is like, well, you know, it's been a long time that you've been working on this. And let me just tell you a little story, you know, that may be able to help you. So Lord Jamal is going into about a story about his father-in-law, son that opened a school himself up in New York started with nothing. He was like, you know, but instead of waiting around, you know, and waiting around for handouts, he just took the little money he could get up, bought a tr bought a trailer, and he started with three trailers, and that was the school. And then he just continuously just built on, got new trailers as he got more grades and as he got more fundraising in from the state and from other in investors. And then eventually he worked his way up to, you know, a Back in 2000, I think he ended up getting like this beautiful building, like modern school building that he was able to purchase. And, you know, now the school is thriving, da, da, da. And Jamal was basically like telling him that, that story as in like, you know, if my father-in-law can do it, you know, I believe in you. I think you could too. Maybe it's just you need the proper, maybe it's some, maybe you need help in like how to fundraise in a different way that may help you. Maybe you need help in as far as like, you know, experts in real estate and, experts in making those connections in the political area in that place that can pull some strings and help you get your school off the ground quicker or whatever the case. Uma took it to a fence and went off. And when I say started yelling and cursing for a good 10 minutes, I mean speaker bursting yelling and cursing. Like sounding like you're in the type of yelling and cursing like we would have done back in the day if we was about to go ahead and start busting heads real quick. So, and, and in the middle of this yelling and cursing, Umar is saying things like, I don't need no help. And I don't need to answer no questions to nobody unless they are donors. I need funds. I don't need no help. I'm an expert. I'm the number one psychologist of the 20th century. And I'm the most requested black stock. And I got the friends that are educators. And I got the friends. And I don't need no help. I need, don I need donors. I need people that want to donate. And then in the middle of this, he started plugging the Loyal Donors Club, where people can sign up for a monthly thing where they donate every month for different tiers. And you will get added to a WhatsApp group where you will get information and updates on what's going on with FDMG Academy. A WhatsApp group. Now, mind you, some of the tiers of this is like the Diamond donor who will pay $1,000 a month and donate to the school $1,000 a month. You get added to a WhatsApp group. That's your perk. But anyway, so he's going on this rant. So he does all of this screaming and yelling. So now he looks like more of a fraud, right? Uh. But now the backlash starts because a lot of people see this podcast because Lord Jamal got a pretty big podcast in that black conscious community. So like a lot of people was coming at Umar's head like, dude, like why don't you just show us what's going on with this money, man? You need to have some transparency, da 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 so now Umar is in panic mode. So all of a sudden he started posting a bunch of videos where you're seeing him like working on paint samples and talking to painters and getting estimates on how much it'll cost to paint the building. And you see him in the building more like shuffling stuff around and cleaning outside rooms and doing all this right. So the people that was making videos about Umar, they started posting videos saying like, of course he's going to paint the building first because that's the most visible thing he can do to make it look like he's doing something worthwhile with the school while still collecting money. And it's the cheapest thing he can do. Like it's going to cost money to actually fix something for the electrical, but those are paying on there. Now the donors are reinvigorated. They look like something's happening. Let's donate more money. So in the midst of posting the video, he does two things wrong. First of all, he got the loyal donors up there painting the building after he had said he was going to get an estimate from the painting company to come out there and paint the building. So now he posts a video of him out there thinking he cool, like, look at the loyal donors. You know, we got an FDMG. It's just for the loyal donors. They're the only ones that can come up here and paint with us today. You know, we up here painting the building. You know, now you're looking at these middle-aged women. Women got, like, some of the women got to be in their 50s, early 60s. 
It's cold in Delaware. You got them outside on a Saturday afternoon out here painting the outside of a big school building, right? You got men and, and they wives who done drove from like Kansas City who already, mind you, is the loyal donor. So they're already paying you every month donating to your school. Now they just came up here and they paying your school for free. So that was the first mistake. A lot of people was turned off by that, but this is the second mistake. This fool showed himself in the building with the lawyer donors walking around in the classroom with the lights on, flicking on light switches. Now, this is the first time in a year anybody's seen a light on in this building. He on the Instagram live. Now, he's feeling himself now. He in the mode. Yeah, yeah, you know, we got the lights on in every room. But as he's walking through the hallway, you see this long extension cord. That's going through the whole building. You can see where it goes out of the, the door that he comes in from the outside of the building to come into the hallway. And then it's like this long extension cord that goes all the way back into the very last room where it's a light on. Uma flicks lights on in rooms that are up until this room that has a light on already, but he don't flick on no more rooms after that. So the extension cord ends in this room. He's flicking on lights in all these other rooms. So obviously the YouTube super sleuth, they like, is this, is this fool stealing electricity? So now you got people who live in women of Delaware who don't went up to this building, then caught this dude. They done start reporting it to the Wilmington uh, electric company so they can get his power checked out so they can get the authorities to go out there and check if he's stealing. And they got some dude that done went up there to the actual school. He lived near the school. He done went up to the school live at three in the morning. And what does he see? First of all, in Delaware, the dude live in Delaware. So he said on their meters, it's a digital display. If your display is, if your power is actually like got an account connected to it, meaning your stuff is actually on legit, your, your meter will, will stay solid. It won't flash. It'll be just solid numbers that will, the numbers will change, but it won't be blinking. If it's blinking, that means there's power running to the place, but it's not an account, paid account associated with that building, which means that nobody's paying for the power, but there is power generated going through. So he goes up there at three in the morning. What does he see? Blinking numbers on the power meter. Second thing he sees, lights all off in the building right now, except for in one room. He can see it through the, uh, you know, they got the boards on the windows because the building has been abandoned and he can see the lights poking out. So what does that look like, mm -hmm. Umar? Now it look like after people are already calling you homeless. Oh man, that's gonna have to be another video. But they already call you homeless. Now it's three o'clock in the morning. Why you got the light still on in this one room? Are you living in the? Are you living in the school, Umar? Is that why you over in the building? Cause this your crib. <laughs> so this is what's been going on. I'm gonna just leave the floor open for y'all. This is what I've been watching. I don't know why I wanted to tell the world about this. I don't even know why I'm discussing it, but it has been intriguing. Well, me personally, that's some wild ass shit. <laughs> that sound, that sound like some scam ass shit. You feel me? The mask is scam ass. Excuse me. Mask your scam activities with your intelligence or your so called intelligence. You feel me? I mean, we've all seen motherfuckers that can lie about, yeah, I went to this school, yeah, I went to school, I got this certificate. You can print off certificates from anywhere. You feel me? You can do that anywhere. But if you can't get the proof from the institution, you feel me? It, it, you got a lot of words to say, but you ain't got no proof or nothing to back up behind nothing you saying. You, you ain't got nothing, nothing, nothing concrete. Not Everything's air. You feel me? You, you got everything. Because words, for real, words ain't nothing but air. Because that's all that come out your mouth is air. Everything else is concrete. <laughs> so, where is this concrete at? I mean, I don't know. Going, off, going off the what he says, he got some good talking points. Some I agree with, some I don't. But overall, scheme-wise, it's falling apart for your brother. It, it's really falling apart. It's falling apart fast. Man. And it's like, it's no, this man want to teach kids. 
go ahead and teach them how. <laughs> what you, you say? Know, and you want to teach them how to scam? Uh, all right. So I've been up on Umar too for about as long as you are, <laughs> um, or whatever. And um, after a while, I'm hearing more people saying, "Man, he's scamming people. He's scamming people, or whatever." Oh, but uh, so the past few weeks, because you you know brought it up. I've been watching um, some of his videos. And as you was talking to it, I'm having flashback of the videos because I've seen the video where he's just walking around, like he got the lights on, he preaching. And the one thing, it, it it's, it's weird about me. It's like, he, I feel like he's robotic with it. Like he always talk like he's whispering or whatever. And he's always saying everything in a chant or whatever. He's always- The repeating little- thing. Donations, donations. Yes. I done a video where he's like, "Yo, donation." And he's just holding up like gift cards and envelopes, and like stuff. big like, envelopes for a donation. He's making it rain don- on himself. Gifts, gifts. It's a suggestive thing. It's a psychological thing. He, he's trying to play suggestion in your head subliminally by repeating the same thing over and over again. I thought it was mm-hmm. a tick, because you know it's a mental condition. Uh, what's that mental condition? Where you repeat stuff and it ain't to rest. Uh what is it? Words and phrases? What the hell is it called? Yes. Palalalia. Palalalia. P-A-L-I-L-A-L-I-A. Palalalia. It's a rare speech disorder where they got like involuntary repetition of like words or phrases. And he does it all the, like you can tell, like sometimes it's not, he does this thing where, like he'll start blinking when he do it. He was like, the, the FDMG Marcus got my camera. The FDMG Marcus, it's almost like every time he's thinking of a new lie, it's always like when he's about to present something else he's about to do. And yeah, and we're going to have a picnic. We're going to have a picnic. We're going to have a picnic on, on Thursday, March 30th. And then we're going we're gonna to teach the little boys. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have, have a farm. We're going to have a farm. We're going to have a farm. It's like every time he's coming up with that new lie, he just started repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. It's like that's his brain's way of like, I say it enough times, it'll be true. Keep saying it, it'll happen. <laughs> that shit is weird, man. It's a defense mechanism, and he's like, he's just using it as a chant, like trying to bring people like a like a little John song or whatever. And then like, like every single video he's doing that, he's like, we got the lights on, we got the lights on, y'all. FT, MG, yeah. MG, FT, MG. He always got that. That 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 whispery ass voice or whatever, and I'm like, yo. And then then in this video, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I got one of the contractors here or whatever, and it's just some it's just some nigga. It just looked like some nigga. He probably probably the nigga he was smoking weed with outside that he got caught with or whatever, or whatever. Like, yeah, this, this Mitchell, this is Mitchell over here. Yeah, he says, yeah, like, yeah, bro, yeah, the fuck the haters, y'all. You know, we we ain't here, FDMG. And he said it like it's like 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 it's MMG, like he Rick Ross or something. Like, like that's the thing. I feel like Umar think he's the educated Rick Ross or something when he walks around. He Yo, the- he called himself the King Kong consciousness. The King Kong consciousness. The, uh, what what is it? The, the, the Prince of Pan Africanism. Papa, Papa. He called himself Papa. He be killing yeah, me. That slogan. Shit. Oh man, he missed his call in the market because he be he 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 could do that. But man, the the business sense. Okay. Oh, please let me find this thing. There is this video of him. This ain't got nothing to do with the scam, but it's just funny, and it's just like every time I see this video, it make me think like. This man want to teach some kid. He want to teach my kid. Oh, how, I cannot find it. Oh no! Please let me. This thing is funny. It's this. It's Uma singing "California Love," and he looks like he's heavily inebriated. And the comedy that comes from this. Oh man, where is it? Show me love. 
He'll be like, show me love. <laughs> I, I know he'll be serious if you ever have a TED Talk. When he, when he have a TED Talk. Oh, my God. They get that man a platform like that. It'll be a wrap. That's it. That man. would be scary. They'd be a bunch of just yelling and talking Never about know. killing black people and talking about pulling up with the goonie goons. <laughs> he always talking about some goonie goons. Never know, it's 2020. What we're going to make? Ooh. And in that school, we're going to have all our black boys in that school <laughs> learning all the basic things. We're going to learn how learn how to teach how to hunt, how to how to farm, how to how to believe in self consciousness. We're gonna we're gonna tell you on basic business. We're gonna tell a FDMG donation. Hey, I'm gonna share donation. this. Shout out to I mean, Lennon Honor. I mean, Shout out to Lennon Honor who whose page this video is actually on. But I have to. It it would I would be doing a disservice if I got off of this podcast without allowing you and the listeners who have never heard this. Oh my God! Okay, can y'all can y'all see? Oh yeah, uh, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing it. Dreaming, do I step in this bed and did a hoop screaming? Did it for money and alcohol? The thing is the best part. I'm coming to the top. I'm gonna party, gonna party, gonna party, gonna really die. This is so fun. That's right. That's right. What we do? Don't go. Don't care. It was it was the show me love and the the hand movement. This, this is the man that want to teach out, allow somebody else to enjoy them. I don't know why. Everybody can't be a teacher, man. Bro, can't be and should never be. Please don't let this man near your children. Black America. Sure, I agree that we need to teach more cultural stuff and teach more black kids more about our culture. In our lost culture, you feel me? In our school, I, I do agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of other shit I don't agree with. <laughs> he is the best example I've seen of like when great ideas meet poor execution. Like, if you could just take his ideas and give them to somebody who got a better handle on like just being an adult. I don't. I don't even know what to call it, but just like oh. did you say, handle on being adult. <laughs> yes, just you know, acting like a normal person. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh my, high oh school, my. even I, I don't know. Like Jesus Christ, Uma oh is the worst professor X ever I've ever seen in my life. He is the worst professor X. Thing. He yes. wants to get school. He don't even have school. He got donators and stuff trying to get all the black boy militant. Uh, Covert action team. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't trust him. Yes. That would be great. I don't know why I'm so excited about this. Like, I I don't know why, but this has been the fun, like so entertaining to me. Thank y'all for <laughs> indulging me. Hey man, he's an entertaining person himself, man. So, Umar, here very oh, scratchy. He got a very scraggly beard. I shouldn't say nothing because I, I can't grow one, but yeah, he, he got a very got a, scraggly I, I shouldn't talk about hairlines because of mine right now needing to get a cut, but his it's hairline. Just, uh, we back to the man. His hairline. <laughs> his hairline look like ooh. His hairline look like he been just edging it up. Yeah, like, that's what I'm shaking, man. Outside. I don't want to know. I mean, like it y'all look like the stock market or something like like you can see all the like daily daily lows and highs on his jaw. It's just like a line, a bar graph effect on that jaw. Like he was like, talking the edge up donations. Yeah, donations. yeah he was just donations. 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 <laughs> donations. They would try to write MG on his edge up. 
That's what <laughs> it looked like a cracked helmet, man. It's just not right. Fred just Drake? like his schemes, just not right. But yes, <laughs> thank y'all for indulging me in that topic. That was audience. I'm not gonna lie. That as you probably can tell by my excitement and enthusiasm, that was all my topic. Right, I just wanted to share that with somebody else outside of me and get that out of me. I've been like laughing and giggling to myself for some years now, just without knowing anybody else knew about this. So I just had to thank y'all. <sighs> I feel better now. You never know. You never know what somebody else is indulging in until you share your your little stuff. You know what I'm saying? I had to get that out. That, gotta I feel so to, much. Got to be open to share. Yes. Yes. Uh, so that's all of our topics for this week, guys. Um, y'all got anything y'all want to talk about or y'all have any topics or do y'all have anything y'all want to plug, anything going on with y'all that y'all want to let the viewers know about? Of course, always. You always got to talk about your T-shirts and your hoodies and soon to come face masks. Teespring.com backslash stores backslash space dash coat dash two all day, every day. You feel me? So right now I'm in transition to trying to get other designs up. You know, been kind of stalemated, but that comes with having a family and three kids trying to run behind them. So when I do get time, I'm trying to upload some new designs and like when I say soon, I mean this upcoming week weekend, so I can start getting a, a rotation in. So I'm looking to do something kind of a little different on the on the store, which which I have not been doing. Um, when I first started, I was archiving a lot of stuff, so I was throwing away a lot of designs that I didn't mm-hmm. feel that was suitable. But what I'm going to try to do now is just add on and add on and add on, just build the catalog up. So yeah. at teespring.com backslash stores backslash space dash code dash two that's what it's going to be right on please go there check that out and uh it was laundry day today so i will be having my shirt next time but uh we just finished doing laundry today so uh you know family life guys y'all y'all already know what that is so yeah um, yes uh, yes definitely i i pretty much too much I mean, these 10 hour shifts are killing me but uh still doing progress as far as work. I have me and my brothers working on a future project, a few things. It's still got like, that's still a comic book. It's still coming out 2021 and everything, but yeah, normal week, pretty much. I love it, man. Well, as always, guys, thank y'all for joining us in just another conversation between three, between three friends separated by distance, but connected by Zoom. Uh, We'll be back next week again with another episode. Uh, Feel free to join us in this conversation. Um, And hopefully we'll be launching on some uh, other platforms shortly where you can, if you want to get a visual experience, we might have that for you. And just if you want to just stay up on what the partners will be up to going, we'll have some some, some juicy details coming out for you guys soon with websites and platforms. So be on the lookout for that, man. As always, gang, gang, love y'all, man. Donations. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> the partners. The partners. The partners. P O D M A S donations. I'm done. I'm done. Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I haven't even up yet. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, and using Zoom to have weekly conversations. Welcome to our conversation. It's your boy, Tiz, up here with my boys. Yo, it's your boy, Pat, here in Southeast Virginia um, and down here. Uh, with my homeboy, he's up in Blackstone. What up, Face? I ain't nothing, man. This is Face right here, Southwest Virginia Apparel Creator Property Manager, doing our thing. Oh, 
Oh man. And for uh for those that are audio listeners for that are, that are not blessed enough to be the Patreon people that can see this right now. Oh my God. Y'all had to be here for the call over. So if y'all y'all gonna have to bear with me at the beginning here. Um whew, our, our our take before this, man, we're gonna have some bloopers for, for y'all on Patreon, man. This is a this is a oh, class. I'm gonna know. be honest. I'm gonna be honest to our uh, viewers and stuff. I, I fucked that shit up, y'all. Like, but it was it was hilarious. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so basically, we gonna get into it, man. I, I don't even see no need in wasting no time. Uh, face. What's our first topic for tonight, man? Uh, first topic this past weekend. The, the major thing going on in sports was Mike Tyson and Roy Jones coming back in doing their thing. I saw the fight myself. Yes. It was pretty good. Um, not what people expected, but I expected just what it was. Um, I had saw an interview before I actually watched the fight. Um, an interview with Faison Love on a different platform. I'm not gonna mention the platform, of course. I'm not gonna get anybody else from on off the platform. But um, right, an right. interview with Faison Love and Faison's view of it, he was like, it's all state. He was like, it's not gonna come. No one's gonna get knocked out. They gonna set it up so it could be a rematch for the money. He was like, so his main question, like, where the money going? It, and the question was, the money going to charity? He was like, okay, where's the pay-per-view dollars going? Every cent ain't going to charity. Somebody True. can tell them. Somebody got to get paid. Well, yeah. I was like, that, that may be a good, that, that's a good kind of angle because at the end of the day, so a lot of these sports nowadays are staged. Who's saying they can't stage boxing and they've been staging pro wrestling? You remember? So after watching the fight, <clears throat> I couldn't see how they were going back. Tyson gave his all boy. Did his Roy thing. Roy's moving like Roy. I ain't going to say Roy of old, but he still got the flow of Roy. They got muscle memory. They've been boxers for years and years and years. Champions on champions. But <sighs> from Roy, Tyson's power still ain't. Tyson's power, it, it ain't to be played with. Mm. You can see what was hitting him in his jaw and his ribs. He was hurting Roy. He was, he was giving Roy something. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was giving him something. Now, I'd love to see a good old Tyson knockout and Roy laying on that canvas. <clears throat> I'd just love to see that. I would love to see man. Tyson come back with one of them bitches. You heard me. But Tyson was trying to set up for another exhibition. So I would love to see that second one. Also <clears> the <throat> same night, what's his name? Logan Paul? Mm. Uh, now, knocked out the basketball boy? Knocked out Nate Robinson? Logan Paul. Luke pa- Lo- Logan Paul. Logan one Paul. Paul. Logan Paul. Paul. One that Lincoln Park. Yeah, knocked out Luke Robinson. <laughs> yeah, Freaking out Lincoln Park. Knocked him out Logan Paul. Um, that was one of the most ugly. I haven't seen a knockout that bad since uh, when Pacquiao got put to sleep like that. Mm. Like one, that was one of the ones where you was like, um, "We might want to call somebody." Like that don't look like he gonna be all right after this. Like he gonna have some uh, some damage going on. Like he he didn't, he gonna dunk no more. I think that's it. That jump will gonna be gone. His equilibrium will never be the same. I'm seeing that fight different than most people because most people was like, yeah, Nate Robinson will give some. Why would you even think that Nate Robinson's not a boxer? He hasn't trained a boxer. I knew he was going to lose. I didn't know it was going to be that quick. I thought he was going to be more on the, I get in there, the lights make me freeze up, so I'm going to back off more, so I'm going to be more of a <laughs> posture, covering up a lot on the ropes, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. When he ran out head first like that, I was like, oh, man. In the opposite no to how he, he done went completely fight or flight. Them lights done went on, and he just see, I got to hit him. And he done went back to the streets, not remembering, like, this dude has been boxing professionally for the past two years. Like, he's been literally training as a boxer. Like, he's a, you know, a joke online with the YouTube stuff, and he would, you know, ha, ha, he, 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 he was real controversial and all that. But... When it comes to boxing, like he's not there to play. Like you play basketball. They was that was, was that Snoop or somebody said that on the uh broadcast. You play basketball, you don't play boxing. But boxing is <laughs> and mm-hmm. they went in there and got lumped bad. Bad. Now on the Tyson and now, Jones, though, I see it similar but different. I definitely see it as it's, it could have been stayed, you know what I'm saying, for the rematch. It would make sense, especially on the exhibition side of things. Like, that, that's something that could definitely happen in an exhibition-style fight. However, what I saw was one fighter that took it dead serious and trained as such. 
Like Tyson, when I watched them like little fake 24 sevens they had for the fight, Tyson was in there with like electro stimulus therapy and like he was doing like some old next level stuff to train for this fight and get his body ready. Whereas Roy was just like, you know, I'm gonna be I, you know, I, I, I he he ain't gonna be good as he, he ain't gonna be that good at you know in six weeks anyway. Then that fight got stretched out and they gave Tyson more time. And I think <laughs> the difference in training, the difference in mentality, and the difference in I am a natural heavyweight. I am built to carry this much weight. I'm coming in at 220 solid pounds, and this is what I walk around at. Like, I had to come down for this, as opposed to I'm packing on quick muscle and quick fat real quick to get up to weight. But this is not my walk around weight. My walk around weight is 185, 180. So, like, Roy is not it yeah he's strong but it's a different level when you're knocking out 270 pound men for a living and you are pushing your body to its limits to get up to that at the end of your career as it was and now you got to fight the baddest man on the planet i saw iron mike beating the crap out of him in them ribs and them body blows taking the toll in the first half of the fight and i saw tyson say you know what I can hurt this man right now. We both old. Let me lay off. Show mercy. Let me let him get off some stuff real quick and let him shine a little bit. It can be fixed, but I, I just saw two old men. One of them took it serious and realized if I keep hitting this man for real, it's going to get ugly. Let me just let him get off some shots and do a little, you know, get, get his little moves in so that the, the people can, the, on pay-per-view can get what they seen and let me get them out of here. Because at the end, like, for it to be staged for a rematch, Roy didn't look like he won't no rematch in that out <laughs> that interview. Roy looked like he wanted to get the hell up out of there. Roy kept Roy ain't cut his gloves off. Roy was sitting there like, yeah, he did, did it hurt? Yeah, you know everything he did yeah, hurt. His head, his head hurt. His leg hurt. His arm hurt. His head. Like, you, did y'all peep that? Um, did y'all peep that interview where the um dude was about to interview Roy and was like. Hey, how do you feel about people saying that you um that you might look a little worried or nervous? And then and Tyson came in, it was like, y'all worried about him? Shoot, he's been he's been boxing. I, I'm just now getting back to but I haven't boxed in three years or whatever. And I'm sitting there like, you Mike though. You might no. you Mike Tyson. You Mike though, you know. This but alone, the winner of the night was Snoop. Go off on Goose and TK Kirkland. Um. But the white man said, man, ain't nobody worry about Goliath. And went back to Roy on his ass. And Tyson just sat there. Like, why you ain't get buck on hell? Get all tough. He would be, be mean to Boosie and TK. Um, I, and probably camarader- camaraderie bet- between boxes because they respect each other. I, no, I, that's he, what I I'm talking like. about that white, the white man that was interviewing him, Jim Gray. Oh, that oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was peep. I be peeping the little, the little slick talk, a little shade. Oh, true. You want Tyson think, like yeah. that? But you got to expect your reporter to try to bite, try to get Tyson to act as Tyson of old. But you don't want the Tyson of old to come back because that Boy. was an uncaped beast animal. That was an mm. animal. He said, "I was <clears> two <throat> kids." <laughs> oh and then no! They called, and they First of all, <laughs> First of all, pause. Second of all, on no level is that a sane thought. From the disgusting to the disgusting, it's just no way to look at that as like, oh, that made sense. No, you you gonna eat what? This is what I remember of Tyson. Remember when he used to beat niggas up and that, after the fight, he used to give them a kiss on the cheek? Man, you know how to boil that into that. Remember that? How you gonna go home to your shit? mama? Nigga, Bray Wyatt will beat up and kiss by this man <laughs> on national TV. That's where Bray Wyatt from um, wrestling took that shit from. Yo, which, he was the which first one is worse? Abigail. Which one is worse, yo? I don't the know, kiss. man. The Definitely the kiss. Goddamn kiss. The kiss. I signed up for the boxing match. I didn't sign up for you to kiss me, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir, look here, sir. Look, look. I feel you, man. Look, you done did all you can do to me, man, but hey. <laughs> Hey man, come on, come on, brother, come on, brother. Like we we don't need to know each other like that, champ. It ain't it ain't it ain't gonna be all that. You gonna have to catch me yeah. while I'm knocked out to do all that. Like I I'm gonna be with you 
Oh, the handshake, yeah, good fight, man. You, 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 you got me, champ. You beat me up. Like, I'm going to have to go to the hospital for this. <coughs> oh, you you want to, hey, hey, well, we're going to have to just fight again then. Ring the bell, ring the bell. I'm going for the championship again because I'm going to have to take these lumps. What you have that's, to do is kiss on me. That's no, some saying. psychological no. shit right there. That's no, the, I'm fucking with your psyche. I don't mean no harm, and this going to sound, <clears throat> sorry. Excuse me. This going to sound challenged, but, uh, yeah, my daddy ain't kiss me. I'd be dead gone if some random man going to be kissing on me. I don't care if it is tight. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die on that one. I'm gonna I'm stand on. I'm gonna ten toes down on that one. Right, right there. That you know, everybody got their line. That, that that's my line. That that that's where it is. I I didn't. I don't know where it was, but that, that's where it is right now. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna kiss me. He said, "I eat um, your kids," awful. and then said, "Hum do a law afterwards." Like he called on a law afterwards. He called on his God after that. He said, "He did put you in the headlock." <laughs> He bought off, he bit off somebody's oh, ear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I had to I had to be barbaric on him, you know. It's just it's just you know. Oh man, I still say he was right about that nigga A hey, um, I still say he was right about that. I'm sorry. By who? I may be controversial. I still say Tyson was right to bite that nigga A hey, off. That's a big head to keep headbutting somebody in that. I, I I'm not gonna say it was exactly. right, but Come what I will man. say is. When Tyson complained the first time about your head, brother, sir, you knew you was in there with Tyson. You know he's not a rash. He was, at least back then. Now, now, I'll be honest. For the most part, he seemed pretty clear and lucid. But at that time oh, in his life, he was not the most clear <clears throat> cognitively. He may not be the person you want to keep head, but then he don't warn you. Like he don't. He said, "All right, now." He took your punches, but hey, your head. He keep head, but he keep head. I, I remember he kept doing like this. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. And then they said, got no, I got the pit bull came out and it was around. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's how you know you deranged. Because at first I thought it was a mistake till he spit the mouthpiece out to get a better grip. He's like, oh, I ain't, I ain't get him good. Hold on. Hi. <laughs> the bottom, the top was numbed up. I used to be rubbing on your, rubbing on your ears, dog. You mean it ain't feel bad. Let me bite this shit for real. Let me get it. Let me sink in. I can bite I this mean, shit at all. What did what the old people say? Gristle? They ain't no gristle right there. <laughs> gristle. Yo, but I is the one good thing out of this was um I feel like Tyson needed this and it it cleared him up. But I was reading something about it, like him getting focused, it gave him it made him feel like he had purpose again. And I know as a man, that's one of the key things you really need, you know. So, big facts. I, big big facts. so I feel like I'm just glad I'm just glad nobody hurt. I'm just glad. Well, somebody hurt, but <laughs> I'm just glad that, you know, he got a, he he seemed like he got something for his soul out of it. So, you know, because I've been kind of keeping up with, with podcasts and stuff like that. And he he really gets in deep about himself sometimes yeah, yeah. like a tortured soul. So that's one good thing I like about that shit. That's dope that you say that. Like I, I can relate to that. Like I feel like that's what this is. like this podcast venture we are on and like trying to build this partner's brand. Like I feel like that's I, I can understand where he's coming from and then where you feel like I need I need that. What's my what's my legacy? What's my thing that I'm gonna mm-hmm. do? <clears throat> like I had this one thing. I I did I've done that. What's the next thing that's gonna drive me? So I I, I feel you on my that. mark. My mark in history. Heck yeah. Yep. All right. Random topic that I was going to bring up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because Faith brought it up earlier um, pre production, but um, that nigga Young Thug, man. Young Thug said he don't listen to nothing, Andre 3000, and I beg to differ. Everything about him looks like Andre 3000. But what uh um, oh, oh, what happened? he said what can can you yeah get he, into that he you know um TI podcast expeditiously mm-hmm. he was he was up there and I just seen like a scene from it and he said he don't fuck with young thug uh he, young thug don't fuck with Andre because he feel like Andre um likes getting his ass kissed instead of kissing ass meaning that um T.I. said, you you did a song with Elton John, but you can't do a song with Andre. And he was like, well, see, the thing about Elton John 
is, uh, this is my voice, a young thug. The thing about Elton John is he likes to kiss ass. Like he likes to say, hey, I like that song. Hey, I like what you did with this. He keeps up with it. You know, he likes to kiss ass. Uh, with Andre, he said he likes his ass kiss. Like, I feel like he might have reached out one time and he had to go through the business line, protocol line or whatever. And he felt some type of way about it. But that's how he feel about it. But nothing about Andre, uh, nothing about Young Thug and his music tells me that he never listened to Andre 3000. No, everything oh, he, he do. Oh, he did. Yeah. Didn't. Man. He wouldn't even be able to get away with a lot of stuff he did if, if Andre hadn't came through with, with the uh, furry pants and uh, shoulder pads and, and the weird stuff back in the day. And everything Andre ever yeah, did. Yeah. Um, he personally offended wow, that was Andre, my favorite rapper of all time. He personally offended me with that bullshit comment. <laughs> that, was, that was the first thing I was thinking. I'm just... He sound like a woman scorned. <laughs> hey, it's not all that. Why you throwing shade, bro? You throwing shade, boo boo. Put your skirt down, champ. Literally. You got to do what you got to do. Buddy. You want to do what you got to do to get a verse. Do what you got to do. I'm sure people want verses from him, and he make them do what he got to do. Oh, well. You don't just throw a verse out just to anybody. Maybe Dre, at the time you wanted a verse, Dre was like, nah, I don't know who he is right now. But you talking about it, keeping they said several people. That Dre has commented on his work and said and big up Young Thug on several occasions. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Uh, Andre Andre said he all he listened to was Young Thug at one time. So I'm uh, I'm confused about it. I, I mean, I will say if Thug was keeping up with Dre, then he know that Dre is in a space where he's not really working with much of anybody because he's like on some he's trying to find what his new sound like, what he's going to do now like he's experimenting right now so he don't really have he not in the space to like really do nothing else like he in one of them artistic spaces where he's like filling stuff out or something like that i, I read that like maybe a couple of weeks ago it was completely random but if thug was doing his due diligence he'd kind of understand you know i don't think it's personal it's more just this dude is just in a different space right now he's not working with anybody like i don't think it's something like i wouldn't work with thug i think it's more I'm not working with anybody right now, and I just, you know, I get to you yeah, when I yeah. come out when I come out of this space. But yeah, when I finish um, playing my flute in Manhattan, Soho, Manhattan, you understand yeah. me <coughs> with my overalls on, yeah, and my hard bottom dress shoes, and Never my quarantine, red. my quarantine beard, big facts with the mask, of course, hmm. and a straw hat. How can he play the flute with the mask though? That's what I'm trying to talk he to the Drake. side. It's Andre Champ. That is true. The man got away with parachute pants made out of fur, orange, yellow, and pink fur, and shoulder pads. <coughs> and that Caroline. was his outfit. And he made that work. No, I'm talking about before Caroline. This was in, uh, <laughs> who was that? The Rosa Parks video, I think. It was either in that oh, video or the Spirit on the Barbie video. I remember that. Don't yeah. pull the thing out That's unless you pay the bang. I'm Bombs telling you, he was in that up. Badu phase, and he ain't never get back right. Like, he was ahead of the time. Way, 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 way before. You mean to tell me you don't like, I love what you are? I love what you ain't? You so Anne Frank? Let's go hide out in the attic for two weeks? Speaking <laughs> of love. Mm. Uh, so, okay. you know, call me a sap, a simp, whatever. But I've been going through some, uh, some therapy lately, man. And, like, I was having some issues with, like, feeling confidence. And like feeling that uh, that vote of support from my wife, right? And it was weird. Like right after one of my sessions, I was saying that that was an issue I was having. And then immediately after that, out of nowhere, like random later on in the day, I hadn't even talked to the wife about nothing. She just came and started affirming me out of nowhere. And was like, you know, I really proud. I see what you're doing with the podcast. I see what you're doing at your job. You know, as a dad, like I really appreciate you. <coughs> like, and it was like, you know what? That's why I married you. And it made me think, like, as a married man, like, I know, like, why I married my wife. I know, like, the trials and tribulations we done been through. But, like, I'm always curious as to, like, see, like, from other Black men, like, why are you into marriage? Why are you not? What are your thoughts on marriage? Like, 
like face why did you get married to your to the woman that you picked like out of all the women you could have had in your lifetime um what made you know that this one was that and then i guess for you as a single man like what made what has made you not deem a woman worthy of taking that next step with them up until now in your life, uh, either one of y'all. Uh, well, I'll take it first. Yeah. Um, well, growing up, I, never, I wasn't around marriage, so that institution wasn't something I was raised around too much, so it was always me for me. But growing up, as you get older, you see other things. Remember, you were married before me, so I looked at that something as something I could say to aspire to. Cause I, I like the union you and your wife had. I, I like the bond y'all had. I like that love y'all had. So I was like, that's something to grow old. Remember? Like they, they don't nobody want to grow old by themselves. Remember? You 60 or 70 years old in the house, you sick. You want to be somebody you can call on. Big fan. So, of course, met, my, met who soon to be my, who was to be my wife. At that point in my life, I wasn't even thinking about marriage. You feel me? She on the other hand, well, she said well, when she met me after we got together, she said she knew me. On the other hand, had no idea. It took me years and years to figure out of making mistakes and growing and maturing that this person was the one who was making me better and was helping me see things in myself that I really didn't see by just being myself. Because at that point in my life, I was, I ain't going to say lost, but I say not find myself who I found myself to be and who I want to be. Mm-hmm. 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 If I didn't find her and I, I created the family that we have created, I would be in a different space in my life where it could be a lot of multiple things going on. You know what I'm saying? Because most people will say a single man is like a dog off the leash. I don't look at men as dogs. You feel me? I look at this just like anybody else. I'm a human being and I just found another human being to make me see how much better I can. So she helped me see the potential in me. So I felt that it was the right thing for me to to take that step and take that forever bone. Because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. when I am sick, that's the person I look to. Mm-hmm. Hey, I got a bad back. My back hurt. That's the person who helped me out. <laughs> so I mean, like at the end of the day, I've had other long, long years of relationship. Eight, nine years of having a relationship with the same person. But never at that one point that I was like, yeah, that's the person I can see myself with forever. I can see her hurt laying beside me when I'm all old and gray and I'm like, I don't feel like you're not the big baby thing you so fucking and me believe that person would do it. This mm-hmm. person I can't. I mean with, with my wife I can see her doing whatever she can do for me to make me happy. And I have no problem doing the same thing for her. That's why I try to go my way to be the best husband I can be. I bite my tongue when I gotta bite my tongue, say the sorry mm-hmm. I gotta say and I try to make sure I go my way not to only make her happy but make sure our, our relationship and our communication is the happiest it can be. It's a, right. I try to make a conducive environment for both of us to prosper. And it's because of that that I think that she is the one. Because I, I in no relationship with the past, if I, I felt like, yeah, let me let me try to make this work. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what makes like that's the difference. She makes me want to try. But then the times oh, I, I look back, I look back on the mistakes I made and I was like, damn, I was stupid as shit. Dumb as hell to make the dumb ass mistake. No one well, put that on the t shirt. Make me like, want to try. I like that. Yeah, you feel me? Like that, that's that's the reason. You feel me? Like I, I I say about everybody anything all the time. The same thing. Anything in life that's worth doing is gonna be hard. You feel me? Nothing you do in life is easy. It's worth doing because it's so easy to do. Why do it? Yeah. I've taken that road of everything in my life. When I went to, when I went to college, I went in with an architecture major, an engineering. I went to sleep every day in school and got a B plus. I switched my major next semester. Now nah, I can't do that. This is too easy. <laughs> Let me go to something that's totally opposite of what I want to do. Let me go to psychology. And that was the challenge. So I went with that. This is my challenge. She is my challenge. She's my forever challenge. Challenges me to become better. Just like your wife told you the other day, she's proud of you for what you're doing with this podcast. Out of nowhere, I'm doing what I got to do. Like It's just normal for me to try to do this and communicate with y'all. This is just like a secondary thing to me. It's like, <clears throat> I, I, this is natural. All we do right. is convert. But now we're putting it out to the public. Right. So for her, I mean, she's proud of me as an adult for doing something. I'm just naturally doing it. It just feels fun to me and I'm having and it is entertaining for me to do. 
that makes me feel like, okay, man, who proud me? Yeah, man. Right yeah, man. I mean that. I mean, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think that's a lot of what I married Pooh for, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, well, I, I'll be honest, man. It was a God thing for me, too, like, because the, the literally the first date, like, we hated each other. And then the first date we went on is when I actually knew she was the one. Like, it was like on some happenstance, we ended up actually finally going on a date. Then when we went on our first date and then actually hung out for the first time, I was like, oh, man, you the one. And I think for me, like, we were the flip of you and, you and your wife uh, face, you know what I mean? Like, I was the one that was like, yeah, you the one. And she was the one that was more like hesitant or like, you know, let's let's wait. Let's make sure it's right. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's not rush into anything. So like, yeah, she the first one that made me try. I, I, I like, that's why I like what you said. And like, before that, like, and she the first one that tried for me, you know what I mean? What we'll make you not have deemed a woman like what 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 is it that makes you have not made that step with any woman that you've dated or been with in the past? I mean, I mean it's never, never really anything against the woman at all. Usually I don't want to say I don't think that I know that sounds like it's like I have no self-esteem or something, but I don't want to think of me of having so much ego of saying I haven't Dean in a woman it's just that it, I've been working on me like I felt like I need to get myself straight before I bring any woman into my madness you know like that would be unfair to that person especially if I care about them I need to have my plan right I need to know where I'm going it, you know at least have that going I need to have a uh, occupation that is at least supporting me even if I don't like it or not like like I have currently, you know, I need to be able to emotionally be there for her when she needs to be. And then that in the past couple of years, that's just me just building myself up um, into the man that I want to be and the man that I am now to even get to that point. Now, mind you, I have been dating here or there or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's mostly a friend thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this and a third. Nothing too, I, yeah, nothing too serious pretty much not really trying to stress it i feel like i'm a person like i just go off the the woman's vibe i mean if the woman feels mm -hmm. like that then i go forward you know in some cases it comes situation of circumstance or it, it just it just never got that deep you know what i'm saying we just a lot of them we still just cool to the day some of them we don't even get romantic with it but we just still cool like matter of fact like with my all my exes we're we're cool i mean even though we i know my last ex y'all know about you know we were going through our ups and downs but we talked it out and we're you know we're cool i check she checks on me from time to time i check on her everything my ex before her all of them like i really don't have like a problem with women at all if anything i might be a little too comfortable and i'm not I'm not pressing that button, that extra aggressive button to say, hey, come here. But um, I don't know. I kind of did that with the the one I'm chilling with right now or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we just we're just friends and not taking it serious or whatever, because right now, like and the, the great thing about it is that majority of the people that have had like an intimate relationship to that point or right. whatever, we were pretty much in the same situation. So we're not we have an understanding you know what i'm saying like i never was like the one that really just jumped at and pursued and y'all know that too you know like it, it unless it was one that it just seemed like i have to i have to talk to you right now like <laughs> in, in general but like i never really was the one to stress it pretty mm -hmm. much but i and i'm not you know you do have those times where you feel like man i'm fucking by myself <laughs> this shit is kind of lonely you know what i'm saying but at, at the time i'll I, at the same time i'm more like you know god will bring me that one when it's time for me to have that one and right. and that's, that's always that always proves to be right to me there is a there's a quote i've been reading this book i'm about to go nerd on y'all for a second but it's a quote go ahead, that, go ahead, go ahead get the book out champ all right it's a quote i've been reading um you know, I'm an X-Men fanatic, right? And this book, 
Um, one of my favorite villains, Apocalypse, um, e Egyptian guy, uh, survival of the Phyllis or whatever. He and all the mutants are living on this island as one nation, like on some nation of Islam. Uh, we need to just find our, our own country and just deal with that. So they all, like even the villains, like all even the villain mutant. Yeah, is now they got a whole nation in this story or whatever. In this past situation, whatever, he is come across, um, they're battling this, this, this hellish dimension that took over his kids and his wife that he had before. So they're like going against each other. So he mm -hmm. says this quote, like in the beginning of these X books, there's always a quote from like one of the main characters in the book and mm -hmm. to start it off. And then as you read the book, you understand why. But this is what Apocalypse said. All right. Find the most fearsome challenger in all of creation and make her your wife. Lie down at night beside your greatest threat. Make love to your fate. Apocalypse. Well, Apocalypse or G. <laughs> and yes, he is in this, in this, in this. You um, understand me. Apocalypse in, in this, putting down them bars. In this story, yo, yeah. Like, but you know what though? Like, that, the nugget I took out of that is the challenge of like, mm -hmm. I think the key to any, any, well, to me, any woman that's good for you is going to challenge you in some way. Like, they're not going to be the one that like allows you to just do whatever you want. Like, you're going to have to like, it's going to be some compromise. It's going to be some push and pull with, if it's actually right, because they're not going to be about the bull. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I definitely, I, I feel Brother Apocalypse on that one for sure. For sure, for sure. That was deep. I also, uh, something you touched on earlier, too, is just uh, when you said that you was working on you, I think that's the key, too. Like, a lot of people would be, like, pressing. Oh, I I, I got to get some money. Let me, let me. no. Most of the time, the right ones come when you're focused more on like improving yourself and making yourself be the greatest than the greatest uh -huh. ones that will pop up out of nowhere because they'll they'll sense that energy, they'll see that that drive, they'll see that shift in momentum, and they'll be on the same wavelength themselves. You know what I mean? So, you 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 preaching that good word over there, young Pat. For the next uh, quick little hit here, man, have y'all heard about Chappelle's battle with Netflix slash Comedy Central? And yes. Have, and have y'all seen the Unforgiven? Uh, I, I, I seen I that G-move. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, it's a G-move. Uh, manifesto, I, I, I don't know. But um, Chappelle is becoming like the modern, like the real black leader of our times, slowly but surely. And I know that sounds weird because he's a comedian, you know, his mm. trade is not that. But as far as somebody who is intelligent enough to both articulate in the masses vernacular and the vernacular of the elite, who is poignant enough to like, really like, I don't care, I'll speak truth to power. And who has the mentality of like, I live on a farm. I'm not really that pressed about the big money that I can lose. Like I'm more worried about doing the right thing. Like people will come see me at my farm and I'll do shows here and still make my little money to be all right. So like, I've never seen nothing like this in my time. Like there's been a lot of people that like, they say stuff, but they always like sugarcoat it or beat around the bush or they, they tiptoe like, man called Netflix and said, hey, I need y'all to take that down. <laughs> and his word and integrity is so high that Netflix, this million dollar company that normally would do business with Viacom, would do business with Comedy Central, was like, all right, we well, you got your back. Keep on giving us your comedy mm -hmm. special. We got you. We'll pay you. Like, okay. That is, I've never seen nothing like what he is doing. And it's like, kind of like flying low key under the radar. Like, Pete, it's big news, obviously. It's in the news, but like, on the day to day, you don't really hear people like giving that man his flowers. I just wanted to, yeah. What y'all think on that? I'm saying it's feeling like in our time, he's feeling like a little bit big, big like You feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a comedian, you feel me in that realm and speaking his mind as far as that and being intelligent enough to articulate it the way he does. That's a big mantle. Yeah. 
So, uh, I mean, the the stance he takes is a true stance, and he keeps it 100 on, 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 in, in places that a lot of people won't or are scared to in his position. Big facts. Yes, sir. But he, he he's like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I can say what I want. <laughs> what you going to say? Okay. Say it. Am I lying up? You can't say I'm lying because it's the truth. <laughs> But you, man, I'm telling the truth now. The truth hurts. I want to see what HBO Max going to do. Yo. See if they're well, going to do. Yo. Mm-hmm. The power in his freedom that to say whatever the fuck he wants, yo. Just because the, the, the impact of him saying no to another season of Chappelle's show, disappearing and then coming back even stronger to the point that you can tell those people, hey, I'm not getting no dollars from this. Take that shit off. You know what I'm saying? And then put another business on Front Street. Like, letting them know that these people are just businessmen. They don't care about, you know, the art. They don't care about the artists. They don't care if I get a dime or if my family is eating off of my art. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that because he he's an artist. He's an artist with his comedy and everything. Mm -hmm. He can... He's... He's so strategic with it and it feels natural. That's that's the crazy thing about it. But is everything has a point. There's there's always he is going to be some little small thing he says in the beginning. And at the end is going to hit you even harder like yeah. he's and then he could just simply talk about stuff that that wasn't even a, a stand up. That's what I, I was like. I don't know what the call is. It's not a stand up special. It's just like he but got up there and just was like, hey. That's the power of his freedom. That's what it is. But I'm going to come out the truth for it, but come on here. He, he captivated. Like, <laughs> literally, from start to finish, I couldn't stop watching. And he was like, not making me laugh at all. I was just like, tell me more, Dave. What else they do, Dave? He did that, day. Like, by the end of it, I just wanted to rally with him. Like, well, I ain't watching it on. I, I hadn't watched it on Netflix anyway, but now I'm definitely not going to pull it up because I was definitely thinking about it. I was like, oh, they done made it easy. Oh, we about to get back in. Oh, man, I was about to get my Tyrone Biggums on. Yo, that, that, that. Never yo, 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 you know, remember when they used to uh, call me Chappelle at ODU? I used to oh, be yeah. offended. I used to be offended at that shit. I, yeah. I'll take it as an honor now. I'm honored. I'm a- <laughs> I mean that. Last uh, topic. I wanted to bring this back up or whatever because when we first talked about it, and I'm talking about juice. Uh, I said juicy. Ah, uh, Gucci versus Jeezy. <laughs> 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 oh, by the way, yo, Juicy J. Jang- <laughs> juicy. Yeah, juicy. I'm gonna type. I'm gonna type back. I'm gonna type. Juice. I'm gonna type back. Juicy J got a new album out. That shit hard though. Anyway, you was just go thinking back about OJ the Juice Man and Gucci. <laughs> I was combining <clears throat> when combining Jeezy G- with Gucci. That's what I did. But um, Jeezy versus Gucci, yo. Like I think we really need to give Gucci a little bit more flowers because we kind of just like I feel like both men came there and won the contest they were trying to win, pretty much. Oh, uh, like, like on the musical tip, I feel like, like it was Jeezy, but I feel like Gucci kind of won Atlanta, just like off of what I've been seeing and expressing, and people like as far as like the whole story behind it in in general or whatever. Like, I I, I kind of want to give him his flower. Like, if I'm if I took it from the perspective, if I was Gucci. And somebody came at me and they pat pat. And then the person that sent that man want to talk to talk to me now or whatever. I'm going face to face and I'm allowed to say my truth in front of them or whatever. I don't care if I want anything. You know, I was able to say, hey, I did this. You know what I'm saying? If I if I go at it at that perspective or whatever, I I, I got to give Gucci his flowers. Like, I'll roll with something. you on that. I, I yeah. definitely. Uh, 
I definitely think they both won their perspective fan bases. Like uh-huh. you were a fan of Jeezy going in and you were a fan, like you've grown with him and you're on that grown man vibe, then you got exactly what you wanted to see from him. Uh-huh. If you are more of a, a trap mentality and you was like, man, F that. Hey, bro, you sent somebody to try to kill me, man. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, if you more of that mentality is like, hey, once he go to that level, it's up. You kind of got what you wanted. I think the cool part is at the end of it, they would they you know dapped up and did the icing. So uh-huh. that was that definitely was a dope, moment. Bro. And I think with all that's going on right now, as far as violence, I think that was a cool moment to kind of just like show like, hey man, the old dude can do it, and they've been uh-huh. beating for almost twenty years, man. Go ahead, and let this. So you know that was cool, but Gucci got mopped on that on the. On the <laughs> so man, them hits, boy. Hell with them hits. That boy said, hey, "Man, play something from this. Play something new, man. You got all them old hits." He was like, "Man, but they all classic, though, man." Hit me with a hell. Damn, another one. O two, smacking your face. Oh, the O five, smacking your face in. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Kicking his butt with them hits, man. Them hits wouldn't stop. I was like, every time another horn drop, oh, he got him again. Oh, and I love Gucci, but I don't love him like that, I guess. Because uh, yeah. he was playing, I was like, well, you, you dug this one out the crate, did he with this? I'm like, this, for you, this for your real, real fan. Like my, you know, my cousin Christian might have known them, but I don't, you, you, you miss me with this one, champ. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give me a drink real quick. I'll be right back. You know, uh, hit me up when they go to the next round or something. You know, oh Jeezy back on dead. <laughs> Guess who's the that? Oh, I mean, it was bad. It was bad, bro. It was bad in this household for uh, the Gucci man. I love. Hey, I love Gucci and what he stand for. But when the, when it came to that versus, man, he was, oh, was bad. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm was only. Bad. I'm he, only bringing he it up. He had so. to pull out that last, like he had to pull out the disc at the end. Like he had to go there. Cause if <laughs> not, imagine if you done got beat down with these hits and you don't even address that. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah, boy. Man. You mind when not come outside no more, man. See your wife out here to fight for you, man. Uh, that is true. Was like, look, what I ain't gonna do, you ain't, gonna, you ain't gonna beat me with these hits and think I ain't gonna beat you gonna beat me with the gangster stuff. What you ain't gonna do is keep sitting over here looking like everything's sweet. Hold up. And, and you and you, I dig them up and do it again. Look, he was all happy after he was like, off my chest. Sometimes it's just about that. Sometimes yeah. it's just about real quick. Oh, yeah. Now what Jesus said, Jesus was like, you know, I don't know what that man was feeling, man. I need to get it off his chest. And the, That's and real. The, and the end result was one of the greatest moments in hip hop history, that uh, in in general, like and they broke every record, every record they they, they were got beating Takashi awards. If nothing else. Let's clap it up for them getting Takashi out of here, just to get his name off of anything. We can get it off that it's stained. Let's let's continue to do that. Real nigga shit remains. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that. Hey, you know. Let's get your name right off the record books. Thank you, Jeezy. Thank you, Gucci. Now, somebody else come take it. That's fine, but he won't have it. Now mm-hmm. I feel better. Now we bring, I like to go into something. My topic is, is a bunch of little, because we're going to talk about stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. One, number one thing that pisses me off <laughs> when the fuck did toilet paper prices go up? When did they become expensive to wipe your ass? Kind of toilet paper you buy? Yeah. Double. Remember the prices before COVID. Remember the and look at the prices now. They, they went up a good percentage. I mean, if, you know, from ninety nine cent to one hundred nine, it ain't that bad. That you is know, true. I, I get I get that Walmart brand with the black. You know, you get like fifty seven rolls. You get that. You know, you get that fifty seven rolls for like you know thirteen bucks. So no. Exactly. So just think of this. Walmart went on their own brand, ten only ten cents, and they also tax their own money as much as you go across the line. So they're getting double money on top of that. So when another vendor comes in, Walmart's taxing you on top of their money as well. Let's get I got what you're saying. So I'm picking up what you're putting down. Money, you feel me? So when the fuck did it become expensive to wipe my ass? Wait, I got a question. I got a question. 
So y'all Walmarts have toilet paper? Because every time I go to Walmart, it might be you you lucky to see one. Champ, you got to remember, man, you live in a more, compared to us, you live in a more urban area. Like, face, you know, he live out there in the, in Montana, in Butte, Montana somewhere, you know, in, in the middle of the sticks out there where the Unabomber's old shack is. And then, you know, me, I, I live in a small town. So, like, there ain't even so many people out here wiping their ass. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a little toilet paper around. You know, you can find it. It ain't, it ain't that hard. Especially now. Now, when it first, now, when we first got on quarantine and they had everything, like, the, the announcement first went out, like, hey. Uh-huh. Oh, no. We had we had to stock up ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom came down, we went to Sound Club, we 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 bought everything in bulk and we, we was we was loaded up. <laughs> but I'd say, man, to be honest, after maybe the first month, we was good on the toilet paper and the main essentials, and then the lights all and came back now. We can get a little wipe every once in a while, you know, a little spray. You gotta get one bottle, but you know, you can get it. You know what I mean? We out here disinfected up, you know what I mean? Two plied up, you know what I mean? We all right on that channel. And I didn't realize that. I, I mean it did go up, but I didn't. Uh-uh. You gotta pay attention to it. Second thing that pisses me. <laughs> ignorant. Huh? Ignorant. 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 <laughs> true. True. Ignorant. Not not dumb people. Not not intellectually. But people that don't know. Motherfucker. So people yeah, that oh, don't know. In other know? words, ignorant. No, they ignorant, ignorant motherfucker. Oh, so they know, but ignorant. they don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just ignorant. You feel me? I, that's why I, I personally like to stay in the house. I don't like to go outside, but you got to go outside because you got to go to work. So I do a lot of like people that that could know, but they choose not to know. Yes. Yeah. People that cut you off in traffic with no signal and then look at you mad like, what you doing? Like, what am I doing? I'm driving yeah. into my lane. What are you doing? I, like uh-huh. a nigga break the rules uh, and get mad at you because you can enforce them. Nigga, you know what you were doing. You you read the sign. <laughs> Third you consequences come with this. I didn't tell you to do that shit. I didn't want you to do that shit. Third thing that pissed me off. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was me on this shit. Last thing, third thing that pisses me off. Everybody feels me with it. Kids. Spoiled kids. I ain't nothing wrong with spoiling your kids, especially little black kids that need to be spoiled more because there's too many out there that's not. But god damn it, when the law spoiled, god damn. Mm. Uh, Boy, my six and mm. three, six and mm-hmm. three. Mm-hmm. My six and three. Mm-hmm. I love them to death, but do I want to just body slam them through a little fluffy couch sometimes? Yes, I do. But I still love them to death. But do I want to body slam both of them? Yes, I do as well. Well, my son, man, like he be on, he be on my. He be on like the last nerve be right here, and then he be like tap dancing on that one, ready to belly flop on the empty void that is left. Like it, it's it's crazy. And then he give me the look, so I can't be bad, but so but like I be bad, but then it be like he'll do some 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 silly stuff, or he'll look at me all cute, and then I be like, <sighs> yeah, I feel you on that one. You you hit a you hit a you hit a nerve with that one, yeah. Oh yeah. It's like I'm mad at you for being spoiled, but then I'm mad at myself for spoiling you. But I feel bad if I don't spoil you because I want you to have everything that I ain't get to have. So then I'm like in that tight spot. Like then when I don't like, yeah, you don't deserve Christmas because you've been sitting here having a bad attitude and fussing back and talking back to me and your mama. But then if I don't give you a big Christmas, then I'm gonna feel bad. So now I don't want to be sitting around feeling all sad and guilty because I got to look at your sad face. I got to love you. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid feelings. <laughs> For people who cannot see what's going on right now, if you look like, oh my God, Pat's face looks hilarious. This is hilarious. His eyes is just like, like I don't know what's happening or whether somebody about to kill him or what, but if his feed go out, just know we got it on camera. <laughs> We got to record it. We will be able to uh, get to the authorities on your behalf, sir. But you look very terrified for saying, I don't know whether a big spider was swooping in or whether you saw Jason or what, but that look of horror, what in the world is happening? Are you girl, okay? girl, 
No, it was, it was cool. <laughs> People moving around, they didn't want to interrupt. That's all. Oh, okay. I was like, what? Oh, my God, boy. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, before we head out tonight, guys, Got to let the people know. Got to let the people know on behalf of the partners. Uh, we got new content that's about to be dropping. We got new merch that's about to be dropping. Please, please, please stay in tune with our website. Check it, check it, check it. Uh, you will be seeing new stuff coming from us this week. Um, we got a battle rap uh, blog that's going to be doing, coming out weekly with me. Where I'll be reviewing battles, uh, talking about the latest topics in battle rap, um, just giving you a hot take on it. Um you may see the partners on there as well. So, yeah, look forward to that. Um, we got new merch face. Tell them about the new merch we got. Oh, yes. We got new hoodies, new mugs, actually new mugs. We're coming out with new tote bags, um, you know, reusable shopping bags. People chewing from your local supermarkets like Walmart, Food Lion, Target. We have the bags for you on the website as well. Um, we will also be coming out with sweatsuits soon. Um, tops and bottom and still looking out for those face masks coming. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, on top of the partners merch, repping that face and co, please oh, yeah. make sure, you know what I'm saying, you go support. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, please. literally, literally dozens of designs up already. Hoodies, shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, whatever you need, whatever climate you live in, you got it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, get the models. You know what I mean? Go pick you up a, a, a Tiz hoodie. You know what I'm saying? You might see a, a neck shirt out there. You know what I mean? Like, so look out for it. Represent, you know what I'm saying? Support, support, support. Um, the more you guys support, the better we are able to eventually, hopefully, you know what I mean, do this full time and be able to really invest more energy into this. So support, support, support your boys. You know what I'm saying? If you got new content that you want to see from us, leave a comment on whatever platform you're listening to. Um, streaming this from um, check us out on all platforms. Um, check out YouTube where we'll see new right, content right, rolling right. out from us weekly on there. Um, check our social media accounts we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anything that you can find us on. Look for the partners, the partners podcast. We out here. Uh, Pat, what you got for him, man? You got anything that I'm missing? Oh, we are. Uh, <clears throat> You pretty much covered all the social media and everything okay, too. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So just man, um, you check social media too, man. We drop content on there as well. So you know what I mean? If you like to laugh, if you like to just continuously see and hear our perspectives outside of the podcast, can't get enough of our content. You can stay in touch with it that way. Um, yeah, that's all I got for y'all this week. Face, Pat, anything else for our uh before we sign off, guys? Please. 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 If you do listen to this episode, you got to re-listen to the beginning with Pat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. And Patreon. That's all I got. Oh, if you sign up for our Patreon, you are about to get a treat when this video drops. Oh, my God. And your boy is uh, learning video editing, so you may see some funny cuts and uh, remixes coming out with some of the blooper reel. So look forward to that on our YouTube and Patreon. Uh, as always, it's the partners on behalf of the partners. It's your boy Tiz. We out. As always, what's up, guys? Welcome Man. to the Podness. So with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations on Zoom, I am one-third of the Podness, your boy Tiz, a.k.a. Great Hoodie Tiz, with my two brothers in crime. Yo, it's Pat. Yo. I'm not going to fuck the intro up this time. <laughs> I'm here in Southeast Virginia. <laughs> All right, I fucked it up anyway. With my other um, partners and uh, my homeboy face down at um, Blackstone. You know, that's me right here, man. Pair of creative face. Laughing at Padawan as usual, man. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I was about to fucking choke on my smoke. Oh, man. So, yet Trying another week. Uh, <laughs> look like we got a blooper for y'all coming. Uh, so, <laughs> so you too, the Patreon people. Oh, Hopefully, man. y'all get ready for that. <laughs> all your problems. people are going to be confused yet another week. I got uh, issues. It's all good, bro. We're going to get straight into it this week. Uh, this just came across my timeline a few minutes ago, so I watched this video. Floyd Mayweather. Is fighting Logan Paul in an exhibition match in September. The great Logan Paul 2 0 knocking out Nate Robinson, Logan Paul. I don't even know where to go with this. Thoughts, for? opinions. What, what, be a- what for? <laughs> like, what has he done to earn a right to fight Floyd? What has he done the right to earn that amount of money? He's about to get paid millions of dollars to get beat up by Floyd Mayweather. Regardless if he's bigger than Floyd or not, he's about to get beat up by the undefeated Floyd and get paid millions of dollars. Millions and millions of dollars. So YouTube can get hype. Pay-per-view can get hype. All of them for what? For an exhibition fight. But after Floyd last fight, he won't do it nothing. Until Mike Tyson came back with his exhibition fight. So oh, what is Mike it? Mike can open the floodgates. You feel Yo. me? Yo, I think, I think this is minor black reparations. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I think like I feel like uh, the white boy uh, he been hitting uh, getting a lot of social media like or some shit and uh, dudes been going up there blah 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 but my black ass I whoop your ass I knock your punk ass out why well, you can't do that shit with me or whatever and uh, as a representative of the black community not always the best representative of the black community. Uh, Floyd stepped in and said, let me, let me get this easy money right quick. Not I mean, easy money. Because I and, see this being a reverse Nate easy. And, and all the black people going, well, and probably a lot of us going to bootleg. But uh, uh, we're going to get a lot of black dollars out of it. And yeah, so either way, yeah, black people would like to see, I hate to say it because it sounds controversial, but 400 years, black people probably want to see some white guy get knocked the fuck out by a black dude. After all the, all matter of fact, after 2020 in general, all this shit been going on from Joy Floyd to take it now, not, not to take it all the way there, but shit, Big we need fact. some kind of rep. So, so minor reparations. That's why I think we still need um inflation of 40 acres in a mule, which I feel like is half the country. But um mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me shut up. <laughs> I would know you talking. <laughs> um, yeah. Why do I have a weird feeling that Logan Paul may may knock this dude out for some reason on some fluke stuff? Because Trump it ain't even going to be no like, one time. Knock out. My Nobody logic, knock all, out. everything in my logic says Floyd second round knockout, easy money, never gets punched, never gets touched the entire fight. But for some reason, it's going to be a lot. Of I dance. feel like this white boy got a puncher's chance on some like weird fluke, like. Backwards overhand left or something that like connects out of nowhere or something. I feel like I'd it might like be. Oh, I let face it. If he do get knocked out, if Floyd do get knocked out, it ain't nothing but karma for him talking all that cash shit. True. When Mike Tyson tried to start a, and he started coming out talking all that cash shit. True. Hold on, he was talking he was shit about Mike. Time. He was talking about all the greats. Like he was the greatest. And having multiple belts in the divisions was messing up the art of boxing and all this other stuff, all this other jazz. And he was comparing this up to Ozzy and how he was better than Ozzy, better than Mike Tyson. He's the greatest of all. He is the greatest of all times. I don't know about the greatest of all times, man. Now, I may not, may not be able to beat you personally, but that's what that fight for. <laughs> you good. You're but good. When you talk about these other boxers, you can't beat Tyson. If he was in your weight class, the ferocity of that man at your size. You won't touch him, Floyd. I'm sorry. Ali in your weight class. You won't touch him, Ali in your weight class. I'm I'll sorry. tell you who won't none of them touch him. <laughs> in his prime, won't none of them touch him, Roy. Mm. Roy, the closest mm. thing to the best fighter of all time I've seen since Sugar Ray Rocks. Like, Roy, Roy was man. scary. Roy good, went for and, he, and he beat the Roy hell out of other belt. champions. He had, I think he had. Belts in four different weight classes. True. Started at middleweight, went all the way to heavyweight, champion in all of them. And, exactly. and technically, like, I consider him undefeated. 
Because that that uh, disqualification should have never happened in the first place. That was just a horrible refing job. I think it's going to be a lot of dancing. If 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 the um, what's the white boy name? Logan Paul. Paul. Logan Paul. I don't even How know the hell you have my favorite Paul. superhero? He got my favorite superhero name as his first name. He got a yeah. He got a win. That's Wolverine. But anyway, <laughs> Wolverine. Logan. Has, I hope. Logan. <laughs> but he I mean, got a shot. But yeah, I'm, it's gonna be some dancing. Yeah, I mean, it, chance, man. it's chance. gonna be some Jabberwocky dancing. <laughs> I mean, I mean the the music video of Bop at the end dancing. <laughs> I mean, cousin Skeeter dancing. Like, yeah, just dance. It's gonna I be some dancing. That'd be funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think my final take on this. Mm -hmm. The white boy got a chance, but I'm predicting the second round knockout. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Nate Robinson accompanies Floyd to the ring so he can be there to witness the knockout. He needs some redemption. That, God bless him. That would be dope. That would be dope. <laughs> that would be dope. Two I'll, short little I'll dudes coming up to the ring together. I just want to be there to sweep the money that Floyd going to throw out on the way up to the ring. I'm trying to sweep all that money and run. I don't even want to see the fight. I just want to go just sweep behind Floyd when he walk up and just grab the money and go. That's it. I want to be on the undercard against Nate Robinson. Shit. <laughs> if he fight like that, I, I can knock him out. You come on in here with that bull rushing if you want to. You will catch two uppercuts and a sweep and a two-piece, and it's going to be night-night. I don't got time for night, fight. Night. <laughs> you can put me on the undercard for a random dude in a big bird costume. I I win the fuck out that fight. Why are you fighting mascots? Because it's like, fun. What is happening right now? Are you raiding I, kids' birthday parties, running up on dudes? Have you not seen a baseball game? Yeah. Have you not seen the times when people just run up to the uh free and mascot and start fighting? But, oh, one time, mask, I wish I, I, I would mascot, be a mascot. Knock I was gonna say, I wish I would knock be a somebody out of here, but you with that hundred pound head, real quick, get your ass back. Trash you will run up on me. I mean, this hot kids. ass costume already mad and it stink, and you will kids. run up on me. Kids crying because I done took the hat off and beating the dude with the hat. He took his own head off. Oh my god, where's the blood? Let me shut up. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. So on another note, man. Um, Something that's really close and personal to my heart. Um, the house has personally just decriminalized cannabis, they just passed the bill now, I just Amen. have to get past the Senate. Um, I'm, I'm not that that positive and optimistic about it getting past Senate because they're Senate led by the, by the Republicans, they're Republican led, where sure. the house is more Democratic led. Once again, I have no party affiliation either way. But just going by what I know about the politics when it comes to cannabis, I don't think it's going to make it past Senate. But if they look at it in a more financial way and look at it as a cash crop and a way to make money easily the way they used to before 1937, they would definitely pass it. Because if they do their simple research like anybody could before 1937, marijuana and cannabis and hemp was a major cash crop. We weren't using trees for the stuff we used to put that. We were using hemp for that. Yeah. Mm. So, at the end of the day, it's it's a positive thing for the community and the whole. It'll definitely help with tax revenue. It'll definitely get yeah. more jobs. It'll definitely oh. lower the crime rate. I can definitely say that. Yeah. It'll definitely, be, definitely, if you legalize it, it'll be open and available to more people who need it, who can't afford to go get it through the 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 legal way now. You feel me? Who are forced to do illegal things to go that route. You know I mean? If you force up, it, open it up, go ahead and fully legalize it, pass this bill, we'll see the positive attributes that can definitely come from marijuana fulfilled. You know I mean? It won't be just looked at as a drug because at the end of the day, it's not a drug. Nothing's done to it. It's grown, pick, here you go. Drugs are chemically induced by man, as far as, far as what I know. You know I mean? like, that's what I've always been told. A drug is chemically induced. Something has to be done to another substance to make a drug. So, mm -hmm. what y'all think about this happening? Um, so I got four, I guess, trains of thought here as you were going there. Um, I think it's a great leap in justice. Um, I'm really glad to see like the people who are locked up currently 
able to actually come home, um, especially, you know, people who are locked up for only marijuana related crimes, um, especially those that are non-violent. Marijuana is one of the, has one of the lowest violence rates when it comes to the average person who's getting arrested for it. So I feel like that would be a good thing. Um, I also think that the funds they generate from legalizing it and um, allowing more medical dispensaries and that type of thing to be in communities. The funds could really build up a lot of, like those in need communities and deprived communities. That's like their biggest mm -hmm. issue is just, they don't have the, the average household income to really be, to build it up the way they need. We could use them funds to like, kind of go in and put in programs and build up houses and like give people that don't have what they need. Mm -hmm. um, I think that could be a good thing. I think that the people who get released from prison and jail may need, they're gonna to have to have some type of like path to re-entry to society. Cause I'm thinking of like the trauma from being institutionalized. Mm -hmm. And you got people that might've been down 10, 15 years from that, that are now being released. They went in innocent. Or at least, you know what I'm saying, going in for a crime that probably shouldn't have been as trumped up as it was. I can only exactly. imagine like what that's done to their psyche and just making sure that that's going to be a massive release of people coming home from jail and prison too. So just preparing those communities for like programs to get these people jobs so that they're not finding themselves caught up in a different type of crime because of, you know what I'm saying, they don't have any resources, that type of thing. But they're definitely going to have to be some type of plan for those people that get released. Um, I definitely think all medical cannabis should be legal completely, just like, period. Um, I think recreational should be decriminalized, but how that looks in each state, I'm still cool with that part. Like, if you have a medical card, cool, go to the dispensary, get your medicine. But I'm cool with letting recreational kind of be up to the community level or the local level, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause you might have a community where that entire community is Quakers. I'm cool with you deciding that, hey, it's decriminalized, but we gonna still have some policies around. That's just not what we gonna do here. And somewhere uh -huh. like where I live, where it's a lot more uh, metropolitan and you got a whole lot more mixtures of people. Cool, you know what I'm saying? The culture here will probably be more accepting of it. So I think it should be based on where it's accepted, but I'm really just glad to see it stop being looked at as this horrible thing like it's a boogeyman uh -huh. or something when uh -huh. compared to every other thing that's scheduled in the same way it is by the government these other things are causing like deaths and the worst i can see you know what i'm saying like don't get me wrong marijuana has effects i'm not gonna sit here and just be completely blind to the science but i also know that those effects a lot of them are not as trumped up as politics has kind of made them to be and i know uh -huh. that it has a lot more medical effects and it's a lot of people out there that are suffering unnecessarily that could be helped and be able to live a high quality of life with just those policies being in place so i'm i'm excited for it um but before they do anything with this i want them to go ahead and get a comprehensive covid plan and release some stimulus checks um get that settled first because to me that's more pressing than the marijuana thing like the people I know that smoke or are in the marijuana, they getting their stuff. The people that don't want to smoke, they not. Right now, everybody's susceptible to this COVID shit. So I just want them to go ahead and figure that out and get that settled and then get to work on the, uh, the, the marijuana and uh, get these student loans off our ass. I've, well, well. I'm high right now, so you know I'm for it. And <laughs> I had to put the shit down for so I could be current and whatnot. But it is funny you bring that medical uh, side of it up because if you really think about it, the medicines they have now, they have more crucial effects than marijuana in some cases. Man, I, I, I got allergies. I took Benadryl. That thing will have me out for a whole day. For a whole day. I can take it in the morning. I will not wake up till nine o'clock. You know, they, you know, like marijuana is shoot. It helps out with my anxiety. I calm the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? I could think a little bit clearer as long as I know my own rate. I know where I need to calm the fuck down, put the blunt down at. You know what I'm saying? 
they got for anxiety in the medical field Xanax. And if you ever take a Xanax, you can't even you you not you can't even take a whole at all. Turn yeah, into a zombie, man. A total zombie. The the things they have, they 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 classify for like ADHD, you know, Adderall. You know that that shit that I mean, in some cases, it's good because it can make a person focus, but it's just, it's damn near the equivalent of, of any other opioid or whatever. Like, and then on the simple fact, if they do de uh, decriminalize all of this, um, in general, y'all got to excuse me because that is a very high syllable word and I am high right now, so I might stumble <laughs> over a couple of things. Um, as far as decriminalizing it, um, yeah, they should release. And then my concern is just like yours is I, I feel like if anything, the companies that's profiting off of it now should help with the system of bringing them in. Being that if it worked for them then and the only other problem was y'all uh, arrested me and put me away with killers <laughs> and everything, then it should be a way to bring them in. Colorado made so much money off the year that they made so much money off the taxes that they had to return something back to the to the actual citizens in general. Yep. So that, that whole driving system right, right there, there, that right there, off the taxes they made off of it, if they have a, a low income area, they have a money in a year to help build that area up. Exactly. In, in general. So, mm -hmm. yeah, on that note, I'm going to just, I'm going to smoke the rest of this. I got another one over here, but that's for Oh, me. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my, that's my biggest point, like, with that, like, I hope that they use the money for those communities that need it instead of these wealthy corporations coming in and, like, Amazoning and Walmarting the cannabis industry where the top 1% still is getting all of the benefits from it. And the people who are most needing these extra funds, they still suffer. Like that's, that's the, that's my only concern because when you get politicians involved in stuff, they like to look out for themselves and their cronies instead of the public sometimes. So I'm excited yeah, about yeah. it. I'm really happy. Um, <clears throat> happening. I hope yeah. that the Senate does what is right. And you know what I'm saying, co-signs this bill as well. I'm just hoping that once it does get passed, they do the right thing with the yeah. way they yeah. roll out the programs and the way they use the funds coming in. Cause that's a yeah. lot, that's billions of dollars just coming in. And I hope that they use it for the people that need it. Cause this country hurting man, like shit. And yeah. need some relief. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, they that, that. a large amount of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that industry, they got to that industry itself. That should be for the people, because for for real, for real, I don't want great value weed. Like I don't want you great mean? value cannabis. That is going to like trash the pop idea. <laughs> cannabis. Like I'm, I know that it is going to be uh, produced correctly. <laughs> All right, next random topic. Okay, uh -oh. I can. Have y'all seen Kevin Gates and his Jerry curl? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this nigga. Oh, what? <laughs> Kevin yeah, Gates. Man. Kevin Gates got a jury curl, dog. Like, man, just oh, um, man. he has he has a jury curl. He put that jump. He, I think he he put it out on it. Oh, his social media, Ooh. dog. He looked like a fat Rick James in the face. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Yo, just I look it up when you. Just just look at it when you have time. Look, look, at the Padawan is my Instagram. Y'all can find it there. <laughs> Yo. My, I'm gonna probably yeah, put, it in, put it in the group chat. That sounds worse than the uh than the uh what is it? The what they calling them, the Draves. Yeah, oh y'all yeah, saying that the dude got the he got like waves, waves in the all the way oh, around. Yeah. And this then the dress like in the very middle. I was like, what you, the, how did you, you put your do you know, over that? You know what he did, right? You, you know the, what happened, right? When with dress fight, somebody pulled his dress out. Either that, <laughs> <laughs> either that, or sometimes like, your with, with some with with dread, some people can't grow 
this side. Like some people can't like it with some people, hair grows differently for them. So like mm. you may have like I remember when I had my um cornrows or whatever, I couldn't I, my shit was hanging from the top. Like my shit was all the way on my hang time was on the top or whatever. So I had to plait my shit up or whatever. Some people this shit does not dread the fuck up. Or they had he did dreads. that shit on purpose. They had dreads and it grew back because it was stretching back and it put all this new growth in the front and he ain't know what to do. How with the that. hell it grow back? Like, it all right, happened, so I got it, locks it, now it, and happens, my lock yo, is right be, here. Be, be when aware, I go look. get my hair cut with the new growth, guess what? The new growth is where the hair that was never locked up in the first place is. That lock be, is still be. in the same place. You mean to tell me somebody's scalp is running backwards? Yeah, look, it I happened to me. Man. Look, I'm, I'm, it, it happened to me. It happened to me. Yo, yo, you see this dread right here? This was made like this started off like really small, probably like like right here, probably about uh, about three years ago. This is this is about three years of dread. Like you get a fro, like it's it's like a fro right here, and all my dreads in the front is small. But if this one right here. Oh, well, no. I can't, Where is this I fro the coming from? Because what I'm saying is, ain't nothing it, growing right here. Like, I'm getting that it, edged up. Yo, Dude, like this one, this one you, right he here. Up. I might have pulled his dreads out. <laughs> this one right here, right? <laughs> I got ones that's like on the top of my you, head that was right up front. And it's just the way it grows. It's, it's like they grow back or something or, or whatever. I know it's, it, Man, if any of you are. Ain't shifting, dude. Your scalp like, ain't shifting. I must get retwisted. I'm, I'm telling we you, forget. this was all a fro right at first, Nigga, like forget. five years ago. I had dreads for like nine years. So don't That's forget, true. I had long hair too. My scalp don't shift. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, where, where, but, um, like, this is baby I, hair. This is that's, 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 that's baby hair up here. That's not, that's not even the hair that's locked. It, it, it happened might... to me, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I was getting my hair braided, and it was pulling my hair back. And when it pulled my hair back, it grew a whole bunch of new growth right here. Now, his shit was extreme. I don't know what's up with his shit. It looked like he got that right guy. here or whatever, and this, that, and the third. But, like... Like that's how it was. Not, not to be all up in my face and shit trying to describe. I've never heard of this in my life. Uh, I literally thought that dude like cut his hair, like he had dreads here and he cut it around to make a mohawk, and then he grew that out to make waves. I did not nah. think that his hair is moved. What? I have never heard of this phenomenon. Yep. No. I'm gonna look that up after the pod today. Like it, ha it, it happened to me. Crazy. It happened to me. Because you're the only other person in the world I've ever known that to happen to. Yeah, it, it happened. Hey man, oh boy, guys. I got people YouTube in Atlanta viewers. that will test for it. YouTube viewers, y'all look out for a Tears Takes blog coming out this week about this. I will be researching this and talking about this this week. This Drake. is crazy, Drake. Yeah, hell, trying to Drake. tell you, yo, you can and ask dude, people. Kevin Gates got a Jerry curl. I'm done. I don't Drake's know where that topic yo, was supposed to go, but I uh, yeah, that was it was a random topic. The, my other random topic was Mario Lopez I can't it. in in a Lifetime movie channel uh, movie about KFC, the Colonel, and it's supposed to be a love story. Like he's supposed to be the oh. Colonel on the, uh, from KFC, <laughs> and it's a love what? story. Oh, Mario what? Lopez, oh. Mar Mario Lopez from Save from uh, Save by the Bell and all them other Slater? game shows. Yes, not Slater, not Slater. Oh. The, uh, the, Mario. the, the Sp Spanish dude. That's Mario, Mario Lopez, AC Slater. Hold on. Oh, so AC uh, Slater is playing the Colonel. Save by the Bell yeah, in a love story about KFC on Lifetime. I'm fucked. Up. I don't know where to go with that. I twenty twenty that combination don't nothing about that combination sound like it don't make no sense. damn sense. The lifetime of Mario Lopez, uh, yes, kind of cheesy, kind of cheesy, cool. KFC, the Colonel, go together. Created it, got the earth and spices, cool. But you put all of that together and then shove it into a love story. What? He got tired of doing game shows. That's all. But he fell in <laughs> love with the lady who know. gave him the secret recipe. What the fuck is happening? Ratings are going to be high on it. Ratings, gonna have ratings are going to be high because people are going to turn in just to see what it's about. It's, it's like chicken. Sharknado. I mean, ain't nobody like, going to miss chicken. It's like Sharknado. People watch that shit ratings and it's the stupidest shit ever. 
But you got watch it. There. You got me. You got me. I actually watched about 10 minutes of that one. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. love a train wreck, yo. I People love a train wreck. Some that night, so. It's an actual video of train wrecks. Dumb ass people. <laughs> I'm done. And I Dumb hate the people. fact of Mario Lopez, Lifetime, and KFC nah. combining in any way. But guess what? Not only do I hate some, I'm sure nah. Face got something that he hates this week. Speaking of hate. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I got three things this week too. Three things I hate. First thing, lazy kids, man. And I'm not talking about little kids. I'm talking about these kids, like 18 through 25. That's kids to me because I'm damn near 40. So these lazy, lazy kids, kids, man. They, they, grown ass, entitled kids. You think just because you just because you think you're grown, something's supposed to happen just because? No, you got to put in work. Believe That's that. the thing people don't do these days: put in work and earn what you got to get. Due diligence. Due diligence gets you everything. Everything worth doing is going to be hard. Nothing easy in life is worth doing. Just like easy money. It's fast, it comes back, and it's gone. Easy, fast money. But the money you earn, the money you work for, that's the money that lasts. You feel me? That's the money you put away. That's that that hard earned money. That's right. You sound real old right now. I I do. I I don't. They don't. Old man face. Old man face. They're 1940. I ain't even 40 yet, but I'm close to it. But he's young, man, young, lazy ass kids just get to me, man. Second thing, <laughs> second thing that pissed me off, Dose. dumb ass parents. <laughs> dumb parents <laughs> piss me off. Yes, yes Lord, I understand yes, that Lord. though. Because the river deal of a lazy ass kid is a dumb ass parent. You got to understand, if then because you're not there doing your parenting thing, you're just trying to be your kid's friend, that's exactly. not going to lead to a good outcome. You got to set rules and guidelines. You don't set rules and guidelines for your friend. You said rules and guidelines for subordinates and kids. Set yeah. the rules and guidelines. Give your kids a good head start so they can have a good outcome. I'm tired of seeing these young dumbass kids because they got young dumbass parents. No, that's serious. Ain't, yeah, wrong, ain't nothing wrong with being a young parent. Circumstances something friend. happen, but just, I ain't just got no friends dumbass like parents. No, I don't. No. Not one. No, not really. I don't. I, I know people, but. That's just because it's freaking right. Absolutely. Like, like, you are not a friend uh, of your uh, child. You are uh, a child and should uh, be in a child's place until you become an yeah. adult. If you're, uh-huh. doing adult. if you're mature enough to be doing adult things and you have your own place, your own transportation, and you working already, cool, then I can respect you as such if you're moving like an adult. But if you're a kid, you still living with your mama, and you still watch cartoons and, and having meals made for you and having clothes bought for you, if you don't shut the hell up and follow directions, Ain't no conversations in this. It's directions. And then you follow them until you are smart enough to make better decisions for yourself, child. God bless you. You can still watch cartoons when you're an adult, because I still do. But yeah, pay bills and shit. Be responsible and whatnot. Yep. <laughs> Got to handle yourself as an adult in an adult situation. Yeah. The last thing that piss me off, going to take a little step to the right, is the lack of black business in black areas. Now, mm. um, I was watching a documentary about, about was it Killer Mike. Um, yeah, by all doing everything all black, by mm-hmm. all black business. I yeah. attempted, I attempted to try to do it, and I couldn't find a black owned restaurant in my area. I damn sure couldn't find a black owned bank in my area. I don't know no black farmers in my area, so. That would have been a horrific day. But try it. Try living black in your area and see how many black owned businesses there are. I mean, you really got to go black. You can't go to Walmart and just because it's in a black area. No, it's not owned by black. You got to go black owned groceries who get their groceries and get their produce from black farmers. How difficult is that? It shouldn't be that difficult, especially in black areas, but it is. Other cultures, businesses flourish in our areas too much. It's pissing me off because where's our revenue going? We invest all our revenue into other cultures and they profit in our communities. But we always complain and complain. Stop complaining and do something. You got the solution in your face, but you choose not to listen to it. You choose to continue to do the same thing because you in that cycle. Yeah. But the people who step out of the cycle, they're, 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 looked up, they're looked upon like they look down upon because you choose to step out of the cycle. And I'm not going to keep doing that. You feel I'm going to so, say, I. I see the two sides of it. Like for one, black consumers, we gotta be willing to go spend our dollars 
with black businesses and stop giving it this stigma of like something else is better because it's not black. Like we got to stop that self hate where we ride past one of our bookstores and go to Barnes and Noble, or we ride past the mom and pop restaurant on the corner to go to McDonald's or Ruth Chris or whatever the restaurant is chain that is like, it's a lot of self hate in us where we feel like something is inferior on the, on the inside if it's from our people. But then on the other hand too, saw some recently that made me think about this perspective. Black businesses, we gotta actually work hard to provide a good service. We can't be out here mm-hmm. just because we're black thinking that black people are supposed to buy from us. I saw a video <laughs> on stage posted. Somebody went and bought wings from a black owned business, got the wings home. The wings were no bigger than a bottle cap off a Sprite bottle. You can't be out here as a black business to come up, come eat at my black restaurant, then you give me this shit and the wings and the Chinese people up the street giving me half a cat leg in my on my rice. Like you can't do me like that. And the whole meal, like $20, $30. You heard me. Now you done charged me $30 for these little baby, these little, these little baby wingettes. And now you pay rent, baby. I'm paying six fifty for rice, six <clears throat> big fat look wings look like they came off a super pigeon. And I get a drink and some fries with it. So you get like, it's too far. Like we got to stop that self hate, but then black businesses can't keep coming up with these subpar ass uh, products and then expecting, well, I'm black, you supposed to be with your people. Yeah, but I also want this shit not to fall apart before I get to my house. So I'm gonna go ahead to Walmart where at least yeah, I know what yeah. I'm doing. And that's the thing. I don't like, care who I tell you me, shit, it, shit, your product, it, shit, your product, yeah. rubber culture, you yeah, shit, it, it, shit. Exactly. Shit. Exactly. Think, and that's the product. That shit. <laughs> we, we, but we got to do better as consumers, but as businesses too. And that's the thing. Oh yeah. I, on a day. on a positive oh. note, I do think that uh, with the internet and everything, that that could help bring in businesses online can bring in income in areas that may not have a black business. Like like in my area, I'm is mostly, it's basically half and half. It's half white, half black um, in, in general. But most business owners, they may own like a restaurant or a bar or something like that um, in, in general. But it's not like, if I go to a bookstore, it's a white owned bookstore, you know? But on a, on a side note, I would say a lot of black businesses are profiting on it on the internet and it, as far as the black community on the internet it does it does show strength there and then that way we can bring that out into the community or whatever oh also support black superheroes if you right support on. black superheroes yeah, we we'll have black yeah, superheroes right. not a fucking black batman not a not a fucking black su- uh, superman but an actual own superhero so we can be more prevalent in the media you know the black world. black man <laughs> that was yeah, a classic right. movie. People, 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 people forget about black man, yo. People that, nigga about made, black that nigga made a nunchuck out of a boot. <laughs> out of a yeah, fucking right. boot. The grappler hey, hook hey, out the out the uh, Mentos tag. J five. J five. Go check that movie out, man. Go check that movie out, Black Man. B-L-A-N-K, a, man. It's a classic. Black man. Classic. I wasn't talking to my Jimmy. He had the Good phone. Yeah, <laughs> he had, my, he had a phone movie, on his belt and everything. And he was everything. talking on the belt. I wasn't talking. To, and the girl called him. And said, I wasn't talking to my Jimmy. <laughs> he had that long ass antenna. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about movies, um, I was browsing through Netflix over the past couple of weeks and um. Ran across the Kevin Hart special, No F's Given. Um, so on the special, you know, he did it from his house or whatever because of COVID. Um, got mixed reviews online, but um, one of the major stories, I guess, that came from his show was he had a joke on the show where he referred to his daughter liking more than one boy as whole behavior. Um, he even went so far as to actually say the phrase. Yep, soon as I saw it, I thought... My daughter's a hoe. So um, people over the internet came came at him pretty tough about the joke. Um, and then on Clubhouse, like kind of right around the release of the show when everybody was talking about it, um, 
a room called Is Kevin Hart Funny popped up. So Kevin Hart went into the room. Um, and when he got in there, he was like dialoguing with people about the joke, um, kind of trying to explain himself, basically saying that he was basically more referring to his daughter saying that she had whole like behavior, but he wasn't actually trying to say that she is a hoe. Um, <clears throat> what do you guys think? Do y'all think that the joke was too far? Do you think that the backlash was actually worth it? Do you think that he should have got that backlash? And if you've seen the special, what are your thoughts in general? On the special. Man, I seen the special, man. Um, personally, I, I don't think it's up to the Kevin Hart standard as far as stand ups to me. So, I mean, it was lackluster. I mean, I appreciate the material. I appreciate the effort as far as him giving us more material during that time when a lot of people couldn't do stand ups and stuff like that. So, I'm glad he had a big enough house that he could do it in, had a small crowd, right. good to go. So, some good stories. It wasn't to the same theatrics as he used to do these videos on stage. I don't know. Could have been tired. Could have been whatever. Whatever it is, I, I don't know who I'm going to judge. I'm not in his field. I don't I don't have the courage to get on stage and do what he does. It's, it is what it is. I'm not a comedian. But right, at the end right, of the day, right. it's, a, it's a product. Like, we all buy a product. So even if it is on Netflix, I'm paying a Netflix subscription to get the material. So it's a, a product we look for. We subscribe to his name. We see his name. We go to that stand up, we expect to see a certain thing. So when we don't meet our expectations, we'll be kind of let down. But at the end of the day, is he supposed to be held up to our expectations as viewers? Or is he supposed to just give us the material he has? That's where the question really lies. Um, as far as a joke, I mean, I personally feel like people getting too sensitive these days anyway. It's a joke, it's a joke. You look at stuff, Richard Pryor used to say, look at stuff Dick Gregory used to say, look at um stuff Red Fox used to say. It's a joke, you feel me? Like to each his own. If you want to be sensitive, take it sensitive. Um, and his reference, like it's <laughs> to each his own as far as each man sees it is as it is. You feel me? Like one perspective is different from mine. So if he felt like he felt comfortable there, his family had no problem with it. Who might say something about that? He, it ain't my child. Now, if he was calling my daughter hoe, now that'd be something different. If he calls my else's daughter hoe, that'd be something different. But he's references in his own child, he's just speaking his stories. Because that's once once again, as he said in special, what else are you gonna talk about but his wife and his kids? So mm -hmm. that's his wife and his kids. Other people on stage and call their wives bitches and hoes and stuff like that. Have the people come down on them? Worse. No, because that's exactly so much, much worse. Just domestic violence jokes. I mean, much, much worse. But people like to pick that thing out and pick on it because that's what it, the internet age does. It's a cancel culture. So this is another attempt to try to cancel Kevin Hart. But as he says, with the name of the special, no fucks given. So he really didn't give a fuck about it anyway. So it is what it is. I feel like I feel like he should increase the no fucks a little bit more just off of responding off of what people say, just in general, because no matter what you do, no matter how great your performance, you know people going to have something to say or whatever. I did see the, um, <clears throat> I did see the, uh, the stand up and everything. Um, yeah, it wasn't like balling out crying, but he did give me a, a few laughs and everything. So I didn't think it was as bad as people were saying it was, it, mm -hmm. it was Kevin Hart. Um, and I would say over the years, he may have, I feel like he haven't had, he, he calmed the edge down. He, he doled the edge down some, uh, in general, but I feel like he did that on behalf of like just basically business in general. Now, as far as like the whole aesthetic of the whole show, that shit was beautiful. Like I like he the way he came in it, with the kids, his house is beautiful. It looked totally clear or, or whatever. It didn't look like somebody just put something. It was an actual. No, production. it was shot well. It was very. It was produced really good. It was an actual production. So many values. Yep. Um, I guess for me, I I feel like. There's a way, like words mean something to me. You feel mm -hmm. me? I feel like him saying to me, it, he could have made a funnier joke about the behavior being whole light. But when he said the phrase, my daughter's a hoe, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have cared. It wouldn't have even hit me in a weird way. But <clears throat> as the husband to a wife who very much so, you know, 
all about like women's rights and making sure that they are protect black women protected. But then yeah. just as a man who's grown a little bit, that particular phrase could have been left out and I feel like the rest of the joke would have been just fine. But when yeah. he said, oh my God, my daughter's a hoe. You got to know in 2020, as a businessman, as a Kevin Hart, who is a CEO, who's been through these type of things where his words are scrutinized, you got to know that as soon as you say that phrase, you're going to have a bunch of people come at you. Like, that's just the, the time we live in there where it's cancel culture and people going to be quick to jump on your ass <laughs> if you to offend somebody. So, like, to me, I just think he could have been smarter about it. But overall... Until I saw the backlash online, I didn't even really take it as a big deal. Like, it's a joke. I've heard words from other comedians. I've heard words from Kevin Hart. So it ain't that big deal to me. Was, my bigger issue with him right now is, I don't know if, I, if his stand-up is very funny anymore to me. Like, I watched it. I got, I got the jokes. I got the humor. But for the first time doing a Kevin Hart special, I didn't laugh out loud. It was more like yeah. a nod, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel you, yeah, I get it. But it was more like, uh -huh. and he, yeah. yeah, he usually gives me, like, that gut laugh, like, him, like, him, Chappelle, and Kat. I usually get that, because they each appeal to the three different parts of my humor that I like, you know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. like, I didn't get that from him. Like, it was very vanilla and dry to me. It just didn't. I kept waiting for it to pick up and it just never did for me. So I guess I'm just trying to think like, is Kevin, is his run almost over? Is, is this the, like, you know how Chris Rock had his big run and now he's uh -huh. still Chris Rock. But it's been a while since he had to see Chris Rock. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Is this Kevin Hart's phase to kind of phase out until he's like 60 and then pop back up on the scene? You know, funny this whole like I don't know. He's still gonna be in movies and stuff. If, if yeah, and movie in. wise, he's still hilarious to me. Like I like yeah. his movie. <clears throat> I don't. So he'll be all right. I feel about him as a stand up right now. Yeah, gonna make that but uh, but yeah, I I feel like um he probably get more into his movies, probably make more movies, especially off of seeing the like how it was produced, um that last stand up and everything, but. Yeah, he'll be all right. I I, I feel like he just I, I, I think he's gonna go on his Eddie Murphy run where he do Dr. Doolittles and the clumps and stuff like that or or whatever. But he might he might still do stand up. So he can do whatever he wants in general. Um uh, next topic. It's bringing up um it seemed like man, we can't do nothing we want. <laughs> nothing we want. Um I have I brought this topic was brought up by um my brother right we watch uh mm -hmm. we watch a, a Joe Biden podcast and he has his own network or whatever and he oh, with what? the podcast he what Joe Biden, Biden what he has his no, own he, network he's building on his network I'm about to explain <laughs> he's building on his network with he's 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 he transforming it to Joe Button the Joe Button network and he's he bringing up uh this his first uh, podcast under him. And it's, uh, it's a okay. podcast uh, dedicated to the ladies. Is that the um, one with, uh, what's her name, Bridget Kelly? And yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I think I yeah. see like a little clip. Okay. Up. okay, I know what you're talking about now. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, and no, I was, they, they're like, um, I would say the woman answer to the Joe Button podcast, pretty much. Uh, in, okay. In general. So, yeah. might be interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So the topic came up randomly. Uh, my my brother brought this clip, and my brother is a gamer. So when mm -hmm. he brought this clip, he was like, "Look at this bullshit," because <laughs> he was pissed off. So I watched the video, and they were saying like, um, basically, they don't like. Uh, well, two of them was like, they don't like men that game, pretty much or whatever. They even went about far as saying me getting, they get mediocre dick. And all this other bullshit or whatever, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I was like, I'm not even a gamer, you know. Like, but I felt pissed off for my brother and my um and my homeboys that game because I, every person I know that that's been gaming, um, their wife is happy. They're they're at home, they're chilling, you know. Like, you know, 
the I, I really feel like it's on the the woman itself. Like if that woman is a woman that needs more attention, then maybe she don't want a gamer. You know, because most gamers mm -hmm. they introverted, they like to be in their own space and that's it. And then when they want time mm -hmm. to be around you, they'll be around you. Even though I'm not a gamer, I understand that because mm -hmm. it, if you take away gaming, I I draw. So when mm -hmm. I'm drawing, I don't want to be bothered. I'm into what I'm drawing. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's the same yeah. skill eh? uh, in general. And then uh, I even posted something up on Facebook to see why women have a bad taste for gamers or whatever. And it all led up to the same thing as far as attention. It's like they had uh, some women had bad experience where the man wasn't doing what he wanted. He was just coming home gaming or he was just at home gaming pretty much and and felt like he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do as a man or whatever but like on the introspect i was like if you take away gaming and you put something else in place of it you would still have the same problem instead of him gaming he might be out with the fellas all the damn time you definitely don't like that because at least when he's gaming you can see what the fuck he's doing you know mm -hmm. In, in, in general, so mm -hmm. just a rabbit, how y'all feel about it? Uh, you want to take this one first, or you want me to go face? You go ahead. Okay, so I got a, uh, I'm going to start with the PC way, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to end with a little bit more of my honest feelings. Um, mm -hmm. So to go PC, I'm going to start with, I, I understand a woman, those women's perspectives. Now, what I don't understand is the media big part. That's on them. That's their, I don't know. My wife is satisfied, so I can't speak to what they go through in that area. I don't think there's a relation between that and none of that. It's just you ran across some bad dudes that weren't, not, weren't worth nothing. Uh -huh. um, I also understand what, what women can be saying with the time thing. Um, so I get it. I'm also going to even say that if a man is sitting around playing a game all day, he's not trying to go work, he's not succeeding at his job or even, you know, able to keep a job because of it or, you know, that type of thing, I have nothing but agreement with the woman on that. Mm. However, what I have personally seen in situations of a male that plays the game, myself playing the game, whoever, usually, it's therapeutic for the guy. Yep. That guy is yeah. less likely to blow up and be causing arguments in the house and like fussing and yelling at the wife because usually he's getting his aggression out in that game. Um, and he's usually, can't say all dudes perfect. You know, black men don't cheat, but I can't speak for every man. But usually there's less infidelity risk with that man because his time is not spent out in a place where he's going to be exposed to more temptation. He's going to be in a place where the worst he can do is level up on the game or, you know what I'm saying, doze mm -hmm. off. Things. Like, it, it's no real danger for the them to be there. So, usually that's the situation. I'm also going to say I feel like people who don't, who have issues with video games, they either don't play themselves, they're not good at games themselves, so they have a bias against it. Or they're just salty because they're not getting the attention they want. And the issue with the attention piece that I've seen is if the man is working all the time, that same woman that's fussing about the game is also fussing about that. So it's more of a needy thing on the woman's side where they are bored or unfulfilled in part of their life. So they're looking for the man to fill this entertainment space for them and, and, and be that thing. Because I've literally seen where a dude will chill with a, a, a woman all day long. They'll kick it. They go out to lunch. They'll have a, you know, they go do an activity in the afternoon. Then it's 7 or 8 o'clock. They come home from their day. Dude get on the game with his homeboy. Now the, the girlfriend or the wife or whatever, she's mad at him. You not spend no time with me. We just spent 12 hours together consecutively. Mm -hmm. You mean tell me I can't get these four hours off on this Call of Duty or this 2K real quick? Like, that's a mental thing in the woman a lot of times where they, they're they upset that something else is causing their man to have fun, and it's not them. Them. Hey, remember we did the joke a few years back, but they were like, you know, women ain't mad that 
you having fun. They mad that you having fun and they're not causing it. Uh-huh. If they played the game and they invite you over, they're excited. If you're doing something and you're enjoying yourself and they had it, they cause it, great. Anything, a lot, some women have an issue where anything that's not made or created or thought of or implemented by them in the relationship, if the man enjoys it, it's a problem. Uh, they will find uh, a problem with it because to them, their insecurity means, well, he's enjoying this, so it must be something wrong with me. No, this ain't talking me to damn death. This is actually, I'm having fun doing it instead of me being bored watching this dumb ass show that you wanted me to watch that you enjoy. Instead of, like, it's basically a thing of they want to force their fun on you. And when you're, you find your own thing, that's when it becomes a problem. And that's with anything. It could be with you get a hobby where you get into woodworking. Or you, get a ho- or you get a hobby where you get into, you know, fixing old cars or something. Guess what? Spend more than 30 minutes out there and, and come back in the house with a smile on your face, looking like you're happy. Some women going to start fussing regardless. Like, and, I, and I'm blessed enough to have a woman that's involved to understand that, like, this is my therapy place. This is my quiet time where I don't have to be on socially. I don't have to be on mentally. I can just literally have mindless entertainment and just kind of decompress from my day. But there's a lot of women out there. I just seen women get divorced over that stuff. But a lot of times, what I personally see, I mean, all situations like that, is usually an issue with an insecure woman where when the man stops gaming and they do something different, everything that's not directly tied to that woman is a problem. I don't know. What say you face? <sighs> nah, I'm a former gamer. Only reason I say former because I stopped just because I, I have a family with a lot. I got two kids, so I don't have time. Well, I have three kids all together, so I really don't have no time. So it is what it is. My wife had no problems with me gaming when I was playing the game before we got married. She's a she's offered to buy whatever ever system came out. I was in now good. Got no time to do it between work and being at home with the kids and doing what the kids need me to do it. Just being a husband and a father. I was like, I don't have no extra time. But as far as the rest of the world, um, in 2020, gaming is a profession now. Yeah, gaming is a sport now. Mm-hmm. If I'm like, gaming brings in a lot of money. We ain't talking about the early nineties or the early two thousands when gaming was just a hobby and people were getting mad. Like, you on the game all day? Yeah, I'm on the game all day. But if you're that good, then that can be your job. I can understand mm-hmm. if you just I'm just doing it. And I ain't doing nothing else. This is just it. You got a right to be mad, there because it's no other. It's, it's nothing else supporting that. Just to be a release for nothing. You have nothing mm-hmm. to release because you just on the game all day. But if you're doing it, you're that good. And then you can make this some money from this. Go for it. Do what you do. You feel me? Like I don't see no woman that will have a problem with that. You get mm-hmm. your income. You know, I tell them women on that podcast, go tell you, go go get your man a Twitch account, sign him up, and let him start getting some of these streaming dollars. Because I see some of these YouTube and Twitch streamers and caffeine streamers that play them games, and they not even professional good, uh, but they do be making bank. Yep. So exactly. you know that's like the that's like the gamer it's only fans right, right there. It's a lot of money, like they said, for real. And they can it's put that right into everywhere. they can put that into the whole. Um, uh, a PS5 costs a lot of money and all that other stuff, uh, along with everything else that's probably in the house that you want to buy. And them bags. Every year is a new bag. Bergen. That Bergen is like twelve to tw- 12,000 to 1,200. I mean, 200,000. Like, that's three That's three Xbox Series X. That's a car. That's that's a couple of cars. Ooh. That's a house. It's three that's car a, notes. That's a house. That's one Four house. Four or five car notes if you got good credit. And the PS5 has way yeah. more storage than the Birkin bag. Way more. Big you can store yeah. all kinds of shit. Yeah, look Big at facts. Netflix. Ain't no, Netflix cloud storage. Mm-hmm. Ain't no cloud storage in that Birkin. Nah. <laughs> but random topic for me. Random topic on this end. Um, I was listening to the Breakfast Club today. I have no problem mentioning them on my platform. On our platform. I was Shout out, see to God. Um, it was... Oh, yeah. It was going over their 10-year anniversary, some of their top moments, and they had some callers to call in. And one guy called in. He was like, yo, Charlamagne, I used to hate you, yo. <laughs> he was like, but 
over time, I'm like, I can't stop watching this man. What is it about him that I can't stop watching? He had a oh. self reflection. He, mm-hmm. he can't stop watching that man. That's listen a weird caller it. already. Listen, <laughs> listen to it though. He's like, I can't stop watching. So he was like, I had to take a step back. Like, what is it about him that's drawing my attention to it? But I hate him and I hate everything about him. He was like, self reflection moment. I hated the things that you did because I did the same things and I did it. And I hated some parts about myself. So that's why I couldn't keep watching, stop watching you because I was watching myself in you. Damn, that's big. That brought me to, you feel me, like self reflection. That's my random thing this week. A lot of people go around like, I hate this, I hate this, I can't stand when this person do this. But you always talk to that same person. What is it about you? What is it about that person that keeps them in your life if you can't okay. stand that person? Uh-huh. Is it something in you that you do too? It takes a, it takes a deep and deep look in yourself to see that, yeah, I hate some parts of myself that I need to change, but I can't admit, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I think everyone does. Everyone has that little part of themselves they hate, you feel me? but we all just can't admit it. But only with growth, like true growth, mental, spiritual, physical growth, that you can reach that point. That's that liberation point. You feel me? like when you can liberate your mind and body and soul to reach that upper level, like, it don't matter. I can do this, and I can. I'm, be, I'm free enough to be honest and open with myself and others. You got to be, and everybody said they can keep it a hundred, but how many people really keep it totally a hundred? Yeah, right? I don't think many do. I think that's that's huge that you said it too, because I think that like I, I look at myself like I didn't start. I've been an adult for years as far as like societal maturity, but as far as like really knowing myself and like being, well, not knowing myself, but being honest, like you said, that complete honesty, brutal honesty with myself. I'm just reaching that like within the past year or two, but I noticed that since that's happened, like I can feel the change in me and I can see like areas of my life improving so fast. And it was like areas that I was like hitting my head against the wall. Like, why the hell is this not changed? Like what? I'm working my ass off. I'm, and then once I started like really like get taking a step back and saying, you know what? It's a whole lot of shit going on that you can't control in that situation, but you got some things you can still work on. And the more you, I've done that, I, I definitely see the benefits. But I wonder what makes it so hard for us to do that as people, man. Like it's like the one person you're with all the time, yet you're the least honest with that person. Yourself. Uh-huh. Crazy. I don't, I, I don't know what's wrong with y'all humans. Y'all can never look at yourself. I look at myself and say, what the fuck is wrong with me every fucking day? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? I, if I can do it, y'all can do it. Believe in yourself. I do that every day. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You have and issues. Speaking of self-reflection, somebody who needs a whole hell of a lot of it brings me to today's Umar update. So, as y'all might have learned on the last pod, I am a huge fan of talking about and researching and just getting into all of the fuckery that Umar Johnson brings along with his weekly debacles. So, since the last time I talked to y'all about Umar, several developments have been added to the list. So first, on November 18th and 19th, Umar Johnson came to Atlanta to speak and sell his book at the Comedic Skills Yoga Studio. While he was in Atlanta, some vandals broke the studio's windows. So Umar took the social media to go live and start begging again, saying that the windows were broken by haters who wanted to sabotage him and his movement, and they had tried to get him in New York. Nothing happened in New York. He just got people that decided they didn't want him to come speak at their establishments. Um, and they had tried to get him in Chicago. Nothing happened there. It's just he said he was going to be at a barbershop, and the barbershop didn't know what the hell he was talking about. So now they finally got him, and they broke the windows at the studio the day before he was going to speak. Mm-hmm. Umar began to beg and say that he needed people to donate because the, the windows would cost thousands of dollars to be fixed. Should. And since he was, since it was done, on his behalf, he felt that he should pay. So whatever we donate would go to offset the cost that he had to pay comedic skills for to pay for their window. Donations. So he had all of this up. You know. A week later, YouTuber Nappy Yankee debunked this by going to Atlanta 
Two said street, Abernathy, where the Comedic Skills Yoga Studio is. Now, when he went there, it was during the time where the Comedic Skills Studio was not open. However, the restaurant, two doors down, you can see it right beside each other in Google Maps, the restaurant was open. So, Nappy Yankee decided to go in and just talk to these people in the re uh, restaurant about had, did they know anything about what happened with the vandalism at the Yoga Skills Studio? And did, you know, is, is this something that's normal? The lady in the restaurant said that over the past six months, almost every business on that street had had its windows broken because vandals in that area, that's just kind of something that they do. They don't know why they do it, but it happened well before Uma ever got to Atlanta. Now, Uma still begged for this money, Yet one week later, no windows were seen to be fixed and Umar was no longer talking about said windows. Then Umar took the social media to claim that someone had sent him an email and that the haters had ramped up and they were done breaking windows. They were gonna come straight to the school to protest. On December 2nd and 4th, so he needed everybody, all of his supporters to come out and stand with him at FDMG Academy to stand against the protesters. And they were gonna have a peaceful anti-protest block party. This block party <laughs> would prove to end up being on December 2nd, a group of about a dozen or more black people, many of them older women, standing out in the cold all day to wave an RBG flag while no one protested anything. On the video of this day, Umar is seen talking to people claiming that they're HVACers, yet you can hear the eight, the people he's talking about, oh, y'all about HVACers? You can hear the people saying, no, sir. Um, he was seen looking very weird and interviewing these people who were there to help him and support him, yet one lady was asleep because it had gotten so cold that she held onto the school railing. And a couple of guys who were, I don't know, looked like they had maybe just woken up and came from the street corner claimed that they were there for not only the right reasons, but also the goofy shit if anybody showed up. Yet and still, this is half of the day and not one person that came to protest. So while there, of course, the next thing Umar did was got up on the RBG rock with his RBG flag and made a speech. Speech is about four minutes. You can catch it on YouTube right now. But the highlight of the speech is, as always, he ended it with his patented dollar sign FDMG Academy, donations, make sure you donate. We need you to donate. donate. So the haters didn't come today, but they will, you know. So this is on December 2nd. On December 4th, oh, oh, on this December 2nd video, he was seen live, ending the live stream from his thing, but he forgot the live stream was on. So as he's locking up the school building, him and the thuggish man who was there for the goofy shit, um, they're talking. And as they're talking, you can hear Umar saying, yeah, 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 you know, the uh, other room over there, yeah, you know, all the fire got put out over there. Then the other dude is like, yeah, 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 I, I got it. And then Umar's like, yeah, make sure you get all the matches and the lighters out of there. Further adding to the skepticism and the thought that Umar may be living in the school and maybe have now turned it into the kick it spot where they are smoking whatever on the premises, probably doing that blowing libations again to the Orishas and the Oshuns. Um, now, on December 4th, we go back to the school, because remember, it's supposed to be either December 2nd or December 4th, these protesters are supposed to come and protest. Nobody comes again. So Umar cancels the protest, the anti-protest, and gets his supporters who have shown back up in the freezing cold in Delaware. Now he turns it into the first annual FDMG gym cleanup day. So now he got these old women and these people out here cleaning up this dirty gym in this dilapidated school. Next, right after these videos drop, an ex-worker claiming, an alleged ex-worker of Umar Johnson's claim that Umar owes him a substantial amount of money for his work done at the school including tasks such as bringing Umar Johnson's clothing into the school. This further looks like Umar may allegedly be now living at the school after videos from earlier this year already showed 
Umar, two in the school and blankets and other personal items were seen on the couch in one of the rooms. So to recap, this week's Umar update. After saying he would not be showing the school anymore on social media, due to haters, he's back posting ridiculous videos where the end goal always seems to be donations. He may be now living in the school and smoking some substances in the school, and he is finding new and creative ways to exploit his people and get them to do his dirty work at the school. Who the people seem like they're genuinely good people, but this behavior is starting to look like a cult or something. I'll be still watching all week on YouTube. Please, if you want more information on Uma, follow Lyndon Arnold, King Kong Crazy, or Nappy Yankee. They have hilarious stuff on him every day. If you want a good lunchtime laugh, check out those videos. And this has been Tiz's Uma update of the week. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> have y'all seen this stuff with Uma? Oh, yes, yes. I ain't seen all of it, but I seen some of it. Oh, I ain't even put it in the updates, but the new thing is, now they're saying this book is pretty much for show plagiarized, where he done copied and pasted somebody else stuff in there. Oh, and shit. It, it gets ridiculous. Yeah, I think... I think they need to donate to the partner's closet and get some hoodies because it's cold outside. And I know it's cold. <laughs> I know they cold in that dang cold ass gym trying to clean that shit up, man. It's COVID out here. Oh, yeah. We got masks too, so they can get them. Oh, they got face masks, they got hoodies, they got long sleeve shirts, they got the sweatshirts for the kids now. They got the zip up hoodies now. They got the, uh, what else they got? The, I think they got the, Phone cases for the iPod, the iPad phones, or the, the Apple phones, and the Samsung phones now. They're about to have yeah. skull caps and pillows. Do so the inventory is steadily growing on Partners Closet, man. And if you want to reach Partners Closet, you got to go to teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one. That's partners dash closet dash one. Yes, go. Get your stuff. And right now we have a promo code going on for 15% yes, off. Yes, yes. Pod Squad 83. Pod Squad 83. That's our new promo code right now going on for a limited time only for 15% off any apparel. Go ahead and get your fresh partners apparel right now. Please go ahead and cop. Go ahead and cop. Thank you for that merch and branding update face. Uh Pat, what you got coming this week on social media, digital content? Uh, shoot, it's at the partners, T H E P O D N A S. I got high, so I'm fucking up in the spelling and shit. And that's that's for the Twitter, and that's for the uh the Instagram. If you if you do hashtag the partners, T H E P O D N A S for those who think I can't spell, and put it in Facebook, you'll go right to the Facebook. It'll be uh, Tiz, Face, Pat, are the partners. That's the quickest way to get to it. Much. Right on, right on. And uh, on the YouTube uh, podcast content, we got coming up in the very near future, obviously, episode four, which we're taping right now and you're listening to right now is already out because it's Wednesday at midnight. Um, this week, we got... Um, some bonus footage coming for just the regular YouTube subscribers. Um, you'll get to see some of the visuals from our podcast um, and get to see some, some of the behind the scenes clips. Patreon, as always, you'll be getting the full unedited video as always. And that's what I got. Um, y'all got anything else y'all want to say to the people before we roll up out of here? Uh, oh, uh, most definitely I do. Speak on Go it. Ahead, Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, no, go oh, ahead no. and say it, Face. You got something to say. Oh, definitely. I definitely do. In addition to Partners Closet, we also have another store you can go and get some fresh apparel from, too. That is also on teespring.com. That is teespring.com backslash stores backslash space dash co dash two. Pat has on some fresh face and co apparel right there. See the stars all day, every day. Y'all can get that. Still on the site, will not be taken down. We just put up some new stuff. We're coming out with face masks on face and coat coming soon. Also coming with accessory bags and tote bags. 
Big facts. Big Once facts. Again, and if you like the shirt I had on last uh, week. Backslash stores. Go ahead. My bad. Oh, yeah. Teespring.com backslash stores backslash base dash code dash two. <laughs> so, as always, man, thank y'all for joining our weekly conversation. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Feel free oh, to shit. comment on iTunes, Spotify, whatever streaming platform you are listening to us on. Comment. All that shit. Continue to join the conversation. Give us your thoughts on our topics. And always give us feedback on how we can improve the experience for you guys at home. As always, I am Tiz, one third of the partners with my brothers. Padawan. Face. And as the partners, we out. We out. What's going on, y'all? This is Face, one third of the partners. Make sure y'all come to YouTube every Wednesday and check out our new episode of the Partners Podcast. Also, check us out online for our new apparel dropping every week. Um, that will be at teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one. Once again, that's teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners P-O-D-N-A-S dash closet C-L-O-S-E-T dash the number one. We get at you. Just updated on the store. We have mugs, hoodies, shirts, bags, kids clothes, and face masks show you are down with the pod squad rep the podness by going to teespring.com backslash stores backslash podness dash closet dash one to get all of our newest merch and as always follow our entire movement at the podness.com welcome to the podness with face pat and tiz What's up, guys? Welcome to the party. A show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, along with. Yup, is the artist creator currently known as the Padawan here in Virginia with my homeboy. What it is, man, it's face. <laughs> First of all, man. Uh, before we get into this episode, I want to first shout out, uh, we got two supporters, our first two supporters that, uh, bought us some coffee, uh, on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you, thank you. Uh, look for the partners on there if you want to support us, uh, financially, but thank you to Gator Girl 04 and Josette Miles, uh, all financial donations are appreciated. Uh, you made thank you, thank you, birthday thank you. a little special and you gave us our first money to split. So God bless you. Thank you for God supporting bless. us. We hope to continue to make uh, content that entertains, enlightens, and just, you know, add something to your day in some way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, thank you. Thank y'all, man. Yes. <laughs> Most appreciative. <laughs> uh, so first up tonight, uh, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Being we're in this phase of the pandemic, they got vaccines and all coming out. You got some messing people up. You got some not messing people up so much. So my first question, are y'all taking a vaccine? Um, as of right now, I have no need to because I'm still like pretty much in like a super socially distant situation. As you know, just us in the crib, we chilling. We are on uh, virtual everything, you know, from meetings to business. To e everything we do is virtual in our house. So, you know, we not, at this moment, no, but if it comes to a situation where somehow I am forced to be in a grouping 
where I'm going to be around a lot of people and I don't know who got what, then I would consider it. But I'm still kind of watching everybody who's gotten it, making sure that, you know, I see what the side effects look like. I see, you know, what this match is talking about. And then, you know, I'll make a – but I'm open to it. What about you, Pat? Um, <clears throat> Not yet. I'm still worry about it. I feel like if – Time comes maybe if I need to, but I ain't really too big on needles anyway, to tell you God honest truth. Not no real big conspiracy theory reason or anything, even though that would be so entertaining. But no, I don't think I'm going to do it yet. I feel a little bit more more confident about it. Uh, The more I hear about it, the more I see people actually take it or whatever. Um, I don't know. I saw Bill Nye, the science guy, talk about it. And after he talked about it, I felt real confident because it's Bill Nye, the science guy. But, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, exactly. That's about it. So he's going to hold it down for you. So mm-hmm. an offshoot from that one. With everybody going back to work and the vaccine being available now, <laughs> my question is, do y'all feel employees have the right to make it an employment condition? for new hires to have taken the vaccine or on the other side for people who are already employed with them to get the vaccine to continue to be employed? Um, I would say, first of all, it depends. Um, if you are a government employer, then no. But if you are a private employer, then yeah, like whatever it says in your contract or your bylaws or whatever however your company is structured whatever that say like that's legally what you're allowed to do with your company because people don't like that's the thing with working for somebody you don't have to work for that person you're choosing to accept that job offer from that place and they're choosing to hire you so like it's like a a back and forth there um private companies can do what they want you know what i mean like I ain't going to take nobody's personal right. Because, like, if I have a company, like, with the partners, I don't want nobody telling me what we can do with our company. Like, I don't know. I I just feel like I think people need to be smart about what sectors they work in and know the risk thereof. Like, there are certain sectors that you kind of know, like, if it comes to certain emergency situations, if I'm going to stay working in this sector, I'm going to have to do this because this is what I want to do. And if you don't like to do that, you don't have to do that. Like, that's the thing. Like, nobody's saying they're going to make you do it. They're just saying that if you work for them, this is what they require. You can leave that place, go get another job if you like or whatever you want to try. Like, but that's your options. You Everybody got options. It's mm-hmm. uh, well, you bringing it up that remind me because I saw um, today Biden was doing this executive order, and I think he has like some type of plan where if you um, get fired or feel comfortable about a situation because of COVID or whatever, you still get unemployment or and um, with it. So I, um, I don't know. I, you saying that just brought that up in my head, pretty much, but. I think right now, well, for my job, I'm working from home. So that's another reason why I'm not really pressed about the vaccine right now, because I'm not in that place. And they really want us to stay at home. They, they're talking about June, but they said that last year. So it might get prolonged again or whatever. And I, you know, work in an office, call to the situation. And that's like ground zero for people being around people, you know, in, in general. So I think if anything before, Probably before we actually go back in those buildings, it might be you have to get a vaccine or something like that. But the way it's looking, it more look like they're preparing to just have everybody be virtual and um, work from home, pretty much. I, I think it's it's getting to a point where companies is thinking about like, um, like, all right, we had these buildings where people were working in. Now they can't even work in those buildings or whatever. Why am I still paying this money for this building, pretty much? So, 
And yeah, that's that's uh, just, I know I kind of went off on a tangent, but that's just a few things that I thought about with the vaccine and everything. But right now, nah. <clears throat> I feel you, I feel you. <clears throat> See, it's kind of different for me because I haven't taken it, but my wife has. You feel me? Mm -hmm. She works in the prison system. So being she's constantly around inmates and the inmates have been already been exposed. So it's a lot of inmates who have COVID. You feel me? It's a, no one's focusing in on it, but a lot of the inmate population has it. Mm -hmm. Where is it coming from? <laughs> inmates can't go outside. It may can't be in the street, so out here it's the guards and the personnel bringing it in. Mm -hmm. So being nobody in my family, my immediate family has had COVID. My wife, none of my kids, and my mother, my grandmother, we haven't had COVID. My wife went ahead and got vaccinated so she can do her job as far as protect, helping protect her family and herself, because she has to constantly go to that environment. I have it because I don't work around nobody at my job. I'm just me in the office by myself, so I don't work around nobody. I come into contact with the occasional client here and there when they do come in the office, but it's a requirement for before you step in the office, you have to have a mask on. Those who are not, I go outside in the system and I have to be masked up at all times anyway. So I'm not in a rush to take it. My wife is taking it. I've already taken a COVID test before, well, recently. So, and I'm negative for that. So I'm not in a rush just like you, Pat. But if I had to, I would because I'm not totally against it. it. Ain't no conspiracy theory for me either. Standing in the way, um, I don't see no true negative stuff against trying to do my job as far as protecting myself and others around me. Um, as everybody always says, there's only six it's six degrees of separation between every person. So every six people I see and touch and meet or I speak to, each person, each of those got six different people. The six people and the six people. So it spreads real quick. So if I'm not doing my part. I just got to think of everybody I come in contact and they come in contact because I'm putting their lives at potential risk if I don't do my part. So if it comes down to the point where I, I feel like it's a necessity for me to take it, I'm not against it and I will take it. Um, as far as the employers, I feel like um, private institutions, they basically got their own right to do what they want to. It's a private institution. Like if you own your own company, you the boss should make your rules. Government officials, I mean, like you said, government, government, um, government employers, I don't feel like they have the right to do that because that's on a different level as far as the government trying to mandate and force people to do something. Uh, being I work for pretty, plenty of private companies, um, some pretty big companies, I know it's a different set, it's different rules when it comes to our government when they apply to privatized companies on a larger scale because being once you get to a certain level with the company, you'll learn different rules and different regulations that don't apply to them and certain ones that they make themselves so you got state rules federal rules and those rules that apply to the privatized companies so this vaccination stuff it falls in a funny way when it applies to all that so i just hope that the private companies that do start there for that start to make up rules and impl implicate this covid policy about being vaccinated into their policies taking it taking account people's fears and stuff like that because what if i'm trying to go get a job I'm, I got all the great qualifications, but I'm scared to death of needles. I'm petrified of needles. You feel me? Is that gonna keep me keep you from hiring me because I can't take the vaccine because I'm petrified of needles and there's no other way they can give it to me right now? Mm -hmm. So you gotta come into consideration with stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying if they do implicate these measures, some people have the right to, and we're gonna see some things come into fruition as far as some people bucking against it because just as people are going against the mask thing and, and fighting against that, people mm -hmm. are gonna have something to say about companies doing what they wanna do to protect themselves because at the end of the day, a company has to protect its associates because without yeah. your associates, your company can't run. So sometimes yeah. you have to make people do what you need to do the right way. Sad to say, but sometimes you got to. Yeah, and I think it all goes back again to like choice, you know what I mean? Like people got the right to work for or not work for whoever, and they also got the right to protest, and the company got the right to have people take vaccines or wear masks or whatever else they want to do to make sure that they oh, feel right. like their assets are coming. Like everybody got their individual rights, and none of them to me, as I can see, are infringing upon the others. Just a matter of choice in each situation. So exercise your right to choice, people. I mean, you don't like something, don't do it. I mean, 
Yeah. Um, but speaking of choice, and oh, go ahead. What you about to say? I said, hmm, I said that damn right. Oh, but yeah, <laughs> speaking of uh, choice and just different points of view and standing on that. Uh, if you've seen this movie, One Night in Miami, uh, if you have not seen it, go see it. But if you have seen it, uh, you know it's a pretty good movie. It's not what I expected um, from the trailers. Me and the wife thought it was going to be like, you know, these four great black men get together and they go out and party. But it was not that. Um, it was pretty poignant. Um, it was pretty much these, it's like a meeting of the minds where these four great black men just sat around all night and just kind of bounced philosophies off one another and like tried to meet somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? And so the four points of view was you had Jim Brown. Um, he was like, he was the athlete, obviously. He was a football player. Um, so he was into the movement, obviously. But he also wanted to enjoy, you know, like the fruits of his label on the football field. He wanted to, you know, be a movie star. He wanted to still be able to hang out with the white girls and, you know, you know, get 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 the free liquor and, and the autographs and all, you know, the, the, the stuff that come with it. Mm. But he also recognized that, you know, <clears throat> stuff was wrong and he was willing to speak out on it. Um, I feel like he represented the black person or the black man that he down for the movement all the way, but he doesn't want to give up the luxuries of the dominant society either. He kind of wants to still have, the, you know, he's like one foot in for show. Like, I got y'all, but I'm not going to let this part go. We're going to still have this, right? Mm -hmm. um, then you had Sam Cooke. He was uh, the singer, obviously. He was, So he was like the entertainer who enjoys, like, he had his white women in the booze and he was making music that was kind of, you know, poppy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And at this time, everybody was making music that was kind of like, about the movement, because this is like, you know, 63, 64, whatever, like, this is like the high heart of the civil rights movement, like, when everything was bubbling all together, you know what I mean? So, like, the fact that he wasn't singing or really letting his voice be a part of the movement was a problem. Um, now, the good part was, though, he owned his own masters and had his own label, so he was like, what, like a unicorn, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, this dude was able to like flip Rolling Stones records because he was able to take his old catalog from his artists and then get them rich. So he was like building his own economic empowerment for his people. But he felt like that was the only part of the movement that was really important. Like, let me just make sure you know, I'm making sure everybody getting their money. So that's what that's really all that is needed right now. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, then you got <clears throat> Muhammad Ali, you know, he, the, he, he was, still Cassius Clay at this time. He, he hadn't fully come out yet that he's Muhammad Ali, that he's converting to uh, Islam and all that. So he was like, he was just getting into his fame and fortune really, especially in America. Um, so he hadn't announced his allegiance yet, but he was not quite, like he was down with being a Muslim, but he wasn't completely down with like how like tight their rules was, how strict their rules were. Like he he still wanted to kind of have fun and party and hang out with the girls and you know what I mean? Kind of like, kind of still have some fun. Like he was young, he was like maybe 22 at this time. So like, you know, like any 22 year old person, like he was still out like, let me have some fun. I don't want to just do this. Like I want to be able to still, can I still have a little drink here and there or go out to the party with my friends? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just be sitting around doing nothing. So uh, he, he kind of represents the dude that's like, he he's still deciding whether to go with the cause fully. He, he like on the fence, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. he don't know whether to commit fully or like to just stay in the comfort zone and be like, well, I would just enjoy all of this fun. You know what I mean? And then you had Malcolm X, you know, obviously we know who that is. And he was like the, the militant Muslim, you know what I mean? Who was like seeing the hypocrisy of his own organization that he was in but he hadn't separated himself from them just yet. He was still using them for like their, the fact that like they owned the house that he lived in and the car that he drove and like they owned everything that he was doing. So like they paid for everything that he was doing. So like he still needed that funding for until he was able to build up whatever he was going to do. So he was like, 
he feels like the only way for black people to like really fully like get their equality is for them to like fully immerse themselves into the movement. Like no impurity is like, let's just go, you know, we're just gonna be strictly devout. Everything we're gonna be, you know, straight and narrow, like no cursing, like watch your mouth, you know, we're gonna chill, we ain't, we ain't gonna eat, we're gonna eat right, we're gonna do everything perfect, but like they fail to see any of the gray areas of like life and just the people that they actually trying to reach. So they end up losing a lot of people because they're so rigid in their ideas. You know what I mean? So uh, basically that's like the four point of views that was like kind of prevalent back then. You know what I mean? From everything that I've heard, seen, you know, been told about the movement, like those are kind of like the different ways that you had black people split and depending on which one of those sectors, depending on the groups and leaders that you kind of gravitated towards. So my question is like, at the, first of all, did you see the movie? What you think about the movie? Um, I thought it was really just a real cool subversion of what I thought I was gonna get. And uh, do y'all still think that it's like those messages are relevant to today's state of black people? You wanna take it first, but well, I haven't been able to see that movie yet, but it's on my like list of like movies to watch pretty much because I don't know. I've been a person, I don't know, Ali movies. I watch those Ali movies. So, like I watch them. If it has something to do with Ali or Malcolm X for some reason, I know eventually I'm going to end up watching it. But I feel like all of those perspectives are prevalent today. It's like every, like, I'm pretty sure we can point out anybody in pop media to like re represent what Jim Brown represent or Sam represent or what Ali or X represent. Like that's just, I think that's just one of those, um, like all four of those are just a point of views and struggles that we all think about. Like, especially with, with the way Sam Cook, the way you describe Sam Cook way of thinking or whatever. Like, I understand that. Like, I actually feel like that, is important or whatever but as far as neglecting the other things and the other issues that black people go about i don't think we should neglect that over the economic side of it pretty much but i do feel like e the economic side is really what we need as a, a like as a weapon of fighting for us or just like a shield so we can protect ourselves and our culture pretty much but like each, each one of them, especially Muhammad Ali, like that I've spent a whole lifetime of people that just bouncing between being devout or saying, hey, being a straight devout Christian sometimes doesn't make sense to me, you know, back and forth. And um, I don't know, I just, to say that I feel like any, to me, I'm a bias because I feel like any black media is relevant. Cause we don't, we have a history neglected of black media. So anytime we have something come out, I feel like it's going to be relevant. Like that's us learning us, you know, like we're still rebuilding the culture that was taken from us. So yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about it. But say okay. you face. Well, deal with these damn kids. I don't have much time to watch anything. But I can Prime, I can watch for free, so I'm definitely gonna do that. Tomorrow my day off, I guess I'll be watching that movie. But as far as the the viewpoints, they're very, very much prevalent in today's society too. Um, like you say, Pat, you can point out any any pop guy that's gonna do is gonna relate with the Sam Cook, any athlete right now. Most athletes, I should say, will relate with the Jim Brown where I can say something for the movement, but I'm not going to make a sacrifice for the movement if in, in relation to the context in the movement. Um, me personally, I don't know what sacrifices Jim Brown may have made for the for the movement. I'm not here to say he has or has not because I don't know the facts, but based on the movie, as far as <laughs> the sentiments and the ideology placed from what I'm told, yeah, most athletes, yeah, they're going to speak up, especially nowadays, you have more athletes speaking up about it and using their platform to take a stand and go on strike. But at the end of the day, it's not really a sacrifice because it's y'all money guaranteed. So now 
on the football field side when they started to take the kneel and everything before they start pen- being penalized, that was something. But once they start being penalized, you saw lesser and lesser people trying to take a stand. So they won't try to take too much of a sacrifice on that football side because that money's not guaranteed. So it's a difference. Um, that's the financial choice right there when it comes to them on the after you side. Um, as far as the militant black leader, as far as someone being on the Malcolm X level, I'm really not seeing it, but I see it more on a widespread instead of one one main individual. Right. I see it more in the youth, the youth of America. They have mm-hmm. that militant mm-hmm. spirit. They they have that. I'm not going to take that. You feel me? Like they they have that. that stand up. That, that stand up. But they have more of the the ending ideology of Malcolm X instead of the separatism where he wanted everybody totally separate. They yeah. have more of the ideology where he saw yeah. that everybody he saw the different cult, the different the different colors of Muslims when he went to his trip to Mecca. He he, he saw the truth. And then Instead the movie that was like where told. he was at, he was about, he was like literally it's talking a, about he was about to go there in like two weeks or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I see the youth as far as displaying that later ide- ideology of him. Um, you do have some people, um, I can say the Antifa movement, where they move by violence, they move by destruction, they move by marking their territory and stuff like that. They're more on the more militant side, but as far as a militant black presence, I don't see a true militant black presence. Um, I see a defensive, like a more defensive military black presence from the, um, you have a lot of more black groups come down and armed and they march march around in the large armed groups and protest with their second amendments. And I do like that because that shows a, a sense of force that shows they're not afraid to display their arms too and exercise the rights they have now. Um, back in the day, we couldn't do that. Uh-uh. So we came out with guns. They were all going to firing at us just because we try to display our rights nowadays. A lot more cameras out. It's a lot more technology out. And we're not afraid to exercise all of our rights. You feel me? Just like every every other culture should be able to in this country. Um, like I said, every viewpoint in that movie is still prevalent today. It's just prevalent on different scales. Um, some more wide scale, some more pinged in to individuals. Um, but yeah, I guarantee when I watch it, I'm gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I guarantee you are. Like, I think that's a must watch for people out there. If y'all looking for a good little movie to watch, man, it, it's not that long. It's like, I want some change, but it's a good movie to yeah, watch, man. Watch it, like, like... And if you, you know what I'm saying, into like historical dramas, like, it's a good one, you know what I mean. <laughs> It, it definitely makes you want to think. It's a good conversation starter, you know what I mean, for people to, like, just have those conversations with each other, you know what I'm saying, to, like, what do you feel about this? What do you feel about that? Because they definitely go there with some subjects that I think are still kind of poignant in our community, whether it be economic empowerment, whether it be um, is, is your lack of sacrifice a detriment to the people? Is the fact that you are not willing to put your your yourself on the line to actually say something is that actually hurting your people? You know, like they 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 really kind of hit with some stuff that's kind of going on right now. You know what I mean? So definitely mm-hmm. check it out, man. You know what I mean? And I was gonna save it for later, but like some you said, like the youth is kind of like getting to that point where they like they not afraid. You know what I mean? And I saw a a video on Willie D's channel. Uh, where a cop got knocked the hell out for calling somebody the N-word. And then right after that, I see the video of Trey Songs. You know what I mean? Shout out Third Ward Petersburg. You know what I mean? Um, guillotine chokes out the cop. You know what I mean? Got him looped up. You know what I mean? For for trying to rough him up. And you could tell there was some something that happened before that camera caught on and the cop actually lunged in on Trey because you can hear the people in the background when a security and everybody was coming around like, lock up the cop, lock the cop up. No, lock the cop up. So like you could tell us it's something that happened before he even lunged in and started like trying to mm-hmm. basically look like manhandle Trey real quick. And, mm-hmm. I, and, and he realized, you know, Virginia will do those. Uh, so yeah. Um, 
Y'all think black people just finally getting fed up? Like, do you think we finally at that like critical mass tipping point where like, okay, we done had enough now. Shit gonna get real. And if you don't change, we're gonna flip some shit over. Or do you think it's still like, huh, we got bad now. We're gonna go back into the, ah, oh, we're okay with getting beat up again. We're okay with letting y'all trounce us. Damn our rights because we got Biden, like we did with Obama. I'm, uh, I got two different viewpoints on that. Um, you're going to have some people just go back and be like, well, yeah, some, they're, they're finally going to change the Biden's in office. Not forgetting what happened when the first black president went to office for two terms. Um, we have to keep, uh, I think Charlemagne the God said, it, we have to keep political pressure. I mean, we gotta stay on top of these officials and, and stay requiring them to pass laws and stuff that benefit us too. Um, nothing against no community, but a lot of communities get lost passing their favor quicker than we ever could or ever will. And they're new communities. Yeah. You know? uh, we just need something. It's more than it, it's, it's so more than bad. unity. It's more than unity. It's way more than unity. It's way more than one one strong person. It's it's way more than that. But you do have some people who want to and still going to be like, man, F it. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to do something. But at the end of the day, if nothing changes on the other side, you willing to do something? Ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Will bring the same thing it's been bringing. More people getting shot in the street. More people doing this. More, more, more loot. More rioting. They think all that stuff after George Floyd, the rioting and stuff, really changed. And that didn't change. Nothing. That stuff that should have been happening. That's all. Yeah. They just gave you a little. They just gave you a little something. You gotta look at history, man. Every time you do something, they give you a little something. But also look at history because nothing in life and nothing in our history has ever changed. Excuse me. <clears throat> nothing in our history has ever changed without violence and death, mass violence and death. How did America win their independence? Yeah, they didn't right. hit they, you feel me? Shot America, hit right on America, right. Did, uh, America didn't just protest. America didn't protest to the king, look, man, we want to do this. No. Revolution, you feel me? Yeah. Everything that's happened through change. Look, Haiti, let's take it to another country. How did Haiti get their independence? Mm-hmm. 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 Revolution. Yeah. Violence. You feel me? Violence. Revolution. You feel me? That's big. Mm-hmm. I don't. Bad. I don't want it to go there because I don't want to see no lives lost. I wish we could find change a different way. But historically, so. our country and every country around us, everything changes only when there is mass violence and death. That's when people finally want to have a wake up call. Oh man, these people, oh, this shouldn't happen. Maybe we should have a different way of thinking. When one or two people pass and it's nothing, they can just make a news, a news story about it. And two or three weeks later, it, it just dies down. And people wearing t-shirts about it. Uh, okay. What's that? Yeah. No, no mass substantial change. No mass substantial change. And, and our culture, matter of fact, not just our culture, all people of color need mass substantial change when it comes to this country and how we're we're seen and how we're dealt with, especially in the criminal justice system. So yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's real. What say you, Pat? Uh I kind of feel like that question, I mean I think it goes without saying that we at this point, like over the mass about a year, people are more open about saying how they feel about it. Uh they're not really holding their tongue. Whatever it, it's just a, the simple fact that Trey Songs is like, yep, I'm gonna do this Barry Blackheart video game wrestling move right quick on you, <laughs> one two three, or whatever, just out the blue, knowing that he's a known person or whatever. Like, I don't think people, I don't think black people as a whole got time for that shit. Just in in general, like we know just off of what we seen um on the sixth on January the sixth or whatever. It's, it, it was shown throughout the world that, like, all right, they don't, the law really 
Like we really shouldn't even be giving a fuck about who carries the laws and this, that, and the third, because they're they're out here letting people commit treason and everything. Like it's okay. Like, like we we already see who you're really siding with right now. So like, nah, I, I don't think any I, at this point, especially it's fight or flight or, or whatever. Like either either you're gonna be with it and just defend yourself, and, and when something happens like that. Um, mm-hmm. you want to defend yourself verbally by when somebody says something you disagree with, or they say that uh, black people act in a stereotypical manner. You know, you defend yourself with it, like it that that whole day and age of people just saying, "Hey, we're gonna go along with it." It's over with. Like I feel like people are more at Biden's neck. They were like more at Biden's neck before he even got into the role of presidency as of like a couple of days ago now. So he can't, he can't just slack off on on it. And that's, that's something I'm going to bring up later, but here's another question I feel like should be answered is like, when are they going to realize that, Hey, black people not going to take that shit no more. Yeah. Yeah. Are we at that point? That's that. I feel like that should be uh, even more um, a prevalent question. We have that, question put out there even more than you definitely would have more black people thinking hey i i don't i don't got time for this anymore nah if something's going to happen we're going to respond like just in mm-hmm. general so but yeah this is how i feel yeah well from the four black men and you know trey song standing up for his rights to a man that is trampling on the rights of his followers, it's time for the my weekly Umar update. And my people, um, I did not think I was going to have much to say about Umar this week because, you know, Umar's been kind of keeping a low profile and he's been, you know, kind of staying off live. So when he does that, it's not a lot you can go with. But, oh, man, we got something to talk about. So... It started this week. My man posted a live or IGTV video, whatever it was, about vaccines being tied to a plan to kill 3 billion Africans. And my only question was, what this got to do with the school? Because it was some random man. I don't know who this man was in his car introing the video. Then the video plays. Then it's this random man again. Like I'm like, who is this random man? What this got to do with the school, Uma? Okay. <laughs> so then he posted a picture saying that he was betting FDMG money on the game, on the Bills and Chiefs game, to get HVAC funds. What? We're he, posted a, money back. <laughs> he posted a picture on Instagram saying he was betting FDMG money on the Bills and Chiefs game to get HVAC funds. Ain't that illegal? Ain't that illegal? I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds really sketchy. It doesn't sound like something the IRS would take kindly to. Now, he then posted a live. Now, you notice everybody been saying, like, so we've been saying it for a minute. Like, pretty much since he left the school, we've been like, when are you going to go back to the school, though? Uh, so when are you going to go back to the school, though? Did you forget about the school? Do you still own the school? Do you know where the school is? So everybody been talking about him not going back to the school. So finally, he posted a live this week where he went back to the school. And the light seemed to be on, like he said. But the school looks horrible. Um, The gym floor is reflooded with sewage water. That's just sitting there. So who knows? That's been just sitting there since he left. Now, remember, they was... On the uh, cleanup day back in December fourth, when it, uh, the anti-protest that turned mm. into a cleanup day, the first annual FDMG cleanup day, why that's something that you want people that's already giving you their hard-earned money to be? Do- I don't know. Annually, right? But after they pushed all this water out and swept up, and they had fabuloso and bleach mixed all on the floor, so people gonna die up in there from the fumes. Man, it smell good. The sewage is right back. Huddled up. I mean, it looked like a little lake up in there. Um, a COVID. 
And then he went into the bathrooms for some reason. Those are not fully fitted with pipes. Um, the toilets are in really bad shape. And one of them is look like somebody that took a sledgehammer to it. Um, Cause it's just broken up into like literal pieces. Um, so yeah. Then he went to the gym. He went back to the gym area. And you know how in gyms they got like the little coaches room, right? Mm-hmm. Well, in the coaches room, they got the clothing, like the basketball uniforms and stuff from the old basketball team that used to be there from Moyer Academy when the school was called Moyer Academy. Now, the school was closed for a couple of years before he purchased the school. And this is going on the two-year anniversary of him purchasing the school. Purchasing the school. So we're talking about several years that this school has just been there, sitting with sewage in the air. And he still hasn't cleaned out the place. Like, he ain't even took the old school stuff out of there yet. Is he just sitting there? Okay. Uh-huh. Now, the taxes, I think, are due today or yesterday. Like, some day this week, they are due. Like his, you know, the monthly bill that keep rolling in. So now at this point, he is at total bills and taxes owed. He's above two hundred thousand dollars now, so he's reached a milestone. Um, and then this is where it gets good for the week champs. Fraud. This this podcast called Fraudsters. They do um, exposés or like documentary type. Um, podcast on like different people who are frauded people and usually they do it on people who have like been convicted of some type of fraud so like they started like they didn't got a two-part series on Uma now they went in on <laughs> Uma and when I say they went in like I listened to this whole thing they went through all the nooks and crannies they went back like you know how I've been I had to catch y'all up, right? Remember when I first brought them to y'all, like, hey, this is what I had a fan on on him. So they went all the way back like that. They exposed all of Umar's fake claims, like, one by one. They 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 reviewed, they found a review of Umar's book from somebody who done bought the book. Like, they got the book in their hand. The book is not properly cited. So it's like, it's not peer-reviewed. It's not... If you're a scholar, you're supposed to, you know, present your work to a, a body of your peers and have them, you know what I'm saying, also run their experiments, run their, uh, their brains across it. And then if they agree and, you know, it's a consensus enough, then, you know, saying you get published, da, 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 da. None of that. He didn't cite no sources from where he got his information from. Nothing. Half of the book are blank pages every few pages. Just blank pages for notes. But it's just like a page that said notes at the top and then it's a blank sheet of paper on both sides. So it's That's like, weird. so he basically got filler pages to pad the book link. They checked his 501c4 through Charity Navigator to see like, what should you be providing legally as a charitable uh, type of organization, right? He should have his EIN, his board or his like governing body listed, and he should have documentation of where his funds are being spent. And this is at minimum. Then they checked, they found his EIN, they, uh, the fraudsters found his EIN and checked with the IRS and they're still waiting on the response. So uh, they're probably going to do a follow-up at some point if they get that information back from the IRS. Then they debunked some more. They went so far as to sign up for the Loyal Donors Club. So if you remember, I told y'all, Uma got this mm-hmm. thing where like you can pay every month. Like mm-hmm. you gotta just donate once. You can pay fifty dollars for bronze or hundred for silver or some for two fifty and another five hundred and some else for a thousand. Like he got it all lined up for you to keep giving him money every month. So they paid for the bronze membership. Now with any membership, you're supposed to get uh, entrance or a link or something or something like that, a phone number into WhatsApp. Uh-huh. So it's like a cheap group meet. Um, so you get up in WhatsApp and then he talk to you and he tell you whatever information he got on the school. 
So they signed up for the Lloyd Donuts Club. Never got the link to the WhatsApp group. Been hitting them up, trying to get information about it. Couldn't get no information about the school now that they done paid their money and they can't get into the WhatsApp group that you're supposed to get information into if you trying to sign up for this Lawyer Donors Club. They then had a lady on there named Ebony Chappelle or Chapel. I don't want to mess her name up, but her name was Ebony. She's a, like, a, a writer, basically. And she used to support Umar. She was down with him, you know what I'm saying, as far as his... Uh, information as far as about the school system reforms type stuff. You know what I mean? Just like right. everybody else. He gets you what he knows this part. So he stick with that and then he started going with the kooky stuff and lose you. So he she interviewed him back in like 2017-ish and she found him to be very homophobic and misogynistic during, her net, during the interview and when she had went to like see one of his live, you know, his shows so he, you know, he's tossed the same exact speech that he says on Instagram Live all the time. He says that at every one of his actual live shows. So if you go to pay anything to see him, you also get the same thing you've already seen for free a hundred times. But she interviewed mm -hmm. him and she said he even went so far as to threaten this lady that if she writing a negative article, some could be some could be bad for. Her. Threatening women? He threatening women? Now? Now, mm -hmm. the walls are closing in on this guy and the two year anniversary of him getting these trap bandos are coming up in like, <laughs> in like literally like three weeks. Like, like it's about to be February is the, the anniversary is coming up. So I know he gonna do some wild stuff coming up. So look forward to some shenanigans coming soon, but that is the Uma <laughs> weekly update. Fellas, if y'all have any takes, you, you can take it away. <laughs> scamming ass Umar. Yo, scam, I don't, scam, scamming man. ass Umar. I don't ever trust anybody that adds WhatsApp for some reason. I don't know. I, like, I don't who know. Who uses uh, WhatsApp? I don't even like, know what that is. Why is that your business model? Like, even we got a business email. Hey, you know what I mean? Like, contact us here. Like, and we will email you back. Uh, maybe, maybe want WhatsApp. We're so not gonna give you no donuts. WhatsApp. Like <laughs> he could have at least had a Discord. At least that's like something like from this. So I'm done. I don't know where to go with Omar no more. I'm just waiting for the empire to crumble because it's happening. It's going to happen. Like. You can see the walls closing in on these little hotel hustlers, man. They'd they be like just scheming and scamming and like, oh, I'm siphoning a little more out of them. I got them while they weak. Oh, COVID got them, huh? They're, they're, they're right for the picking. Let me holler these single moms and get them on my side. Yeah, that'll make sure I get my money. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. It's <laughs> just stupid, man. Uh to keep it moving on, we're going to talk about financial literacy and the importance of financial literacy in our community. All right. Now, people wonder, what is financial literacy, you may ask? I looked it up so I can give you all the exact definition of financial literacy. So as I read it, hold on. Financial literacy is the ability to understand how to make sound or good financial choices so you can effectively both manage your money and grow your money. Basically, you want to keep making money and get to the point where your money is growing and making money for you. That's basically it. But why is it so important in our community? It's a couple of factors why I personally believe it is important in our community. First, with more financial literacy, we can kill that spend it as we get it mentality. Because with our culture being historically, we never really had nothing. When we get money, we just want to go ahead and buy the stuff we never had. Because we don't understand the effect that money has. If we keep that money and save that money, we can get something bigger and better that may accrue that, excuse me, accrue money and like it can grow with your money get some artwork getting a chain don't mean nothing 
it ain't gonna appreciate with value. You feel me? You gotta learn how to use your money to grow for you. Second reason, we need to start building generational wealth in the black community. It's not enough wealthy black families out there. It's Rockefellers out there, but you don't see no the Johnsons or the Joneses. It, 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 it's no family like that out there. I mean, you have a few black rich families and now we have billionaires out there coming in the last couple of years, black billionaires, but we really don't have it to where it's generational. Most of these young millionaires out there that's in the rap game, most of them that's still in the street somewhat, they may be millionaires now, but with them living their life they living, that money gone. Either they still hustling in the streets, getting going to jail, as we often see that. Yeah. Or they getting shot, getting killed, as we still often see that. It's not too many of the young ones who's doing who's doing something prosperous and putting their money into other avenues to make their money once again grow and work for them to make your money make money. Well, Turn the page. Another reason for more financial literacy in our community is to understand the black money goes in and out of our hands so fast and it goes into the other community. We don't put that money back into our own pockets residually. We got to spend it on black businesses, but that also goes, coincides with financial literacy of those black businesses as well, because if those black businesses don't, don't understand how to effectively use those dollars they receive in revenue, they're not going to last either. And they're going to be open one day, close another, as we often see in the black community. A black business will open yeah. up. A couple of months later, it's gone. Yep. Is it bad management? And it's not good financial literacy? I'm going to blame it on poor financial literacy. Because I'll see a pop-up different culture store in my, in my neighborhood, my old neighborhoods, all the time. They pop up and they stay. Their business plan ain't no better. It's their financial literacy. They understand how to move the dollar. They understand how to take that money and let that money grow for them and, and work for them. Yeah. Next, we need to break that cycle of the black ghetto life. If remember with more financial literacy, when we do get money and people are in the hood, they'll understand how to use that money to get out of the hood instead of using that money just to bring more material objects back to the hood. Yeah. Don't get your first big lump sum of money and just go get a big car. Understanding that big car you're gonna have to replace or you got to put maintenance on it. So that big fancy car that's a, that foreign, that foreign has foreign machine parts. You can't go to Auto AutoZone and get that. You gotta go take that somewhere. Germany. Sure, you may have the money to do it, you feel me? But that shit becomes expensive. Mm -hmm, if yeah. you really truly yeah. financially literate, you're not trying to spend and dump money all the time on this, 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 this. Be be smart. You ain't gotta show up and be flossy and flash for everybody else. Why? At the end of the day, those are your belongings. You know how much you spent on it. It don't matter what nobody else thinks. At the end of the day, we all know we were born by ourselves. We're going to die by ourselves. We got to effectively use our money to make it work best for us. And it only comes with more financial literacy. I feel me personally, we should have that curriculum in schools nowadays. And it's not taught on a level that I think it should be. I think we should start teaching financial literacy at the fifth grade level, because at that level, most kids are getting allowances. Most kids are understanding more how money works because they're going to the store with their parents and they're understanding how to pay for stuff. They know how to count their money, but they don't know how to use their money. They don't know the effectiveness of how to save and what saving will do. So I feel if we start putting that in the small curriculum in schools, as they get older, that concept would be that much easier for them and that eventually help us not have so many people in debt. So mm. financial literacy is the key. What y'all think, man? Um, definitely wish they had a financial literacy uh, class in my um, fifth grade on art. I would be balling right now. Uh, and <laughs> right now, be I would be balling. I wouldn't be wearing those. I don't I don't try to be flashy anyway, so I would definitely want to just how to say have it at least to the point where I when I saved up and I got to my twenties or whatever, I could do whatever you know project that mm -hmm. I think could take me somewhere to go somewhere, you know. And I think that that's good now because nowadays I see more like uh, younger kids. 
they have parents that are more financial literate um, in, in general, and they, they get them into the right aspects. If he wanted to be a producer or whatever, they can get him, um, I, I said the wrong word, but they can get him into the right, uh, I would say, the right community of people to teach them what, what they need to do to get to the next level, or whatever talent or whatever passion they have. Um, pretty much, but I also feel like that now with technology, it forces us to to be able to get to knowledge more um, mm -hmm. more quickly, so we can have like we don't have to wait on uh, somebody to tell us what the um, what we need to know to be financial uh, financially literate. Like we can just look that up right there online and then just go step by step where you know 10 20 years ago we didn't have that you know you had to like go to somebody that um they had a degree in finance or they're an accountant or you know um or a business owner in general to get that information and usually those people are too busy trying to figure out their own business and their own financials to be trying to give you a full for uh full class a full-time class on something you know and then a lot of times people want quick answers and i feel like financial literacy is not one of those things you just get a quick answer to solve your problems that's one of those things you practice and and learn over time i definitely agree with you on the longevity piece where like it's or oh, an over time thing but um overall with financial literacy i think this is definitely a huge missing piece in our community but it's because i think is i think it's getting worse because of the fact that you have technology like i think technology makes a lot of people now experts on nothing like they end up being just dummies when they talk because they're so used to being able to look up everything your brain don't really retain nothing so you're not learning mm. anything you're just regurgitating something that you read and what happens is you you don't have the proper context in what you're reading. So like, mm -hmm. when you talk about financial literacy, like you might have somebody that go out there and like, yeah, look at the stock market, but like also like take, take the time, like realize you're not gonna learn that tomorrow. Like that's not something that's, oh, I, I watched a YouTube video and now I'm an expert on it. Mm -hmm. Or like e even just budget, like making mm -hmm. a real, a real active working, household budget if you have a certain amount of people in your house or you have a certain amount of bills even like that's not something that you just get just because you see a chart like that's something that you want to actually have an understanding of like okay so this is actually how utilities work this is how mortgage fluctuates this is how tax works this is how this is what's going to be taken out of this, this, and this for this insurance. And this is how that insurance is going to come back on this. Like you want to have an understanding of what those things that you're filling in that chart is. So I think uh, it's not taught in school. It's not taught. It is taught in schools. If you go to college, it's not taught in a lot of high schools, but you, because you got to remember high school is not meant to, make you a business owner is meant to it's literally still under the old design where it was meant to make people functional and literate enough to go work in the factories and understand how to work the machines that they could that they worked in the factories you know what i mean like we're in the middle of we're actually going to i don't even know what the next bubble gonna be but we're like in the middle of this like technological revolution and we're still living by industrial revolution standard <laughs> to education period so like that's really the answer like education is broken so the the goal of education as a structure not necessarily individuals but the structure of education is really set up still under the old model of make these people be able to function from the farm first of all that's where it first started like let's get them ready so that they can actually go work on the farm a little earlier so they can have an understanding of how to calculate, you know, where I got this amount of, this amount of wool from the sheep, so I'm going to be able to get this much at the market, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then that that evolved into the Industrial Revolution where, like, we got to have them function enough to be able to go work in these factories, and we got to make sure that they're all, you know, can they understand what they're doing over here so we're not getting a bunch of people killed. 
And then it went into, we're going to keep that model, but we're just going to keep calling it something else every few years to appease people. And we're going to unionize it so that we're going to have enough p- teachers that get so tired of fighting against it, they'll just sit with their tenure and get money. And that's a lot of public school districts. And then you got other districts where it's like, that system has been ingrained so much in our psyche, like people don't even know how to get out of it. So that's why they don't teach it. But yeah. Uh-huh. They need to teach niggas how to use their money more. Yes, they should. I definitely agree there. I definitely agree there. A lot less people would be broke. Including me. Yeah. But I think that's where it comes to. Like, each one teach one. Like, uh, you said, it ain't up to nobody to tell you. But I think it is up to, like, a lot of times as OGs nowadays, like people don't want to talk to the younger people because they feel like, well, the younger people don't want to listen. But like, tell them anyway. When you was younger, you didn't want to listen to somebody, but that that lesson still comes back to resonate. So like, even if you just look at it like I'm planting the seed so that one day when that situation do come up, you might remember a piece of it that at least gives you a springboard to go find the rest of the information if you don't remember what I said. You know what I mean? Like, I think us pouring into those next generations, even, you know, as parents, you know what I'm saying, making sure that we teach anything we learn along our way to financial literacy, anything we learn as we, you know, gather more and more tools into our toolbox for as far as how to understand finances, how to build wealth, et cetera. Like, it is incumbent upon us to do it. Since the system ain't going to do it, let us be the ones that's, that's the teachers, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I look at it. Like, takes a village. Yeah, like you know, what I mean, if you see the problem there, like if you ain't, if you are, if you can't do nothing about it, point it out. But if you can do something about it, or if you can be a voice for it, like you know, go ahead and do that. So I think like mm-hmm. if if everybody get that mentality, of, like I might not be an expert, but hey, this is what I do know, and this is some information that got me started. You take it and run with it, but at least you got this beginning knowledge. And that might be everything that I know up until this point, but at least you got that and now who knows what you'll do with it because at least I gave you this little piece, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we all look like that, you know, we, we build a nation of people who get back into being intellectual and get back into really doing research and not just, you know, that microwave education. But I definitely agree with you, man. <laughs> I just feel like a lot of people in our communities don't feel like or don't understand the importance of making your money work for you. So they all still believe in that fast money, that fast money lifestyle. Not really not realizing like it ain't no ain't no retirement in it. Fast money lifestyle. Not too many people making that fast money is turning that fast money into something that can work for them. So, it might think it might think that fast money lifestyle is financial literacy, and being yeah. that they they think that way, they're gonna keep doing it. Yes, yeah. so, rap hustle. Like that That's the new. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go sling these beats. Not realizing that market is saturated. Very. But every market seems to be saturated, just as, except for teachers and mm-hmm. teachers and doctors, nurses. And whew, boy. Fact. So I'm going to go on the face haste to the level. Oh, God. Hmm. As we all know, I all started, I always started out with five things I hated. And then last week I went into things I love. So I figured this year, 2021, I wouldn't be so much on hate. I would involve things I love and in my speech as well too, to try to give a different perspective and give myself a different outlook instead of trying to be so negative all the time. Cause every time I, I hear y'all talk about me, y'all say I be mad all the time or I don't mess with a lot of people. I don't talk to people, something like that. 
So I got to take a, a deep look at myself. You feel me? I'm always talking about this smell theory and being aware of myself. So I realize like I'm negative sometimes. So I'm going to bring some positivity in the things that I bring in to the, to the weeks going on forward. So the first thing I want to talk about that brings me joy, uh, one of the first things I love is just the, the joy of a child's laughter. You feel me? Like regardless of how mad you are, hearing a kid laugh, that's going to make you smile. I don't care who you are. It's going to make you smile, laugh or something just to hear a kid bust out laughing. Not not no mean kid. I mean, like a little, little kid, like three and three and below. To hear kids and babies laugh, it's it's something soothing. It's something therapeutic. It's it just cool to so cool to so excuse me. Next thing I love is the feeling of knowing you can make a hater hate on you. And most times people like haters, people get mad like, yeah, they are. You feel me? like the haters go hate, but mm. when you know you making them hate, enjoy that feeling, revel in that. Because that's a great feeling because you know you doing something good. It's something you doing. Yeah. You feel like it's something you doing is positive enough to make another person negative and look at you and say something about what you're doing. You may not know what it is, but you got to move forward and know I'm doing something good. Look at that hater. Hey, look at that. Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, shit. I'm doing it right. You feel me? That's you a great feeling. I, I, I love that feeling. You feel me? I love that feeling. When they looking at you with that lizard face and you just looking back smiling and she's like, yep, yeah, you see me. You see me. I don't know what you're mad at, but you see me. Now I take it to a flip side, things I don't like. Now, complaining ass people. People who always got to complain. Something always wrong with them day in, day out, regardless of how good they got it. They got something to complain about. Every time you see them, every time you talk to them, hey, how you doing? Oh, I don't know. Do you know this going on? I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, damn, is anything ever going on good for you? <laughs> I mean, really? Everything you always say is nothing but something going wrong with you. Is everything in life bad for you? I don't think it's that bad. I think you just like that feeling of somebody always want to think you the victim or thinking just want to give you that empathy. It, it, it got to be a syndrome out there about people loving empathy and loving sympathy. It got to be something out there. I don't know the name of it, but I guarantee you something. Because it's people that just get stuck on that. Every time you talk to them, well, what you doing today? Well, I got to go up here because I got to pay this bill. And you know, I ain't got this money. Well, damn, everybody got bills. Yeah. That Everybody got complaints. Much. Everybody got complaints. You feel me? Like people ask me every day, hey man, what's going on? I ain't shit. I can't complain. You feel no need to. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically, no what need. am I complaining for to you about my about my what's going on with me? Because at the end of the day, everybody got something going on with them. You feel me? Yeah. That they ultimately want to complain about. But why am I mm. complaining? Don't complain about it. Do something about it. Do something to change your shit you complain about. Right on. Do that. You feel me? I wasn't going to other shit I hate, but I'm feeling real good in a positive mood. So I ain't going to go too much hate, <laughs> shit, hate shit. I'm going to leave the hate shit right there. You feel me? Like I was just looking at a baby laugh, so shit, I can't be too much mad. <laughs> you going to move. Good life. Shit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, let us go up and keep the. Do what you got. Get the air of positivity, uh, keep and keep it going, especially with, along with all the other um, subjects we had so far. So, um, what happened today? The Biden he passed this. Um, he's been passing executive orders and bills the whole day. Mm -hmm. So one of them, uh, he was talking about racial equity, pretty much mm -hmm. uh, eliminating, like you know how they have uh, they have area specific where. They try to push black people to live in that area or whatever, or they try, uh, um, I forgot what it's called, redlining, mm -hmm. eliminating redlining. And then it's, um, they all, he also granted that the federal government uh, do not um, use privately owned prisons anymore. So he also doing that um, okay. pretty much. So. I, I just brought that up because it seemed like it relates to like the past, the first two topics that we were talking about 
um, he was he he did like a whole speech or whatever. I was trying to watch it on Facebook or whatever, but the comments kept getting on my nerves because like it was still like Trump supporters <laughs> going up, and I'm like, how do these people still have the internet, and why do they have the internet? Why do they still have the internet? Why do they still like? It was just a free country, champ. Like them oh Trump supporters God. ain't going nowhere, man. That's still half. Like you gotta think about it. It's still like half the country. I was like, dog, it's I'm about only to big. Make me some shirts. <laughs> they ain't going no. Oh yeah, like old oh, boy. <laughs> it's, it's like it's been a, it's been a whole week. It ain't been but a week or whatever. And he's saying yeah, all these executive orders or whatever. When we had a whole year of executive orders, but yeah, that's that's pretty much just giving me uh giving y'all an update on the black side. What Biden seems to be trying to do, pretty much trying to keep a um our foot on his neck. Um, and, and yeah, in general, he need to do something. Uh, yeah, I said but, the black president that didn't do nothing for me, so I don't expect much from him either. Yeah, I just well, expect, I don't know why people expect Trump Trump. presidents to do something but, for him, man. Yeah, I just expect him not to get us killed. Like I feel like Trump was going to end up getting us killed by some country because they were going to get tired of it. But some country, other than that, country. I, I don't expect a whole lot from <laughs> politics right now. Um, Still too much of the old guard in power, so you know. I never politics is usually wild. Politics, man. I never expect much. And I, I thought this was pandering, but he was also talking about putting Harriet back on the twenty again. You know, we've been man, waiting for that I'm for good, four man. years. You can, but I, I, yeah, that's some that lady was like, made a good point. Uh, I can't remember who, the, who it was, but on Twitter she was like. Uh, I don't want Harriet on the 20. I feel like a woman that was already used as capital shouldn't be used on capital. Like, and yeah, I kind of feel good. like I'm I'm good. I, I don't want her being passed around as currency. And then after a while, we're not even Harry, give her a monument or something, uh, or like memorialize her in a real way, do something, pass a bill that directly gives us some type of economic freedom or equity that we didn't have before now. Otherwise. Leave Harriet out of it. Let that lady rest. And, w- and the way I'm things are going, already screaming at her grave. I don't need no more. I feel the way thing- Go ahead, man. I was I was thinking the way things are going with currency anyway, uh, um, and in general, like cryptocurrency and it, and just the simple fact that I can go to stores and they don't allow cash and you know because of COVID and everything. So um, I and last year it was like a coin shortage in general. So I feel like after a while, we're all going to cards and Apple Pay and, and things like that anyway, because uh just just seems like the way things are going. I feel like the COVID yeah. situation kind of jump started a lot of things That's that was point. about to happen anyway, pretty much. Yeah. But what say you face? I'll put it like this. Why would you ever want to put a black woman on the dirtiest thing that we have? Money is the dirtiest I, thing we touch every day. Man, that too. I feel that. Money, feel that. money goes. All that cocaine money will be goes. Just, just think of what money people keep their money at. You feel me on a daily basis? Uh-huh. Women put money in their bra. We put money in our socks, and they still in their drawers. People have money in their ass crack. People put my money under their shit. And they sock with their shoes underneath. They solo their shoes. People put money everywhere. You feel me? Babies put money in their mouth. You feel me? Dogs eat the money. They shit it out. Then you go spend that shit. I mean, it, it just think literally people shit. <laughs> drug money, blood money, money with blood on it. If <laughs> money is the dirtiest shit we have, yeah. that everybody touches. You feel me? You in unison, <laughs> everyone touches it. Yeah, if I take it out my pocket and hand it to somebody, they gotta touch the what the shit I just touched. You feel me? How many times somebody handed you a wet dollar bill or some shit like that? Ugh, nigga. Mm. Why is this shit wet? Yeah, yeah. why the fuck is this shit wet, nigga? Dollar bill you gonna, wet. This you wait, that it can be you. just out of the fr- it could be just out of the washer, but still, you know what I mean. You got a napkin wet? I can put this dollar in. Soak this shit up, so yeah, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> Please, soggy ass dollar. You know what the fuck we all know? <laughs> 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 you know, 
that's our show for the week, folks. Um, <laughs> as always, um, we got the video clips coming out this week. The podcast drops every week on Wednesday nights. Uh, Thursday, basically at 12 a.m., or you can say Wednesday night at midnight, whichever one you prefer, how to, however you want to say it. It'll be there by then. Uh, we own literally everywhere. We're Googleable. Um, so, you know, Googleable. I made that catch word. Us pretty much everywhere. Um, probably the first video clips coming. I don't even know this week. Um, it's a lot <laughs> this week. <laughs> we going to see y'all. what happens. Um, if you are listening to this podcast, man, do yourself a favor. Become a member on our value, value, I mean, a coffee site or become a member of our Patreon. When I tell you it is so much that happens that you don't get to, that you don't get to hear or see, it's so much context and subtext and stuff. It's like little inside jokes that y'all would never get unless you, yeah. So, All the single ladies. Go to, ba- go to buy me a, go to buy me a coffee.com. Just type in the partners or go to our Patreon. Uh, you get access to our unedited videos. Um, Tiz yeah. takes blog when we come in this week. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about. I'm like, I got some rewatches I'm about to do. Um, so we got some stuff to talk about there. Um, and otherwise, man, if you can't support financially by, you know, going to our buy, buy us a coffee or our Patreon or just, you know, dropping some in our cash app, cool, no problem. The best way you can support is not only what I'm going to have Faith say, but just like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, share our, share our stuff, interact with our content. We, we talk back if you comment, if you agree with us, let us know. If you disagree with us, let us know. Let us We're know. always down for the dialogue, man. Um, that's what this is, just one big conversation. So join in on that conversation. And you know what I mean? What y'all got for me, guys? Before I move on, I still want to say it's still an open invitation for anybody who is a Umartian, excuse me, a supporter of Umar, to email us at our email come on the show and have an intellectual conversation. We still have questions that have still not been answered that you may have answers to because you may have an insight that we don't have. And I would love to have an intellectual conversation at any point. Please do. But moving on. Before, before you go, I got to speak on that one real go quick. Ahead. Go ahead. It's not a U Martian. But we may have an Umar only show coming up. Um, there's a guy who did an article on Umar who said he wants to come on our show. Um, he may have some insight or something. So we're going to holler at him, see what he's about. And we may have a guest where we get to uh, kind of get a, go a little further on this Umar conversation. So Chop it up. Stay, tuned. More stay tuned, folks. But moving on. On all on the partners closet, we're going 50% off on all merchandise from the 27th to the 31st of January with the promo code partners 100. That's P O D N A S 100. Once again, that's all merchandise on the partners.com will be 50% off with the promo code partners 100. P O D N A S 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got, Pat? Right. As always, you can catch us on our Facebook and our Instagram and our Twitter, uh, T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. Uh, have features in our reels. Show us a little little bit of trailers of what our shows are. A um, couple of things working on on my side. I'm, I'm working on a few interviews with artists I've been talking off to the side uh, coming up. So I'm working on that and... Um, uh, here at the studio and uh, that's pretty much it for this week and, and one more huge thank you to Josette Mize and Gator Girl <laughs> yes. Boy for giving us yes, our yeah, first yeah. Thank, uh, you, thank, you, thank you thanks for buying the merch thanks for you know what I'm saying your financial your contribution um, it literally this is just our dream right here we just you know get to live out our dreams every week so 
at the end of the day, man, thank y'all for supporting. Thank you guys for subscribing on YouTube. We're literally like six or seven away from 100 subscribers. So that was literally our goal for our first year and a half. And we're almost there oh, in like, you know, three, four months. Oh, we're I, four I just, away from 100. Just check. Oh, my God. 96. So, <clears throat> thank you guys so thank much. You, we hope you, that our content... You enlightens you entertains you i hope it just you know if if even if you think we simple and goofy and you just watch us just to laugh at us cool as long as you get some type of entertainment from that's us. it man if you enjoyed yourself while joining in on our conversation every week man we appreciate the love um as always man i'm one third of the partners your boy tears along with it's your homie padawan here at the uh matriarch gallery here and um, with my homeboy. Yes, there's space in the place, and I'm just trying to stay ahead of the race. Already, man. Partners, man. We out. Peace. <clears throat> uh, I'll just make it a Damn, the way topic. he picked that bag up, boy. Yeah, don't ever do that no more. Like you ready to go to the bathroom with all your girlfriends. Oh shit, no. Nah. <laughs> Girl. Oh, I'm gonna see the ladies. Oh, I'm gonna see the ladies. Oh, I'm gonna see the ladies. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. I ain't get kicked. What other club I got kicked out of? Oh. I now, not party, but club. <laughs> No, that was the only one. We always got kicked out of the The student road. center I ran out of, they didn't even get a chance to kick me out of. I just... The time you left to the time you came back, beat on the door. Yo. I just had you got to... I just know... I couldn't, I couldn't let them get your uh, ID. ID. <laughs> I was like, yo, I ain't about to get this nigga kicked out of school, man. I got this nigga shit on me. They going to be like, well, why you got his ID? Then they going to think... I was like, oh, Lord, let me get this nigga back. All right, let me go hide up under this slide real quick. Mm. Let me see how long I can hold on. I figure I can hold on. <laughs> no, I won't on the but like I was literally up under the uh like the little playground over there by the little you know the parking lot was there and then you had the little trailer little trailer buildings, little art building and the African American building, the basketball oh, building or whatever, and some other building. Mm. And it was like a little oh, playground I behind one of and it had a slide. So I mm. hung up. I held on to the side of the slide like this and just hung upside down with my feet I remember and my hands me this story. Me. And I just held on. And it had to be a good 20, 25 minutes, man. The cars rolled up and down. They were shining lights. I was like, I know they see my ass hanging here like a damn Spider-Man. They got to see. Nope. Hey, tears. Like, <laughs> my eye. Hey, Losing his eye. Yeah, some probably fucking dread. Really you got some <laughs> weed crumbs in your eye, man. No, no, man. No, I had no, one in no. my eye the other night. <laughs> oh, weed you do? What you do? Yeah. Smoke? What you do? Nah, went to sleep with the blood in your mouth? Oh, I was rolling so much weed. <laughs> Shit. Glad I ain't go to the store like that. I don't feel like I feel good about my topics right now. <laughs> <laughs> Switch them shits up, man. Nigga, I need. I'm trying to think. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Keep your oh. head ringing. I don't know why that <laughs> popped in my head, but it just popped in my head. I don't head. know why that was funny to me. What the hell? We said the last, the end of the last episode. I remember saying some shit about some fur burgers and some other shit. <laughs> that shit was funny as a bitch. It was at the beginning, I think. No, no it was at the end. end. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't never really, really finished. It was like, I don't right. know. It was, it's the Padawan. It was like, and then you just like, because you were going off of the last thing Ted said. It was like, get some fur burgers. Man. <laughs> <laughs> See, this going to be like uh, when we did that double recording, man. My damn face going to be all sore and shit the whole episode. Oh, fuck. <laughs> all right. Wait, wait, wait. Can't look at y'all. Can't look at y'all. Can't look at y'all. Oh! I try to get my shit right so you don't fuck me up. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the partners. 
So we're three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz with. It's the other third, the Padawan. Yeah, in his face. <laughs> What's up, man? His face. <laughs> 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 oh god. Oh man, I do the double. Damn. 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 I was trying something different. Damn. 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 <laughs> the battle wall. Ooh ha Got you on a chick. How dare you step up trying to step on my suede shoes? All right. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, the to try that method, too. All right. Mm. Sniffing like Uma. Yeah, you are. Uh, I'm going to turn the heat up. No, nah, I don't see shit. No, I don't see uh, shit. All right. All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly distance. Oh, it's hot. Look at that. Can we get this and what? We dissing these niggas in these streets. I'm stop. Weekly dissing fest. We have a dissing fest. <laughs> no, we talking shit. No, we have a yeah, weekly dissing fest. We talk shit. We talk shit at the round table. All day. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends connected. <laughs> I keep looking at friends. Look at that face. <laughs> oh, the blue for real is going to be so awesome. Oh, my eyes are filling with water. Oh. Yeah, that'll make sure I get my money. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> She's stupid, man. Man. <laughs> 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 uh, hey people out there fellas oh my don't god. grab don't grab no, oh don't my grab god. no man bag in no weird way man oh don't my grab god. no watch how you grab your man bags pause pause but if you if you carry one of them mercies <gasps> watch how you grab that book man mm. man because that's still gonna look crazy mm. I'm telling you mm. Oh my to be, god! To be honest with the viewers, he's saying that because <laughs> I like to be you look like transparent. You, you gonna like look to like you holding the purse for mama at the uh, mall when you was yeah, a kid. I like hold like my like purse for me while I go in the store. <laughs> I had pulled up my bag, and it's like I don't know what way, what's the proper way of pulling up? Because either way, like if I if I use both my hands, it's gonna look, look like I roll, like, look like, like I roll simple. You gotta hold your bag like, like this, a baby, man. Uh, man. Man, if you hold your bag like this. Like a clamp. Oh my god! Like if you like, got a, if you got a cramp, hold your bag and present it and present it with a little hand under it. Don't don't get that bag. I just I just wear it all across <laughs> my strap like I'm Indiana Jones. That's that's I try to be. Indiana Jones was like my favorite movie. Ain't nothing no wrong with but uh, Indiana Jones had a satchel too. Yeah. You got to, man, when you got, you know, swinging through the jungle, finding treasure and shit. <laughs> you know, all right. All right. Like this. Nurses. And, whew, boy. Facts. Essential. Essential. Mm -mm -mm. So, I like to talk about a few things this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you are. <laughs> you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
it could be just out of the washer, but still, you know what I mean? You got a napkin I can put this dollar in? Soak this shit up, so Yeah, that's real. <laughs> 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 this soggy ass dollar. You know what the fuck going on? <laughs> <laughs> he cried. He cried. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Because I think that's gonna be something that's really you know, rooted in our community. <laughs> I don't know. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by Zoom, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of The Partners, your boy Tiz, along with... The other third of The Partners, here to be the very best like no one ever was, Pat Owan. <laughs> okay, okay, what's happening, man? It's facing the place, it's trying to stay ahead of the race. He said that shit like Pokemon. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> right off the top, <laughs> off the yeah. top of the dog. Right. What's up with y'all, man? How y'all week going, man? Oh, it's that day again, so I'm happy. Amen. One more day. That, Amen to that, man. My my week is all split up anyway, so I only work two days and go to work three days out of that. So right, so I got a day off in the middle, so I ain't got no straight work week. So it is what it is. Right, on, right on. I wanted to start this off at the top of the show and get y'all thoughts on the man. Uh, this Chloe oh, Bailey so situation. Um, so for people who listening or watching that may not know, um, Chloe Bailey is the little girl. Well, not the, not little girl. She's a grown woman now. Excuse me, I apologize. Uh, but basically, her and her sister, you know, Chloe and Haley, they kind of came up under Beyonce and they started at like really little kids. They were like maybe twelve, I think, eleven to twelve <laughs> or so when Beyonce first discovered them. Well, now Chloe Bailey is 22 years old. And uh, y'all know this busted challenge and this silhouette challenge been uh, popping off all across the internet. Um, I'm sure Al Gore's internet was not ready for all of that. Um, but Chloe Bailey decided to go out there, you know, make her a video uh, for basically both challenges. Um, in that same week, I guess, between the busted challenge and the silhouette challenge, she also did a couple of... Um, just random videos of her dancing kind of seductively in her bedroom and blowing sage, I mean, burning sage and doing some kind of sensual dance moves with it. Um, but basically, she ended up getting, some sage too. getting a lot of um, backlash from uh, some of the more conservative people out there who thought that she was being a little too sexy and kind of stepping outside of a box into something that she wasn't. And it kind of made her break down basically um she was she posted a video where she was crying and she was saying that you know she really just started making the videos and stuff because she's growing into self-love of her body and she's always thought of herself as being overweight and not really liking herself so this is kind of her way to kind of work through that and you know get to a place of self-love um and then she threw me off because she then said she doesn't make the videos to be sensual or sexual if it's not to be sexual, I got a couple of questions I'm going to throw out there to y'all and have y'all uh, give y'all takes on it. Uh, for one, if it's, if it's not for attention or to be sexual, then why would you choose two of the most sexually involved challenges that we've had recently to participate in? Um, the dances and songs that she posted herself too were very sexual songs talking about fucking and whatnot and I, I just don't understand it so like if it's not for the attention to be sexual like why post it at all 
Um, that's the kind of the first question. And then the other two questions is, do y'all think women can do the sensual and sexual moves for these social media for these social media videos and not try to be sexual? Um, and also, do you think that women who dress provocatively or may exhibit a lot of sexually suggestive things, should they be upset when men or society at large, because it was a lot of women that was actually giving Chloe backlash, um, do you think that they should get upset when they get viewed in a sexual way? Now, me personally, uh, for the first question, for attention to be sexual, um, sexuality has been normalized in society nowadays, so it kind of blurs the lines between the two. Um, if you look at this would happen like 10 years ago, it would have been about all oh, just to get the tension and throwing your body out there to get whatever monetary value you could get out of it because that was in like the beginning of the heightening of the sexuality when all the big booty craze came out and everyone started getting the injections and all that other stuff but mm -hmm. nowadays when plastic surgery and big butts and big breasts and big lips and big everything is normalized sexuality is over normalized to where you have these challenges and women feel like it's women and men because you see every gender participating in these challenges for some reason. They, it's normal to them. So they don't feel like they should be looked at in that way. This, this is just me showing my body, it's just a body. But in the same sense, you have to realize you showing your body is something sexual. Yeah. Um, we, um, us as adults, we should understand that certain parts of our bodies are sexual parts and uh, the viewing of those may arouse the people that you're putting it out there for. Once again, you are putting this on the world wide web, worldwide. This is not something you're just sending to a friend or sending to your boyfriend. That's what I'm saying. You're doing for the, for the world to see. So regardless of what the world opinion has to be or is on that, you take it because you chose to do this challenge and regardless of what the public opinion is, you chose to accept that. So whatever feelings you derive from that, I mean, roll with it, either have thick skin or just be accountable for the action that you did. Um, as far as your expectation for what you think others may look at it for, no one knows your expectations but you. So no one else is bound to be held up to your expectations with their opinions, especially when you're putting your body out there for the public opinion. Now, when it comes to shaming someone's body, now that's mm -hmm. a totally different subject. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You should never say, never shame anyone's body because to each his own. Everyone yeah. has, even even someone you may look at and think is perfect to you, to them, they may have some insecurity as far as their body. Then they say, oh, my leg is like this, or, or I have something, because everyone has something they think is wrong with them, but it's only wrong to them. Um, yeah. You have women walking around nowadays say, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, but the whole time they're man, like, man, you look good to me, I don't want you to lose nothing. But right. it's insecurity within themselves, they have to satisfy. So, as far as this thing, intentional sexuality, like I said, these lines are blurred right now. Um, as far as your other question to move on, um, can they do these and not try to be sexual? I, I, yeah, they can nowadays. But during the days and times we all grew up, no, nah, you couldn't. Because, once again, it wasn't over-sexualized back then. It wasn't over hype so when little kim came out and she was busting it wide open on the, on the album cover that was shock value you feel me something like that nowadays it wouldn't shock anyone because it's normal so when you're doing the busted challenge or you're doing the silhouette challenge and you have someone taking the red taking the silhouette off and now seeing you do what you do now it's an issue now it should be an issue when you put your body on the internet that's why so to a certain extent, I don't have no pictures of my family on the internet to, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I know by me taking the chance and putting that on there, that was someone on the internet chooses to decide to do with it. They have the they have the ability to do with it. And who am I to get mad? I chose to put myself out there on the internet. Right. That's one thing with the internet you have to understand that there's some rules and laws, but at the end of the day, the internet is the wild west. You feel like if you can get it, you're gonna get it. If not, Oh, well, um, for your last question, 
I don't know. That's real. That's Should real. they get upset? Um, I really don't know because I'm not a woman, so I can't speak on mm. their 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 feelings on how that would make them feel as far as being over sexualized or having someone say something about their bodies or them doing a the channel like that. I, I personally don't know. Uh, my wife don't do that type of stuff, so I don't know. That's um, me personally. Only reason, I'm, just to be real, only reason I looked at any challenge because I knew it was part of the topic for this week. Like, that stuff for me, like, I grew up, I went to the strip club. So, your silhouette challenge is doing, it's doing what? <laughs> <laughs> it's doing nothing for a person like me. Like, um, Love quarantine. Uh, you, you feel me? Like, uh, I, I can understand why it may do something for some. I'm not downing nobody. By no means, uh, uh, like I said, I, I throw no judgment, no shade at nobody to each his own. But the little challenges and everything, like, you, you, to me personally, why get mad? Like, why? Why waste the time being emotionally invested in what someone else has to say on the Internet? Why? You're taking the time to read a comment when you can stop halfway. I'm like, I don't even want to read the rest. But you invest your time to respond to a negative comment about something you posted. If what yeah. you posted made you feel good, that's all that really matters. That's like going out and buying a pair of shoes. It could be the ugliest pair of shoes in the world, but if you dig them, that's all that matters at the end of the day. So if you put something on there and you busting it open or whatever, and that made you proud, that made you happy, or you that made you exhibit your femininity or accept your body more, that's the only thing that then needs to matter, not what somebody else has to say about it. So you getting mad about that, for what? You're feeding into that. So at the end of the day, even with you getting mad, that person is still winning. They drew that emotion out of you. So at the end of the day, you got to look at yourself and be like, why am I getting mad at this person saying something about me? Are you still not happy? Or did did you making that video supposed to hit a point with you that didn't hit a point that when this person pinpointed something in the video, it really resonated with you more? What is it? Because it's not just a comment on your video. Your body has been your body forever. This ain't the first time someone says something about your body. If you have an attractive body, nine times out of ten, everywhere you go, most men are going to look at you, say something to you, holler at you, or, or something. Just being real. You don't even have to have a body these days. Men, nine times out of ten, most men, if you're a woman, they're going to say something to you, regardless. Clothes on, clothes off, whatever. So if you choose to take your clothes off and someone say something to you, have that mentality as far as well I don't care like I'm sorry like you go to the strip club they busting it open they they, they get the same thing y'all got on these challenges people is ooing and of them giving them money for what they doing y'all doing the same thing showing your body in the same manner and and getting nothing from it but like what's up I was going to say, um, for her, I feel mm -hmm. like, one, you got to think she's, really, she's a kid still. She's young. You know, when, when you do young, you do crazy stuff. For them, in this day and age, this might be her version of it. it like, um, um, to that age where she's noticing that she's a woman and she's recognizing that. Now, the where it is a... It may be a problem is is when she is uh, looking at these comments and everything and then taking it as that she needs to say a statement. Um, I feel like just like you said with um, the Internet, it's wild, wild west. If if you're on the Internet and you feel like sharing something or posting something and and um, in general, you have to have a certain amount of like how much you don't care like 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 how much do you really care if somebody has something to say about it um this is like what face told me one time before like uh why do you care so much if you disappoint someone because it's going to happen no matter what you do there's going to be somebody that has a uh disagreeing opinion over what you do you know like she could have stayed in a, um, a more conservative manner or whatever, and it's gonna be somebody that's saying, well, what do you know about this? You, you, you prissy, you know, goody two shoes or whatever. I mean, it, it's, as long as she feel comfortable in herself, I feel like that's the answers to all the que questions pretty much. Cause 
I, I'm not going to be the one to say, hey, you should feel like this or you shouldn't feel like this because your emotions, when when stuff happens, you know, like you're going to just respond the way your emotions uh, drive you to respond pretty much. And I know I've responded too many ways um, under my emotions and, and done, done dumb shit to be like judging anybody else. But uh, I, will, I will say with these challenges or whatever, like with an artist mentality, I feel like there's a, you know, there's an artist mentality and there's an attention mentality. I feel like with some of these people, it's just them expressing their artistic twist to something. Like maybe their artistic twist to the challenge or whatever. For other people, it's, all right, I see this person actually getting some attention. Let me try my, my shit and get that attention from it. So it's just a matter of like, perspective and what way to go at it because if you with an artist mentality you could be thinking a certain way mm -hmm. and because that person don't understand why you think that way it might be offensive to them here it, i mean we have seen plenty of times where comedians they say a joke and going at it from their perspective and somebody is actually offended by it so i i just treat it like that like as far as um, is it art in it? Are they doing it as like a, a way of expression? Um, like as a person that considers themselves an artist, I, I'm not the one to judge anybody's way of expression pretty much. Well, I got a lot to say on it. I, I got it. <clears throat> and I ain't about to be... <clears throat> yeah, y'all, get ready for a tears take, man. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't about to filter mm -hmm. myself on this one. Um, Man, this this PC bullshit, man, like some of this shit, it ain't got nothing to do with like the rights of nobody. It's just like common damn sense. Mm -hmm. If you do a <clears throat> challenge that was initiated in a sexual way and it's literally people being naked or very scantily clad, showing their bodies or doing sexually provocative, provocative moves to a sexual song that's literally saying, uh, bust it, bust it, is you fucking? There is no <laughs> way that an adult, you telling me a 14 year old do it, they may not know better. A grown person knows what the hell sexual sexuality is. And they also know that if I put this out there, yes, this may be my intent, but you're not about to tell me somebody that's literally been, been in front of thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people since they was 11 to 12 years old ain't smart enough to realize that, yes, this is my intent, but this is what it looks like. I'm shaking my naked ass and twisting and turning, half bucket naked to a sexual song, and you mean to tell me you didn't think nobody was going to think that that was sexual? You mean to tell me that you couldn't have, if it was about self-love, you couldn't have sent that to your girlfriends? Send that in a text, <clears throat> hey, girls, look at, look at me, you know what I'm saying? Get them to... Yes, girl, empowerment or something like that. But if you put this out to the world, not just the people who know and love you and understand how you think, you put this out to the world. You're not about to tell me that you didn't know you was either trying to get, which you, you were trying to get some type of attention, whether mm -hmm. that be you was trying to get attention from the artsy people who was like, oh, this is a beautiful expression of, of a woman's form. Or you were trying to get attention from the from the dudes because you wanted to feel good and you wanted that that confidence boost of oh they looking at me like I'm married my wife is married to me but if a woman walk past and give me the eye like I look good that boosts my confidence regardless because it lets me know hey you still got it if a man walk past her and give her the eye like she look good that boosts her confidence like that's just human nature like. Mm -hmm. When people give you praises, you feel good about it. Otherwise, there's no reason to put it out to the public. Like when I'm, I want attention from this podcast. I want to get my voice heard. I want people to listen and react to it. That's why I'm putting it out to the public. If not, we just have a private conversation with us three and keep it there. Like I'm tired of people like these celebrities, especially male and female doing shit and acting like they didn't know what they was doing. Like you put it out to millions of people. So I, I mean, personally, I feel like she wanted attention. She just didn't like the attention that came back from it, and that hurt her feelings. And then second, I find it hard to believe that we have gotten to a point in 2021 where words do not mean what they mean anymore. 
sexuality is the expression of sensual and sexual energy out here. That's what it is. If you are taking the time, if you are a man, say you walk around, like I, I, I'd have been working out, I'm getting cut up, I got a nice little six pack now. If I walk outside with no shirt on, I'm not walking out there just under the complete blind thinking of no woman is going to see this and no woman might have an opinion. No, I know that that is a thing that could happen. Even if that's not what I'm looking for, I'm still aware of it and it's not a shock to me if it happens. If my wife goes out and she got on a short skirt, she's smart enough to understand that, yes, I'm not looking for a certain type of attention, but it will come. So she prepares for that. Like, she know, like she's not naive enough to not know. And these days, like, in the internet era where everything is on social media, you're not going to tell me that we're not out here looking for attention. That's what social media is. <laughs> trying to get likes, trying to get people to listen to what you're saying or watch what you're doing or give some type of reaction to what you're doing. Like, I'm just over that faking the funk. Like, oh, no, I had no idea that it would be seen like this. And this is, yeah, it might not be what you meant. But the way you went about it makes it be this. <laughs> Because there's millions of, of other ways that you could have still got your expression out or still got your self-love on without exposing yourself half naked to the entire world. Oh my God. Then, as far as when women do dress provocatively or exhibit sexually suggestive things, should they be mad? I can't tell them how to feel, but I will tell them that being a realist, you have to understand <clears throat> that there is stuff that comes with that. Like, even if you're not looking for it, do I think that you deserve to be ogled or harassed? Hell no. But men are going to pay more attention to you in a sexual manner the more that they can see because that is how we're wired. We're wired to want women and look at women <clears throat> and be attracted to it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. This shit is weird to me dude well don't get me wrong um as an artist that's the main reason why you do art to express yourself to get attention and everything what i meant by attention uh as the like intention mentality is that a lot of people just do it just for the attention like j they're gonna hop on every challenge they're gonna do every like if there's a new song that come out right now they're gonna do that challenge there's they like a be seen. You know, even the girls that, like, that do the silhouette challenge or the busted challenge, they're also doing their own version of the, the, the June bug challenge. Like there's there's some people that do that. Now, don't get me wrong. If you find fun in doing those challenges, I'm not going to tell anybody not to do it. Man, there's dudes out here that be making grinding videos to pretty Ricky songs trying to get girls to click on their picture. So like, it, it's not just mm -hmm. women. It's yeah. just, this is the era we live in. So I'm just like, how long are we going to keep acting like that's not what this is. That like that we're not a society craving attention, and that's why people are on social media in the first place. Like I literally stayed away from social media until we got this podcast because of the fact I didn't want attention. I didn't want to have everybody. I in still do. You know what I mean? I so still like, do. You know, when I when I when I say like we 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 can't keep faking the funk, man. I, mean, I just <laughs> wish people would just be real because then we can have real conversations and like really kind of fix stuff, but. As long as you keep doing something on an attention-seeking platform to a sexual song, doing sexual moves, like you could have flipped that so many other ways if you didn't want sexual attention. Because you're already a woman, so there's a sector of men out there that are going to be completely disgusting anyway. You can mm -hmm. come out there with a full-length burka on, like, a, what do you call it? Whatever you call it, like the a, muscle. A job. Yes, yeah. like a job. You come out there with a full length where you can't see nothing. And a man gonna be like, oh, look at that, look at that bridge of her nose. Like, there's a section of men out there that's just like that. And we can't keep acting like we don't know that. It's a section, it's a section of women out there that's thirsty as hell, and they sit there and they ogle every man on the internet. The man can have on grass cutting clothes, but ooh, I drank his bad water. Like, come on, man. Hey, like, ladies. Let's not like, forget. <laughs> it's women that do the same hey, ladies. Too. Hey, that's what I'm saying. The At the women. Padawan. Yes, Dang. women do the same thing to women. There's a section of men out there that are looking just for men. Like, we can't keep acting like there's not 
sexualized beings in the world that's going to look at you and make a opinion or judgment or something. And especially with social media, where they can now actually verbalize that to you in a, or, or get that out to you, they're going to do that. If you don't want that attention from that sector, then you can't. Then you need to put it to your private group on Instagram or your private friend group or somewhere like. Then it's with people that you know you're safe with. But if you put it out to the world, seven point some billion people, that's what you're gonna run into. You're gonna run into people that's gonna give their opinion, and some of them opinions you're gonna like. Some of them opinions gonna be good, and some of them gonna be fucked up. Tell you the truth. That's because parents are always telling their kids they're special and they grow up thinking they're special in the world of everybody. No, you're just special to your parents. Man, I'm you special, special too, to man. It's crazy out here, man. <laughs> it's crazy. You feel me? Like, they think they're special, special to everybody. Your I talent mean, makes you special. <laughs> your talent makes you special. Yes, it does. But you just, you just being you, it don't make you special to nobody else. But your talent brings you out. Man, People who ain't got talent. You feel me? Like your sex, the people have been trying to be sexual for a talent. That ain't a talent. That ain't a talent mm-hmm. at all. Being sexual, anybody can be instinct. sexual. Yeah, you feel me? Like if you, you, you everybody's sexual to something. You feel me? Like it's, it's, it's remember the dude who who married his phone. His, <laughs> I mean, he, I remember the dude that was like, humping his car. It's a dude that married the subway. So I mean, like really, I mean, in this day and age. People are crazy. Sexuality is subjective. Sexuality is subjective and objective. So I mean, you gotta get be over willing it. to either. That's what. I, that's my thing. Like, either don't get engage over. in it, or go into it, take the blinders off, and realize when I put this out there, I am not even just sexually. I am opening this up to whatever judgment comes with it because I now mm-hmm. no longer it's no longer in a safe space it's in a very open and very vulnerable place where anyone can say what they want like it wasn't even men that was giving her a hard time it was women coming at her mm-hmm. for, for for taking off her clothes as these some of these same women had done the damn silhouette and busted child mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. it, it's like people gonna give a judgment on shit on a public forum like it's public yeah. for a reason private yeah. can't nobody judge it Every, everybody's reaching out here for attention anyway, and right. everybody's going to find one situation so okay. that they can reach on and so they can get that attention. But okay. I will say with the response, a lot of times with these celebrities and responses, that might be their PR team to just put something out there or whatever, or they'll get... Oh, she was crying or, for real. That looked like a real cry. Oh, that's right. That is right. She was on the video. Like she broke it. Like, I believe her. I believe yeah. her intent. Mm-hmm. I believe that she really was doing it for Taylor. Like, I'm not negating that she, wh- why she did it. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, for whatever reason you did it, you could have posted a picture of you in the garden. Whatever you put on the internet, people, is going to be open to the other, to whoever the viewer or listener's interpretation is. Whatever they see of it is what their mind is going to tell them is going on and that's how they're going to react to it. And they're probably going to give you that opinion because it's a public forum where there's no real consequence for them giving you that opinion. Before you hit post, share, or send, or okay. Are you cool with everybody saying fuck shit to you? Just just say, and if you really want to share it, just say to yourself, I don't give a fuck. If it feels natural when you say I don't give a fuck, go ahead and press that button. Right. See, that's going. See that that goes into one of my topics later, and I, I, that mm, gotta press that button. <laughs> the damn one. Now, being mm. we on the topic of sexuality, it brings me somewhat into my next topic. My next topic is dating in this pandemic era. You know I, mean? mm. I don't date because I'm I'm married. Tiz, I know you don't date because you're married. Nope. Pat, you know, I don't after the last, I, I don't yeah, date because yeah, I'm yeah, you feel me like hat pan no cable bill. So, <laughs> you feel me? I just got a few am. questions. You feel me? <laughs> I just got a few questions for those who like are dating and y'all opinion on these three things. If y'all were dating in 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 this era, you feel me? Because this changes a lot of things about the normal dynamic of dating being if you are totally doing the correct things as far as being safe for this pandemic we're in and they, that transition is a little tricky. So my first question is, when you're trying to holler at somebody and you see the mask, all you see is the, the nice clothes and the nice hair, who the hell is under that mask? Do you know who's under that mask? 
No, you do not. You have no idea who the hell is under his ass you when you oppose that person. So that's what I was gonna say. That, you that'll you, be the part that will throw you off. The teeth part. You feel me? Everything else is kind of <laughs> figure it out. But mm-hmm. the teeth, boy, you never know what what the other mm-hmm. is. Your nose crooked? What? <laughs> mm. Next thing, next big thing is with this pandemic. It brings up a whole new line of questioning on first dates and everything. Your first date questions normally range from you single, you got kids, what do you do for a living, just random conversation. But now, do you go into, have you been, do you, are you going to get vaccinated? Have you been tested? Have you been around somebody that has COVID? Um, do, do you ask those type of questions? Do you make is that awkward nowadays? I do mean, this is 2021. Hmm? I'm do you not, I with the person I'm usually with, we already having those conversations just in general. You know what I'm saying? Like I think okay. once you get to a certain with, with me, I feel like if I get to a certain person with a person, or a certain place with a person, I'm gonna already mm-hmm. have those conversa- uh, conversations naturally, um, in general. You know, like and uh, if they come to me with it, now that makes me feel like I'm safe. Because you're already okay. considerate, you know, of that. Like, it, it almost comes mind. to a shock. Yeah, it's almost a mm-hmm. shock. Because I think about it, but I might be a little apprehensive of bringing it to them because sometimes if the way I may say things may come out harsh, like, and then they may come out like, oh, so you think I got something or, or whatever? So I'm always trying to... <laughs> <laughs> to govern how I say stuff because I, I'm a lot of times I'll say stuff and I really don't even try to be offensive by it, but right. they might be a, a way. But um, usually, like if I'm if I'm with someone and I'm that close to, and I'm saying this off of my own experiences right now or whatever, we're already having that conversation openly anyway because that's part of conversation nowadays anyway. Respect, respect. No, I can't vouch thing. for everyone that's single. Nah, I can't really vouch yeah. for everybody that's single. Hey man, you exactly. the only one we gotta ask, man. You the only one here. Right. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some comments. Hopefully somebody the in the comments will say something. Facts, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, in the comments, man, answer these questions for it. That is some yeah, hey, like, like build what are y'all doing these conversation. Let's build a conversation off these questions. Next question. If you were dating someone new during this pandemic and you got them past the question phase, where do you really go on a first date being safe in the pandemic? Do you go back to each other's houses? Do you go out to eat with these limited restaurants now? Do you choose to get takeout food? or What do you do? You can't really be too creative on a first date nowadays with the limitations and stuff out there. So, I mean, Take a I, walk I around, a, around a nice area. <laughs> That's that's when you have to be creative. When you can't be creative, like in your normal way, that's definitely mm-hmm. when you got to be creative. Like you, like you may have to get the door. That's where door dash and Postmates and all them. And I ain't gonna say all them because they ain't sponsoring me right now. So that's when they come in handy. You know what I'm saying? They are right. So, so like, door mates you know, and post dash. Fuck them. A lot mm-hmm. of places. A lot of places now, I know they. If you if you still got that hankering to just go out, they do have like, all right. You you you. If you're sitting here, there's like two or three tables around you that's empty, and somebody else is mm-hmm. in the section. You know, okay. um, you go in there with the mask on. You know, when you sit down, then you can go ahead and eat. But but yeah, you that's when you you be creative. And I mean, sometimes you still, you know, I, you know, the, um, I chill with, we still have like that headache, like, damn, I really want to go out. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm fortunate I'm, I could be in an area like that has a beach nearby and, you know, you, you can be in the beach area and nobody want to be around you anyway. Like that's, that's beach culture anyway. You're not right neck to neck. You're trying to find that mm-hmm. space by yourself. Or whatever. So that's it, it. It's like you just got to be creative. You know, you get your get that one show that you like. You know, you can binge on or whatever. This girl got me on Narcos, and I've been. I've Good it's show. been. I I haven't even. I haven't started right now because season one is season one is good. I haven't watched any other season, but season one was bomb. As as I got older, I haven't been that much of a TV person. But with you being in the quarantine, it kind of forced you to be a TV person. So I find that one show, and I just binge on that pretty much. But yeah, that's one of the things. Not to rant and ramble. I'm- no, you fine. You ask. You're the only one that can answer the question right now until we get to the comments. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, next question. Does a mask make communication in the dating realm difficult? Like, because you barely can understand people nowadays as it is when you regularly talking to them. Now you put a mask on top of that. Like, does that make communication frustrating in a, in a dating realm? I mean, I really don't have to worry about that because I'm around my, I'm around my wife, so mm-hmm. I don't have to wear no mask around her. But in the dating realm, when you're first dating and you're just getting to know each other, of course, it will be a lot of masks. You, you, if you're being safe, you will be wearing your mask and just dating. So, I mean, is that would that mask be inhibiting communication or would it just make it more of an allure? So that that is, um, I would say that would be a question for a person that is more that would be more in a girl's face more often than me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm one of the people that I meet people off of just social networking and just being around the people that I'm around or in the sit in the area that I'm around and they're affiliated with it. Now, with a person that might be more uh, for coming to like just speaking out there with, with with a chick, you know, you know the guy. Hey, hey, shorty with the ass, shorty. Mm-hmm. You know uh-huh. that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Another that shorty with the ass talk channel. Yeah, yeah, that. that <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. Like, I don't know. I think he would probably figure out a way around it or whatever. But I would think nowadays more. You're probably more meeting people off of social media anyway, and doing a lot more FaceTiming before you even meet face to face. You know what I'm saying? So, like. I think that would be the workaround around that. But if you're still just out there, you know, in somebody way or whatever, like, I think, Mm -hmm. I think if you're still doing that, you kind of probably don't even care about what's in the mask, you know, at first, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to see if you can get at it because, but at, but to really answer the question, if I was just talking to somebody with the mask on, especially the way my voice is and my Southern draw from time, time to time and the way I mess, mess up words when I'm talking and I'm trying to say one other thing. Yeah, that's that mask mm-hmm. is going to be in the way. <laughs> I y'all y'all right. seen this. Y'all seen this part. <laughs> it ain't got shit to do with uh, dating, but that shit damn yeah. sure make it hard at the drive through when you forget to take your mask <laughs> off or something like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> they be like, what? What you <laughs> Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. Let me take this off till I get round to, uh, to the window. I oh, want no Lord. cheese. No cheese. I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, they be fucking <laughs> my orders up, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, my next question. Say, hypothetically, this pandemic just goes longer and the virus mutates, you feel me? So it makes dating a little bit more difficult. I know that wouldn't be a top priority thing if that did happen, but just in this just in this realm on this topic. If you could not take your mask off, would you date somebody never seeing the bottom of their face? Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. At some point, if y'all are dating, wouldn't y'all get to a place where y'all are alone and you're not around anybody else? And I'm assuming you've already had the conversation about tests and stuff. Wouldn't y'all just take the mask off then? Yeah. But these are additional first date questions on beginning. Uh, I got, okay, this is all on the and, first and not, date. I got you. Yeah, these are these are dating questions, you. not prolonged into relationship questions. Of course, in a relationship, y'all got closer, y'all y'all done got physical and all the other stuff. But I'm talking about just getting just getting in it. You feel me? Just okay, we dating. I'm out there. I'm meeting different people. You feel me? Like that that round because we still know there's people out there just still trying to dibble and dabble everywhere. They do it in the middle. Doing this thing. You you feel me? So I mean, mm-hmm. like, come on, it's a pandemic. You, <laughs> yeah, it's six degrees of separation. So every one person I've been around has been around six other people. You feel me? So you gotta yeah, look at that. So it could be three people down the line, but that third person may know somebody. Three people over they had COVID, and I don't know. But hey, that that connection right there, I may have. You, you never know. It's shit, you got to be safe these days. Pat, what you gonna do? All right, so hmm, 
if I can only see half of their face. How far in the apocalypse are we? Because if we real deep in the apocalypse, I have no choice but to hit that with the mask on. Like, people have been doing that for, for a long time. I have, a, like, a little Mortal Kombat fan. Oh you need to fuck God. away. Oh, I have no away. choice but to hit that with a mask the, on. Oh, like, man, put that on. shit on a t-shirt, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice but to hit the mask on. Uh, Put the no Spider-Man mask, mask, mask on if you want to start swinging all over. Never mind, never mind. But um, you already boom. got dental down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you now, go. But if we like in regular non-apocalypse times or whatever, now that question becomes to how vain of a person am I to just be real with myself? Or because yeah. Um, in a in a Cameron voice, yo, niggas get cat, uh, catfished every day, B. Yep. Niggas get catfished. There's a whole show for that, you know. Like how how let's see, how lonely was I that month? Mm. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? How 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 amped up of my hormones since I've been that lonely that month? How mm -hmm. often have I been able to be social? around somebody because sometimes it's not even a sexual thing it's just a matter of being social as a human you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if i've been deprived of that you know what i'm saying like those are the things that add up in the matter because you know men make bad decisions when they're horny so yeah yeah <laughs> so it, it, your brain it gets real dumb so mm -hmm. you know you get you you know you start off you start off real vain to ensure yourself for a while but you know after a while the lonely and lonely you to get the more that vain shit go away you start humbling yourself or whatever so yeah. it, it kind of yeah, depends right on that right now though i'm vain <laughs> as shit because i like me because <laughs> so, i like me <laughs> so I, right. yeah i'm gonna have to see your face first man now my Waste last question is a question me. to everybody my last question is an opinion question to everybody in the group, not just Pat. Do y'all feel like men and women are settling down more now due to COVID or are they exploring other single options just choosing to stay by themselves due to this new pandemic we in? Or are they saying, like, fuck it, oh well? Uh, I got two theories on it, but I'm really not 100% sure because most of the people that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, they are in a relationship already before COVID even struck or they were already married. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but what I would think is due to the statistics of like divorce rates and that type of thing going up during this, I would think that there's a lot of people that are actually becoming single during COVID. And then I would assume that the people that were single when COVID started are probably more willing to settle down just because as opposed to where, like Pat was saying, where you get that constant social interactive action before all of this, now you got people that might have been like self-contained or in the house for, if they're a working home person, they might have been like in the house for so long that they just like, well, you know, if I find somebody that I even halfway kick it with, I'll at least ride this out just to have that bond with somebody until it's over and then go from there. So I think it's probably like, the single people that were single are probably more willing to settle now. I don't know what they actually are, but I would assume that just logically they probably would be more. But I think a lot of people like on some on some me shit right now just because they either were not really happy with the person they was with before they got into the COVID and now you done been stuck with this person for a year <laughs> and y'all done got Did you gave me COVID two times? Right. And y'all didn't, didn't really have that bond enough to actually work through them arguments. So you done probably got a lot of women and men that just been like, you know what, fuck this, I'm out. And you then, worked through the mm -hmm. syphilis, but you gave me COVID. No, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Like, I, I, feel <laughs> like, I feel like if anything, this COVID makes it, you, you gonna know if the person is right or not. Cause if you can be quarantined and like, you know, socially distanced with somebody and y'all are spending way more time than you normally would, especially if you got like somebody who used to, y'all used to go on to work and then coming home and, but you done got that time away from each other. If you're now both of y'all at home or something, if you ain't strong, I would, the divorce rate say it's, they, they, a lot of people go into Splitsville. And I would imagine that for people that ain't married, it's even higher just cause it's no legalities there to hold you down. It's more just like, well, if I get tired, I can go. So. Yeah. Uh, 
I, from what I've seen, I feel like it's a lot. I don't know. I, it might be even. I don't know, but I, from what I've seen, as far as statistics go, I've seen a lot of people breaking up, like mm-hmm. pressure, like um, just the pressure of okay, my spouse is um, unemployed right now because of this. He's still like he's having a hard time getting a job, and then like a lot of times. I've seen a lot of financial issues break up people mm. or whatever. Mm. That's a whole other dynamic, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's yeah, that's it's it's a jungle out here, man. Like it's it's I mean, if you put into any aspect of any type of uh, situation where there's like almost that um these the last days apocalypse now type situations or whatever, you got a pandemic, a war, or something like that you start really seeing people go at their instinctual survival nature or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. It, some people survive by um, manipulating. Some people mm. survive off skill, you know, some mm-hmm. people just survive off luck. Like, and you're seeing full fledged like, people using those the way they've been able to survive a lot more, you know, especially mm-hmm. if you're single um, and, and you're you're trying to talk to you try to be social with different people, or whatever. Like it, it's a lot of pressure. It's really like trying a lot of people's relationships. But at the same time, it can build a relationship. So, you know. It's kind of a it, it's kind of a, a yin yang opposite side of the spectrum type thing, and I'm only one person compared to what the statistics tell me. So, but. <laughs> that's real. <laughs> so moving on, you know, I, I I got to tell you what I love and I hate for every week. Whoop. So let's go. Faces love it or hate it. Um, this week yeah, I only got one thing I love, but I got a couple of things I hate. I saw a couple of things on the internet and I was going to say I, I hate domestic violence, but it's more violence towards women. More and more mm. I'm seeing these articles and these news publications about groups of young males putting their hands on women and assault women. Yo. Women don't want, want you to do something for them or women don't want to give their phone number to you. Like, who the fuck are these young men? Who raised these niggas? Where's your father no. or any older man around you? Yeah. Like, how dare you? It's more women out there. Okay, she said no, move the fuck on. Your weak ass individual. Like the lady in Brooklyn, I think it was Brooklyn or mm-hmm. Harlem or one of the boroughs up there. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Yep. And they bitter or some shit. Like, who the fuck? Like, and you think this shit's cool? And I saw some other shit of uh, some dude kicked the lady and slapped her in the hallway or some shit. Whatever the instance is, that's a female, bro. Mm-hmm. That's a yeah. that's a female. If you're gonna do anything, call another female. If you're gonna do something, if you that upset, call another female. Call your female to get her involved. But that's the thing, you either got no female or your female will get washed. And you know that. So you choose yeah. to put your hands on this lady because you that upset and you can't control your emotions as a man. And no you're public not a man, you're still a little too. boy. Yeah, no public. You feel me like that's in the public. Okay. You see, and no one says nothing. No one else does nothing. You, you see this shit, and y'all stand around and laugh and giggle and, and record it. That, that, that's, that's the shit that I'm talking about right there. We, oh, we recorded. We recorded. Like, what the fuck? Step Don't over there and yoke one of them niggas up. Like, if exactly. I'm watching, if I'm there, like that shit ain't even going down. Because as soon as you start getting somewhat aggressive to the woman, like, well, I'm a man, you a man. We can go ahead and have this conversation. All that aggression, we can get it out. But you ain't about to sit there and put your hands on no female mm-hmm. in my face. That's just not I got, I got a mix. We just gonna have to throw them, throw them dick beaters, man. These fists gonna hit the flash. Mm-hmm. I got a mixed feeling about recording because I, I feel like in situations, especially with women, it needs to be one person recorded so they can have that as evidence or, or whatever. Like this person got on me, you know what I'm saying? Now we got visual right here, so we can. If go it's ahead another and, female there, cool, yeah, let her record. But if it's a male in the vicinity and they sitting there taking out their phone. No, nah, no, nah, to, nah. to 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 either not to either not to call nine one one, but to to record some shit, and you're not taking that time to step in or do something that gets this woman help. You ain't shit. Exactly. Somebody nah, should somebody should steal on you for sitting there and not doing anything 
and allowing this. Like that's that's why this shit keeps perpetuating because nobody steps in and actually is an upstander that cares that we just want to watch. Like, shit, like you know, like man, man, I can understand if someone doesn't want to get physically involved because you know about the gun culture, right. but. I'm in the old, I'm, I live in the I, I, I live in the old dominion and, and and I'm a Second Amendment right lover. You feel me? I love my Second Amendment rights. So I mean, at all times, I'm practicing them right. So at any given time, if I'm out and, I, and I'm personally seeing that, if I'm with my wife and I'm lie on that, and she sees me see that, I got daughters. You feel me? Right. That's not the yeah. exa- that's not the example I'm setting. I'm a man. I'm a grown man. And I have daughters. I don't. I don't accept it. I, I, nah, I, that's deplorable to me. I'm sorry. And if anybody accepts that, you're deplorable too. I don't associate that's... with people that put their hands on women in a relationship, not in a relationship. I don't associate with nobody who, if you're involved in domestic violence, you put your hands on a on a woman and, and you have no problem with you. Can, yeah, I'll be her. No, nah, I, I don't fuck with you. If you put your hands on a lady in public because she don't want to do nothing, nothing to do with you, I don't fuck with you. If you put your hands on a woman, if you throw a rock at a woman because you just want to be ignorant, I don't fuck with you. You feel me? Like fuck I, with I you don't if fuck. You uh, there, you nah, want I don't know. Nah. Curse at a woman and do all that because she don't want you. Like yeah, exactly, I don't no, fuck with you. you feel like disrespect mm-hmm. just because you're not getting the response you wanted. Like take that shit. Hell no. Nah. Understand? Hell no. Nah. She's not interested, or she's not trying to deal with you, or she disagrees with you. Whatever it is, we can. If you can't keep it civil, then get the fuck on. Get over yourself. But all man. that, all that, yeah, bitch, and all, all that crazy shit, like, no. Nah. I feel, we ain't jacking I, that I, at I all. Feel, I feel real personal about this because I have, I have sisters, I have, like, female friends. I have not, not, I have a female friend. I'm going to keep her name out of it because I don't want to act like I'm promoting, st- you know, just it, yeah. uh, just in good nature. Respecting the privacy. Absolutely. I saw yeah. her post something and and I think it might have been one of her business partners or this dude pulled a gr- gun out on her and, and shit. And like, like, you. yeah, and I, 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 I commend her bravery for all just, you know, ex- just putting that out there that, mm-hmm. you know, that was happening because it might be another woman that went through something similar. Women got to tell that story. And they got to, you know, I, I, I'm i all for like women saying, hey, I went through this and just to let it, because like, if you are, uh, if you consider yourself a good, decent man or whatever, and you hear the things that, you know, like women say they go through or whatever, it's a fucking shock that there's men out there that's doing shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the bullshit, like, man. That's what I, I was talking about with Chloe and them. Like, like it's a sector of people that are not right, and they how are like that. Not, how can you even think that way? Like, like what is what is the the flaw in your in what is the tweak? What is the glitch in your head to make you think that is acceptable? Like mental health what, is real. Or are you just intimidated that? There is a woman, and she has more power than you. Because that's, that's what I felt like what happened with yeah, with my yeah. friend or whatever. Like she 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 got she made she made her way up to the top. She got her her business going, and uh, he was part of that um, business or whatever. He did bad business moves. She didn't like it, and then he felt some type of way about you know. The but way that's it went. what it always is in these situations. It's the man that already got a bunch of bitch assness and insecurities in himself, which mm-hmm. is why usually the men that are engaged in this type of behavior, they do not try that on people that they know would actually respond in a physical manner toward them or, um, or another man that they know they would have to actually be aggressive with and they can get their ass with. They usually prey on women because they see the woman as being weaker. And what mm-hmm. fucks them up is when the woman is actually not going for that shit, and they, uh-huh. actually de- and they actually verbally defend themselves or whatever the case may be. The man probably get hurt. And now he feel like, well, I'm going to do this because now I'll be in control. It's a control and power thing. And it's, and it's usually dealing with weak niggas that are just bitches from the start. Like they are more- With egos. They are more- mm-hmm. Inflated ego, but your reality is not matching that ego. And you know it in your heart. And now this woman is basically- Expose the piece of that to the world. So now you feel like I gotta go on a rampage. 
bitch. You weak, you weak nigga. Where they go? You out there doing Man. that shit? Please come find me. I, 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 I'll, I'll take all that smoke. Just Next die. thing on face, face hates to love it. Is another thing I hate. I hate those people who are living to please other people. Amen. You're not living your life. You're not living for you. You're living I'm somebody not. else's dream. I'm you not. got to live for what makes you happy. If you're only living to make somebody else happy, what are you living? Because you're if that person right. you're living to make happy dies and that person passes away or something, you're lost. You 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 do you don't know you, you don't know what to do for yourself. You don't know what to what's gonna make me happy. This person's gone. I just live to make this person. No, live each day for you. I can understand you got kids. My kids, my priority. I love my kids. But yeah, you still got to do for you too. Because if you don't do for you, you can't do for nobody else. That's right. Don't live your life for somebody else. You got to live for you, and then you can help somebody else. Once again, put yourself first. And then everything else can follow. So, and only do what you think somebody else is going to accept and only do what you think somebody else is going to be happy with, you're leaving yourself in a rotten hole. Well, all you're going to do is fester. Fester in your unhappiness and revel in someone else's glee. Don't be that person, man. Put yourself first and make your happiness shine through it. Help other people find their happiness. Because if you ain't happy, you can't help nobody else be happy. Yeah. You know what, Next. Face? You know what, mm-hmm. Face? I'm What's sorry, that? man. You're absolutely right. I need to change my life. I need to be for myself. You no, know, you know that that meme with Dexter with the uh with the African hat and he looking at Umar like I failed you. <laughs> we we're gonna, we're gonna replace Ooh, with Dexter. We're gonna, you talking about the serial killer Dexter or Dex, Dexter from Dexter, Dexter Laboratory? Laboratory. Dexter Laboratory. What? Where is this meme at? I'm going to find that meme. I don't know what you're you. talking about, but this I'm gonna is find, a, I'm gonna that sounds find hilarious. That. What we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to replace Umar with face to face, <laughs> and I'm going to put Dexter right there like, I failed you. Oh! <laughs> oh, man, please give me that meme, bro. That is hilarious. I'm going to find that meme for my, you, man. <laughs> my next thing I hate from this past week is Especially with this dumbass snow is driving in bad weather because a mm. lot of motherfuckers out here do not know how to drive and they everywhere yeah. with the slightest inclination of any bad weather people are all over the road 36 accidents here 10 accidents here people are flipping over over a few inches of snow slow your ass down oh don't drive and drive cautiously or, or just stay your ass at home you feel yeah. me if, if you see, well, damn, I know I can't really drive on the snow. Well, don't drive in it. Yeah, don't, put else else in don't put somebody else's life in danger. Don't put somebody else's life in danger because you, you want to be out here. Specify. You can't be out here. You know it. You know <laughs> you it. You can't be out here. You know it. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. <laughs> now, next thing that gets on my nerves, and it happens quite often to me especially because it's always that one thing I, choose, I, I, I always forget. Is having to drive back to the store after you got home and realize, damn, the thing I went to the store for is the <laughs> thing I'd have forgot. We all go through it. And I need that. Yeah. So I got to go back to the store now. Because if I don't go back to the store, I'm not going to be able to do the thing I want to do with that thing I forgot. <laughs> <Store. laughs> yeah. You feel yeah. it, and you feel like, and you feel like an asshole the whole time you drive into the store. You go back, and it just so happens you get right back in the same line. You was in, the, oh, you forgot something, huh? <laughs> no, stupid. I, I just like, I, I just like seeing your face. I what, thought we had a think? good bond when you rang me out the first time. You feel me? You feel me? So I figured, hey, I just wait fifteen minutes to come back. No, stupid. Yes, I forgot something. <laughs> now, no, stupid. The thing I love. <laughs> the thing I love from this week. Friendship. You feel me? Talking to my grandmother. And my grandmother gave me a nice little quote. And I'm going to try to see if I can remember it correctly because she doesn't remember where she got it from, but she remembers it on a point. So I'll try to put it together as what she said. So there's toy ships, big ships, and ships ships at sea. But the best ships are friendships between you and me. You feel me? True yeah, friendship. You feel me? Like <laughs> not, I'm saying, you feel me? Like, you, like you really got to look at it on a deep level. You feel me? Like 
friendship, like true friendship, being there for somebody, being true, true and loyal to a friend, is something that's rare these days because everybody is so individualistic and out, everybody's out for themselves. To have friends that's true and loyal to you through thick and thin, when you up and when you down, that's very, very rare. That's true. But those people who do, who are cherished to have, or are blessed, I should say, to have those true people, they could be like, I can call this person any time of the night and I know if I'm really in need, this person will help me. Right. That's a true friend right there. You feel me? Not many people can say they have those. A lot of people can say, yeah, I got a lot of associates or I got a lot of homies. Yeah, but at the end of the day, is your homies going to pick up that phone for you when you call them at 1 o'clock in the morning because you got a flat tire on the highway? Or they were like, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm bundled up right now. Nah, a true friend was like, yeah, man, hold on. I'm going to just tell her I got to go help you because she she know. I'll be there, homie. I'll be right there. That's a true friend. And that's the one thing I love about this week. So that's all the faces, haters, I love it. Yay. I'm gonna take that little poem. Now, like that. Oh yeah, man. Friendship, bro. Now, remember, my remember that song. Remember that song, <laughs> uh something for nothing. Gotta have Gotta something. Have something. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> nothing from nothing. Uh, but nothing from nothing means nothing. Gotta have something. something. <laughs> yeah. You wanna be with me? Oh, <laughs> 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 Uh, my I don't know who topic, that shit, but Eddie Murphy. Mm. Now, my random topic really ain't a random topic. It's just something I wanted to say this week, but we can't build it up because we can all talk about what I'm going to say. So it's just words of wisdom from faith to anybody who needs to hear them or choose to let them resonate with them. You feel me? My first I thing, co- complaining is a luxury none of us can afford. You feel me? Like, especially as black people. We spend too much time saying this and saying that. Oh, wish we, we need this, we need this. Complaining is a verbal luxury. If you want something changed, put action into your feelings. Mm-hmm. Complaining is a luxury. It, 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 we don't need to complain no more. We've had the same complaints for too many years. We need this. We need to do this. We need to do this. We can't do it because, once again, everybody's so for themselves. Who's willing to sacrifice for the us? Yeah. It seems like those times are, are, are come and gone where you can have that unity in the people and we can unite behind the us cause and the revolutionary. Okay, we need this for our people. We're willing to sacrifice. Our, we can go to jail as long as our people getting this. We don't have that Hell these yeah. days. Hell yeah. We, we don't have that. So the mentality as far as we go march, yeah, y'all march and y'all ride and y'all do this and do this and do this and do that. Did anything change? No. If y'all want that real change, once again, look at how change comes. Don't complain about you wanting change. You have to make change happen. Just like with a chemical reaction, you have to put the two elements together. You can't just lay them side by side on two different tables like, if I'm going to have it watch. No, you have to put together your complaints with your actions. Put them on the same table and mesh them together and watch the chemical reaction change. Watch that happen. See, That's I the have, only way anything's going to happen. I got a Ted's quote that goes right along with that. Uh, if you can complain about it, it don't really bother you that bad. Like, you can have a complaint, but when you complain... It can't bother you that bad because the shit that really bothers you that bad bothers you that bad, you do something about it. That piece of paper that's on the floor don't bother you that bad if you just sit there complaining about it. If it really bothers you that bad, you can get up and throw it away. There you go. Are you as simple as that to me? I'm with you. No. My next word of wisdom, never give up, man. Just hit the reset button. Yeah. People may think like, what you mean the reset button? Everybody say life is a game. Yeah, and if you do, if you are into gaming, you know, on your console, you yep. can always hit that reset button if you lose it and go right back to your save point. Hit mm-hmm. your reset button. Start back over. Don't think just because you failed one time, oh, I can't do this. No, try again, my nigga. Like, try. Get up. Try. Even if you Get lost up. your game, try. Save. just start from the beginning you, you and work me? back up there. You'll be all right. There you go. Back, back to the drawing board. Never give up. Because the second don't you see. give up, you, you you try try again. You feel me? I know all the songs tonight, the, bro. The, you the be coming second, out with random shit. <laughs> the second you give up, the second you give up, 
and you choose not to hit that reset button, you've not only given up on yourself, but you've given up on all ambition and potential you possibly could have had. Yeah. Don't give up on yourself. If anything, if anybody else give up on you, cool. But you can't give up on yourself. Don't give up. Just hit that reset button, man, and keep pushing. Big facts. Last word of wisdom. My last word of wisdom. Fuck what they say. Yes, indeed. Straight hey, man, yes. That's a fuck good one what to they end. say. Yep. Fuck, hallelujah. Fuck straight, straight to the point. Fuck, fuck what em. they say. Fuck them, girl. Fuck them. To, to the ultimate. <laughs> whatever they say. Whatever they say. They don't like what you got on. Fuck what they say. Right. People don't like you at work. Fuck what they say. You think the teacher don't like you? Fuck what she say too. As long as you doing what you supposed to do. Chloe Bailey, you know, them people talking shit about you, and you want to just live your life. Fuck what they say. Fuck what they say. Exactly. Fuck what they say. People need more. Who than gives a fuck man. about somebody else's opinion? Who gives right. two shits about somebody else's opinion that don't do shit for you? No goddamn body. Drink it's a big old, cup of fuck. It's an old quote that we used to say growing up, and I'm going to bring it back. What you eat don't make me shit. I mean that. What the fuck do I give a fuck about what you say or your opinion? Fuck what they say, and that's all from Face This Week. I love it. I love it. Fuck what they Round say. of applause. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I might have to put a little applause track right there with a drop mic yeah. sound. <laughs> <laughs> Walk away like Obama did. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about complaining uh face, it kind of made mm-hmm. me think that I think a lot of times with black folk, we seem to just go at it at one way, and really we need to go at it at different ways and different factors, but which each person doing what doing their talent that they're good at you know like if you're gonna you can fight if you're if you're good at finance you know what i'm saying and 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 making businesses you can fight that way you know if Mm -hmm. you're an athlete you can you can kaepernick you know if you you got artists you're a music artist you can sing you know make music or whatever i think um if you're a politician you know you do what you do for the cause you can do that so you can do that unconsciously within just making decisions each day. It's just, it's a lot of factors that go along with it or whatever. Um, but it's, I, I say that also um, with, as far as artists and, and everything um, and just putting things out there in media lately, I, I pose a question. When growing up, how many black shows now, you know, we both, we all of us were well, born in 83. Like, how many black shows do y'all remember, like, off the Classic top of your head? Categorize black shows for me. Like, do you mean as in that had black actors on the show? Or do you mean that it's like actually a black show where it was created and ran by a black person? I oh, would say black cast. it's a predominantly black cast about predominantly black situations. You know, because you have shows with black people on it, whatever, but it's not- 80s, not so much. 90s, I would say, you know, with like Living Single and Martin and Fresh Prince and you had Cosby's and Different World, like Mm -hmm. you had a good amount of the larger shows that like, like you got to think Fox really took off when Martin hit it. Like that was Mm -hmm. really much their whole network and NBC was running stuff because they had the Cosby's and ABC had- uh, Family Matters and like so back then but see, it's a lot of black shows people forget about though it was a lot of forget about black shows or oh, like, like the age black shows the for it, but. Mm-hmm. on every network black shows start the network mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you look at every every network after they put the black show on they get the viewers then the network blows up then they get the other Caucasian shows and the other type of shows mm-hmm. and once they get the mm-hmm. network we are we are the trend starters. You know? mm-hmm. I'm so, so glad. You look at every if you look at every network that has been a black show on that network at one point in time. You have to look at shows like One on One, Sister Sister, mm-hmm. um, oh, Half and Half. Guy. You feel me? Like those shows, Smart Guy, um, My Brother and Me. 
You feel me? Like, hey, so it was like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you can't forget but, about the good, the good, the good shows like that. Like they may have been good kids shows and more targeted towards younger age ranges, but they will show good, good representation of black people. You feel me? Like you ain't always gotta see black people in the hood and people struggling. You can show middle class families who go through their type of struggle. You feel me? So I mean, it gave a different look. So I mean, those are still considered black shows. Mm-hmm. Do y'all remember that episode of my brother and me where I, uh Didi got got in a fight? No oh, shit. Came on the outfit and he was like, <laughs> they they <laughs> I did what you told me to do today. <laughs> he was like, so what happened? I told him, hit me. Hit me. I remember and that. Like, what happened? Alpha and Goo was like, well, what happened then? I got hit. <laughs> <laughs> cue, cue funny music. Where, where, where? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I miss those shows, man. I swear. That's good. So, shit. I, oh. I bring into play, and I'm so glad you brought that all up, Face. I, I'm so glad you brought that all up. That the, the Black show pretty much catapult that network a little bit further, whatever. You may have some white shows. You may have, like, a Married with Children. You may have, like, um, Friends, Martin, Seinfeld. But, boom. But after that, Martin pretty much took over, pretty much. Yep. So... One thing when I was in um, a lot of my uh, mass communication classes or whatever, it was this one one statistic that came up from like the um, I don't know if y'all remember um, familiar with the the Nielsen um, yeah. system or whatever TV they like ratings. the TV ratings and everything. Mm-hmm. They say that the main demographic that watches the most television is black folks. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I really, until I saw that quote, I was thinking to myself, oh, shoot. <laughs> you know, like, is this, you know, like that cognitive dissonance kicked in. Like, because at the same time, I did see a lot of other white shows or whatever. Like, and, but like over the years, you know, I start seeing more and more black faces. Like, you start, like even in, you know, walking around in stores, you know, remember the stores, you would rarely hear like a up-to-date black song. Mm-hmm. Like it, you would, you know, you you hear a bunch of country songs, you hear like that rock song that you've heard from the 80s over and over again and stuff like that. But now like you go into these stores now, you're, you're hearing more like up-to-date songs that may have came out maybe like a year ago or two two years ago, like more often. Like that's because more and more we're becoming the culture. We're becoming like our culture. Mm-hmm. And I do mean black people culture, not African mm-hmm. culture, not melanated people culture, but black culture, black Americans. Mm-hmm. Our culture is now become one of the predominant cultures worldwide. Like you got Asian kids over there that want to dance like us and they literally put they, they got their prisoners dancing the black songs. You know what I mean? Like it's, our culture is cool. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So like you got whole generation now of people that like, that's all they know. Like they grew up and the number one, like you got a generation right now where the number one of the number one pop stars to them is the baby. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, the baby, uh-huh. not little baby, yeah. the baby. So the like baby. when you look at stuff like that, like Megan Thee Stallion is as big as Katy Perry was a few years back. So like mm-hmm. our culture is the the shit. Like even a lot of uh, artists from other races or other cultures, they merge our style into their music to make it pop. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like I think that that's what you're saying is just we are becoming the dominant culture, and because of that, I don't care who you are, whatever you do, if it's something that's for consumerism you got to put out product that matches what the dominant culture is if you want people to buy into it. And that's what we're saying. You got to put them black faces on there because it, it's a lot of people from every race that want to see us out there. Like, it just is what it is. To and me, then, that's my opinion. I can't verify that with no data, or nothing, but I believe that. I'm pretty sure if you found some data, you could verify it. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure because I'm, I'm, I'm just looking up for the topic in general. Like I've been, st- like I was going to go through a lot of stats or whatever, but like just in just general talk, and then you just think about 
the the types of black media, the types of black faces and situations and concepts that's caught up and the way it's changed from being some stereotype that a non-black person sees a black person as to being straight from a black person and, and putting out what they see black culture as and the, and the beauty, of, beauty of that or mm. whatever, like mm -hmm. just that change or whatever. So, and I'm so glad y'all brought up Martin and his reign while being on Fox because that brings up this topic that we brought up before just casually, but now I'm bringing mm -hmm. it back up, mm -hmm. which is Fox Soul. And it, the launch was basically uh, <laughs> January of this month. I'm so glad uh, we're talking about January Fox of last, January of last month, because it's February now. So, um, I, and it just, I don't, now, if it was the 90s and they came mm -hmm. out with Fox Soul, you know, of course, the, the technology would have had to jump extremely, you know, to even for, for Fox Soul to even be brought up. Or whatever, and mm -hmm. you got the Martins, and I didn't know that much about Rupert Mur Murdoch or whatever, and there wasn't a whole like damn near twenty years of Fox News. Pretty much, I probably wouldn't be that suspicious of Fox Soul mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it it's looking like from what I'm seeing, you know, they're interviewing black faces and black culture and everything. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing in the statements, whatever, when they come out where um, Fox has always had a um, a black community of a black viewership, pretty much. Yeah. Like, and, and I mean, they have, you know, of course, because, you know, like we said, the actual before, network. Yeah. Fox News, not so much, but the actual network of Fox, like their TV. Exactly. Or, yeah. But it's still under the umbrella of Fox. And, and what we confirm um, the last, past few weeks. Rupert Murdoch still he runs still the business. On. Oh yeah, through it. So that's why I feel so suspicious of Fox Soul. Like, like as far as like what con content. So and then this is my thing. Like, even if everything they put out there, content wise, is positive and actually showing black people in a positive light. I'm mm -hmm. still suspicious mm -hmm. of it because it's still a racist getting money off of black positivity <coughs> and still yep. has mm -hmm. the counterculture as the mainstay, you know? Yeah. Like, that's where I feel like, like now it's like, all right, you, you're, you're putting out a positive black image or whatever, but is this secretly funding the counterculture that's against the black image, like right, right. that we're trying to portray. Um, yeah. and, I mean, now it's it's just the 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 first couple of months. It's the first month in a week that it, this came out. Not even that. I probably just a month since mm -hmm. this came out. So I still feel like it's still early to see. We don't, you know, I I haven't even experienced enough. I only seen off of what. Um, the interviews and the articles that I've seen that what they've been trying to portray out or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like we still need to watch that Fox company that owns Fox Soul or whatever. But oh, yeah. how do y'all how do y'all feel about that? I agree. I think the content that they're putting out, if it was on a black owned network or if it was on a network that was ran by people who really have our best interests at heart, I would be less skeptical of it because a lot of the content is actually positive and they do have mm -hmm. like real conversations and they have the conversations that like we need to have, but they have them in a very respectful way. Like I like, I, it, they have decent content, mm -hmm. but I do wonder as their numbers pick up and as more black people start to watch what type of messaging is going to end up getting pushed down because I mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of like the, the old trap of we'll give you something, we'll let you build up the, the numbers, and then we'll start to push our agenda through that using you as a conduit, like you putting you as a face of it so it don't seem like it's coming from us. It seems like something that you're, like, you're, like that you're giving to your people so then you can have more influence. So I definitely take everything that goes on there as a, with a grain of salt, but 
Yeah, it's just the same old shit, man. You know, like, do we even need do that? Do us right to make now? you money? Do we need a fossil? This, we need like in, we need a this, platform like that. Just maybe yeah. not ran by them. I think we yeah. need to really stop looking at these major corporations for what we need, and like really take to the internet. Like, you can make your own, basically, TV channel on the internet now. And get paid mm-hmm. from it and all of that, and have complete creative control to where you are completely controlling the narratives and the messages that are going out to your people. And it's coming from a place of love as opposed to a place of exploitation or, you know what I'm saying, trying to manipulate. So I think that I like what Fox Soul, as far as the people who are actually on it, like the on air talent yeah. are trying to do. Yeah. My 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 skepticism is always going to be a little off when not even white people but just people who are not coming from a good moral place but coming from more of a place of where the dollar is everything. Mm-hmm. It's always going to make me skeptical cuz I know that at any point the integrity can just be dropped because you're not worried about the integrity. You're only worried about making it profitable. It, it was just like what you're saying now like Black culture is the mainstream culture, so they have no choice. But and they exploit it. it. They got. They got. It. It's like a product to them, as opposed to like, this is really what we live. This is coming from an authentic place. Nope. It's just there. It's just like a some on the shelf, a can of food or something. Like, hey, this we pushing this week. Come back. Come back. And then, and then I want people to realize that they're late. They waited to everybody else prove that. Black culture is the main thing that's pushing media right now mm-hmm. to bring out something. You wait till 2021. 20, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you absolutely right. What say you face about it? I agree with you on this fuck so shit. Um, <laughs> I do like the people they have on I do like the people they have on the show. Um it gives some of the older black talent uh, mm-hmm. uh, a platform to to view and be incorporated in today's market. Um, but still, they're funded by who they're funded by. Um, I can view it from the people who are getting paid by them. Viewpoint, hey, shit, fuck who it is. I'm getting paid. I got I to gotta get my bills paid. Yes. But if we're looking at it as a unified group, as far as what's positive for us, anybody who can publicly say they don't like us as a community or as a whole. You say you don't like black people. Even if you employ black people, you're doing that for a quota for your company as a whole because every company, um, every public company has a quota where you have to have a certain amount of different cultures in your company. So Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. not stupid. Um, You can play like the people are stupid, but we're all not stupid. Ignorance is bliss, and a lot of people play that way for people to get them to expose their true selves. Well, voila, here you go. Mm -hmm. Um, Oxo, thank you for the content. Thank you for the employment of Black people. Um, But first, the name Fox Soul, why everything Black got to be sold. I mean, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, I mean, like, what the fuck, like, there's nothing else y'all could name with Fox Souls. They know it's for black people. Fuck that. Yeah, you know where the marketing watch. was for that. I don't. I, I don't watch it just because of the name. When I saw Fox Soul, I was like, I'm not even watching that shit. I was like, no, because the name. Like, come on, man. Are you stereotypical saying that that's for black people? Or it's black for the people Soul Brothers. It's for the Soul. For the Soul Brothers. I ain't no Soul Brothers. You feel wait. like fuck that shit. I'm, 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 I'm I'm me, damn it. Don't give me no fuck. So give me some news. Give me some real unopinionated news. Give me some factual news that I can draw my own opinion from it by the facts you provided. That's news, regardless of what color you come from. I don't care because in the media, you keep trying to separate black topics from general topics. No, don't do that because the topics of the black people and the plight of the black people that's a topic for everyone to be aware of. So don't yeah. just put it on Fox Soul and talk about black issues on Fox Soul. No, put that on Fox News. Make that this this Fox. Get rid of Fox Soul and just incorporate that into Fox News. Bring them, mm. bring those personalities you have on Fox Soul onto just the Fox Channel. Period. Get rid of Fox Soul. Incorporate it. You want basically, basically, you got segregation on Fox on on Fox. 
Because you got Fox and you got Fox wow. Soul. So have y'all incorporated back went back and incorporated segregation onto your channel? Or we're gonna talk about all the black stuff right here or everything else we talk about right here? No, it's no different. That's because cool. of, because of the Caucasian no, no. issue. Because and and my day, I don't live in an all black neighborhood, and it's very rare that you're gonna find a totally all black neighborhood because it's one of different days. culture every, everywhere. You feel me? So mm-hmm. why is my issue different than everybody else's issue? Sure, I have my own issues. Sure, I do. But everybody needs to be aware of the issues my culture faces, so they can be aware. So when we're complaining about it, they will all be just complaining again. No, be aware of what we're facing. It's like we're aware of what the Jews are facing. We're, we're aware of what every other culture in America faces because yeah. it's put in our face. But as soon as we choose to say something, it's something though different. Dog, keep complaining. No, motherfucker, we're pointing out what's going on. We're attempting to give you communication mm-hmm. before physication because once it gets physical, it ain't no more words to be said. Physication, I like we, that we, one. Put that we, on a shirt. We, we, <laughs> because, <laughs> like, we, we've exacerbated the words for you. Now you have these hands. Yeah. Listen to us while we're trying to talk to you. Make our issues the same as everything else. Sure. You got the black culture, but it's so appropriated. Why try to separate it? Make it mainstream so that they can see what we're tuning in for. <laughs> Don't make it okay. They're tuning see in. See why their kids no. friends and all them like, hey mom, you can't talk about them like that. Exactly. My friend is like, exactly. and you ain't gonna talk about like that. Like, maybe they would exactly. understand. Yeah. That's a real point. I, I, and, I, and I know I'm going to face a lot of criticism because, oh, you saying get rid of Fox. So I damn sure am because if you look at it from my viewpoint, you're segregating the channel. The things we talk about, sure. everyone listens to. Whatever black people, the culture we invent, everyone internationally wants some of, like you said. Yeah. So, okay, I can understand that you won't separate but equal. No. I want what everybody wants. Peace, love, and happiness. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yes. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Regardless of what color I am. Like I tell everybody, if you was blind, you had no color of what race I am if you were blind. Let everybody carry our ideals as the blind man. Because you have no sense of what color no one is if you are a blind man unless someone tells you what color they are. True. Yeah. Your sight is what your sight is what brings you racism. Your sight is what gives you your belief. If you were blind, had the shit you believe in, you wouldn't believe in because yeah. you're seeing it. Yeah. You feel me? A lot of shit is based on surface value. Then you got to depend on your other senses. I don't fuck with this person because they smell like this. Go off that. Don't go off, I don't fuck with this person because they look like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Come on, Smell yo. yourself. Do you go? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I did not expect that in the part. That was funny to me. <laughs> oh, fuck with him because of how he smell. <laughs> Funk ass. Go ahead, smell yourself. Words. Funk. There you go. Fuck racism. Let's get into funkism. But <laughs> I was going to say these last things and then I'm going to go. But this, this is where I feel like the result will be. Because what's going to happen is they're going to try to put in a conservative person on Fox Soul or whatever. Yeah. Fox Soul is yeah, going to be on. the token black friend or whatever. Like, or And if Fox Soul doesn't achieve the numbers that they want them to achieve, they could use that as, well, we try to do black culture, but these are the numbers that pops up. That's you know, exactly what I was alluding to, like, it's going to yeah. be good content until mm-hmm. it either doesn't make the money that they thought it was, or it does make the money that they thought it was, and then they realize, okay, now is our opening to start putting the pushing our agenda. Our shit. Yeah, and and I ain't tripping on no conservative shit. Like, right? I'm cool with an alternate viewpoint, but it's the radical conservatives that are against get other cultures and other races that I'm worried about. And then. And then it, the people, the first creators that there, they're going to realize it's going to be like the, um, the, the Fox Soul is going to be their rappers, man. They're going to they're going to realize that, hey, I'm actually putting myself and all this content out and they own this shit. 
I could go ahead somewhere else and I can own this shit and and I don't have to put up with this bullshit that I'm dealing with from this company because you know they're probably dealing with some type of bullshit. They don't got full creative control. Tyler much. Perry and Shonda Rhimes need to get need to make their own network. Uh huh. And let and and all of the black content creators and and on air personalities to go there. Yep. I trust Shonda. Exodus. I trust Shonda. It'd be the Pan African media. <laughs> but see, you couldn't do that. You can't do that because what they would end up happening with all the gigantic revenue they would be streaming to that one network, the government could sue them for putting a monopoly mm-hmm. on that on that market. You feel me? You gotta you gotta look at the big game. You feel me? Look at the big game. They gotta on get monop- Netflix, Netflix and Hulu and all of them still will have their own black <laughs> content that they already got. But you you can literally just take them people that's on Foxhole right now, ship them over there to Shonda Rhimes and them. And then let them make their same content that they're currently making, and it would go, and it wouldn't lose its integrity over time. Because again, I trust Shonda, man. She mm-hmm. all right with me. She, she be looking out. Well, to end this off, man, or whatever, I'm gonna bring in because this also has to do with Fox. Also, before all this, the the popularity of Fox News now. Happy Black History Month. A moment in black superhero his uh, superhero history. I could have said that a lot better. <laughs> That's all right. We know your we know your tongue be tap dancing all across your teeth. We, we know we were we, 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 we yeah, it. it should be all over the place. <laughs> it's all good, um, chaps. Let me use my narrator voice. Now a moment in black superhero history. <laughs> Sound like a Dave Chappelle <laughs> All right. Now we got to give it up for this one black superhero that has set it off for all the superhero movies that we have before. It would not... Meteor Man? No. <laughs> <laughs> but we're close. We're close. And I still enjoy that movie as, <laughs> in general. But and Robert Townsend is a legend in media. Facts. Robert Big Townsend fact. is a fucking legend in media. Oh, yeah. He's a pioneer and he, he led the way for a lot of us. Big but an, another pioneer that it led away for all these glorious and some slack superhero movies that have nothing to do with Batman because Batman is his own thing. Blade. If it was not for oh, Blade, yeah. we would not have any of the Marvel movies. We wouldn't even have all the X-Men movies off to the side. Um, and oh, okay, I'm not going to blame Blade for like the Fantastic Four movies at all, but we wouldn't have any of these movies if it wasn't for the success a blade. It, it, we knew what it was as soon as he said, "Motherfuckers is always trying to ice skate up hell," and then kicked that shit in this dude's head, and it blew up. That, that mm-hmm. right there, is a moment in black superhero history. And the simple fact that Blade is not even that popular of a character yeah. compared to he others. was one of the obscure Jones when they made that. Mind you, they made Captain America movies before. Those were cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. They made Fantastic Four movies. I think yeah. they might have attempted an Iron Man movie before they and did. a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. But and you know, the only movie that really actually Rob was those 80s Superman movies and Batman. Mm-hmm. And Batman landed mm-hmm. into the 90s or whatever. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until they just picked, you know what? They people like vampires. This guy's black. We're Fox. We use black people all the time for money. Let's put them on in there with Marvel and let's get something going. Whatever. And they probably did mm-hmm. not expect the actual turnabout of money that they actually got of it. But mm-hmm. we also got to praise Wesley Snipes. Yes. But actually, yes. like, I, Wesley is I, the reason we have the MCU right now. Thank you, Wesley. Yes. You underappreciated yeah, like, him. <laughs> Wesley Snipes mm-hmm. is one of the greatest freaking actors of all times like yeah. in in general and then you know for a person to of his caliber then he decides i'm not only going to do was this superhero movie history. yeah like i'm not only going to do this superhero movie it's an action movie i am going to embody this guy like i can't you know um i'm gonna butcher his name god i'm gonna butcher his name but um marshala ali is to be the, yep. Mar- Mar- Sir, yes Forgive me. I apologize. I hope um, I'm saying the right shit. I just know yeah. <laughs> I made it sound good. But I yeah, like- because 
He's an awesome actor. I loved him in Luke Cage. Yeah, he'll be. Um, Cottonmouth. Oh, yo, my God, bro. Yo, every role that he's been in, like, He's he a monster, him. yo. But, boy, Wesley Snipes has set the bar yeah. very fucking high. Like, but if anybody could do it, I believe it's him, pretty much, yeah. because he, he made me actually look up Cottonmouth. And Wesley gave him his <laughs> blessings, so that say a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel yeah. like if he could do that for a non no name villain like Cottonmouth, he would probably be the prime subject for Blade in this situation because basically nobody really knew about Blade unless you watch the Spider Man, you know, animated series. He came up there at one time, but after that, you probably didn't know nothing about it outside mm -hmm. of you know Spider Man head and comic book mm -hmm. um, heads pretty much, but. That's my moment in black superhero history. Whatever. And and stop trying to ice skate uphill. That's what Wesley Snipes <laughs> taught me. <laughs> that just sounds stupid anyway. Anyway. Um, right. From a milk. moment in black superhero history to one of the moments of a black supervillain. <laughs> Tonight it's time for our Umar Weekly Update, guys. Umar Johnson. Dr. Umar Johnson. All right, so he's had a few things going down. Um, first of all, he was in, he was on live, he was live on IG in Philadelphia. At a, now, this is where his hometown is. So you would expect this place to be lying outside around the corner, people banging down the door before it even happens. From the video I saw, it was empty. He looked like he was in the corner of somebody's like little boutique. Like, you know how you go, they have like, sometimes they have like the um, African boutiques where it's not very big. It's like a little small storefront, but they got like, you know, they um like, your, you can get your shea butters and you can get your incense and your black soaps. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like African, African pride stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked like one of one those had a little table in the back and he's sitting in there in the back. It's like four people in there. Nobody's paying him any mind. He's all loud on the IG line. And now one person in there paying him no mind. They in there buying earrings and, and little trinkets and necklaces and buying onks. They ain't paying this dude no mind. But this the most requested scholar in his hometown. And that, that's what it looks like. First of all, Umar, why don't you ever be in a real venue? I've seen authors do book signings. They're usually in a convention center or a bookstore, you know, because they usually are reputable enough to have those relationships. How are you the most requested and you're always begging somebody to let you in their barber shop or they little they little corner store or they little heated tent outside in front of they they, they little food rest like I don't understand it. Can somebody please one of you Martians? I ain't I know y'all ain't gonna answer none of the real questions. Can somebody just tell me why the hell this dude ain't never got a venue? I don't get it. <laughs> them people won't pay him no mind because real conscious and woke folk don't be looking for the attention seekers like that. You know, Thank they pay their mind, they keep to themselves, and they know everything is smoke and mirrors. So. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Uh, the only other recent videos directly from him. Um, I saw one IG Live. He has slowed way down on his IG Live presence. Like, and that's the main place where he posts his little individual videos. He done slow way down on that. He had one other one and he's laying in the bed just talking to some Italian and Mexican lady about dealing with Italians who may be racist. Have no idea what either of these two videos I just named. Still, I'm gonna always bring it back to this because this is my only gripe with Umar. What the hell does this have to do with the school <clears throat> or teaching all black boys? Waiting on that answer, Umar. Now, speaking of Vox Soul, the next thing I see from this dude is, uh, is him on uh, this lady's show. I can't remember her name, but it's him on a panel talking about child support. Mm. Now, let me first off say, as I always say, I don't feel like Umar is just some dude that's stupid. When he speaks on things, especially about education or things that, of this nature or like systematic things, he's not crazy on that like he he makes sense so he was speaking very well and making some good points about child support but the whole time i'm watching this hour long show 
Huh. I keep trying to figure out how the hell do you have all this wonderful shit to say about child support? Yeah, you are behind on yours and have not ever been seen with your children since you've come out in 2010, 11. Not one, not one, hey, this is my daughter and she coming to support me. Not, hey, this is me on Sunday getting my visits in. Not, like even, even your actual online court records show that you are not even paying to help facilitate for this young lady either of them any of your kids i'm sorry it is so hard for me to watch you preach about some shit that i know for a fact you are not doing now if you were somebody talking about this and you used to be a deadbeat and now you have reformed cool everybody makes mistakes people got to grow <laughs> people got to change but i hear you talking about child support all the time Uma. where the hell are your kids do you know hey. where your kids are? Hey, hey, Tiz. Hey, Tiz. He like, um, he like that girl we, we were talking about on our first, you didn't ask us, but live show, when she was talking about, I got six kids, but they don't stay with me. <laughs> He's the male version. Where the hell that. are your kids, Uma? <laughs> where your kids, Uma? <laughs> now, <laughs> the next thing I saw this week is from King Kong Crazy. He had a guy on who has literally said that he will give $1,000 straight up cash money to FDMG. And all Umar has to do is display his degrees. He don't have to go nowhere. He don't have to do nothing. He don't have to sign nothing. He don't have to do nothing. He just got to show his degrees. Now, for somebody who's on Instagram every day or he's online every day posting a little post where it. It's a random picture that has nothing to do with nothing. And then every time the whole caption is P.O. Box, da, 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 FDMG Academy, make all checks and money orders payable to cash app, cash app, PayPal, PayPal. You mean to tell me you turn it down a thousand dollars to show the degrees that you cl claiming that you supposedly have? No response or reaction has come from Umar yet. He a college dropout skit. Yes. <laughs> now for the, the, the big bombshell for me, because I up until this point, I thought it was somebody trolling Umar. I really did. I didn't think this was real. But this lawsuit that I talked about a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I'll get back to y'all, give y'all love information. Well, the court documents have been sent to me and I have read them, and this is a real deal, a hundred percent legal court filing against Umar. Um, shout out to anti-Afros Bengalis for being so gracious enough to uh, send me these documents. Um, so I read through the Second Amendment to the lawsuit uh, that is filed against Umar. And I'm going to just give y'all some of the highlights. So it's filed by a man named August Archibald. Now, the funny part about this is this is the Second Amendment, a Second Amendment to this lawsuit because the First Amendment was just about Umar and his, his alleged scamming, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now they had to add more to it because after they filed the initial lawsuit, because no one knows who August Archibald is, they're blaming all of the, all of Umar supporters and Umar are blaming and saying that it's all of these different YouTubers that have been making content on him. So they done claimed it was Lennon Honor. They done said it was anti afro Gallis. They done said it was this person and that person and this. Apparently it's none of them because all of these people are saying, I ain't got nothing to do with this, but it's crazy that it's happening so the second amendment in the suit archibald says alleges that umar has been frauding the people he said that he donated to umar himself and was never given any information or updates as to where his money was being spent or where it was which is the same thing the froster said uh last week on their podcast they sent the money in i'm a lawyer donor i'm supposed to get this information and nothing comes you basically just get ghosted um Next, it then says that Umar has collected between one to three million dollars in donations. And they have pictures showing this house in DC, this luxury apartment in DC that's worth 1.9 million dollars. And they are alleging that that is what Umar has used this money for to fund his lavish lifestyle in DC. And to fund something called Day University. Which is some type of I don't know. It's supposed to be some type of online school or something that Umar does. 
It's Amen. not accredited. It's not accredited. And I have not seen or heard from any testimonials or anybody who's actually a part of this university or has went there and studied this curriculum and come out on the other side. I haven't heard shit about that. I thought so that I was some. Hell that I thought that was some made up name. He he was feeling himself one day and just did a hotep name, call himself Uncle Ifa e- Tunde. Well, whatever. he claims but, to be a part of the Ifa religion from uh, West Africa, so I'm assuming that it's a playoff of that in some way, or it's a derivative of that. But I want to know where this school. I'm gonna look that up. Cause these, wh- wh- how, how, so you got a school already. Well, why can't we get the black boys into that school? Oh, is this not a real universe? Like, I don't know what this is. And this is kind of my first time really hearing a lot about this. Like I've heard mention of it, but I thought it was just something that he was saying he might do. I didn't realize it was actually a thing. And he didn't got people to sign up for Ifa Tunde University. God bless America. Now, the lawsuit also gives dates, screenshots, and other receipts that allege that Umar has been threatening his detra- detractors, encouraging his followers followers to dox and seek out the personal info of these detractors and then using that personal info to make false claims of them for false claims against them. They also gave transcribed quotes from Umar's videos in which he states he wants to fuck up different YouTubers who make videos about his family. Wow. Bring it on, motherfucker. Bring it on. Yes. You know these videos about the about the Goonie Goons and the pull-up squad and the ski man squad and all that. They got the transcribed shit of his own words saying this. So Voltron and the mighty oh, Morphin I don't, Power Rangers. It's some of this stuff he might whip it out, but that threatening and that doxing, I don't see how he's gonna get out of that because there's literally a plethora of videos where he's saying, get me that person's information. I want y'all to go pull up on them and go to this person. Mm-hmm. He even doxed and gave out the personal information of his uh one of his one of the mother of his children and told everybody to go to her 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 mama's restaurant and harass them. So Whoa, that's gonna be a tough down. one to get out of Umar. Calm down, Jim Jones. Calm down. And this is where the plot thickens, because now Umar has a little squad. So the lawsuit also goes so far as to name and give receipts for the alleged Umar followers Shakim Ra and Poetic Flacco for their involvement. In, that's their names. Sound like a mixtape. They're two different YouTubers, but they both like heavily support Umar and they've been involved in like researching and co- and pulling and finding people's personal information and putting it on the internet so people can like harass them and stuff. So he ele- like the lawsuit named Shaquem Ra and Poetic Flacco for their involvement in doxing mm-hmm. people who speak out against Umar and for cyberbullying these people. Shaquem Ra uh, is also a, alleged to be a scammer in the vein of Umar, as he has a school mm. entity called Amin Ra University. Which, which he again, made, he, he made and, the name up through a Wu-Tang um, name. <laughs> bro, That's what it's This like. all sounds like some, this all say every week when I read this shit, Amin, I Amin really Ra. feel like this is, this can't be like, this is not real. You but he got hotel? Amin Ra, yes. He got Amin Ra University, which supposedly teaches meta nature and supposed magic spells. Now this yeah, school, when you look it up, Shaquem Ra, his my life's reputation is like a two something because so many people got scammers and scam reports under his name. And mm. if you look up Amin Ra University, it also comes up as a lot of scam work. Um, Shaquem Ra has claimed that Lennon Honor is the person behind this lawsuit, despite Lennon claiming otherwise several times. And because of this, Shaquem Ra is alleged to have called for his viewers to levy false claims of welfare fraud on Lennon Honor to destroy Lennon's life and reputation. Shaquem went so far as to get quoted saying he wants to communicate with Umar and give him the details on how to bring Lennon Honor's YouTube channel down. Oh man, these folk here, they smartest, they the smartest dumb folk I've ever seen. I think I got an inspiration for a new supervillain now. Bruh. (laughs) <laughs> Uma and Shaquem Ra and Poetic Flacco. Uh, now, this is only the Second <laughs> Amendment of this lawsuit. So I imagine that the initial fi- filing and First Amendment to this lawsuit are probably even more dense and detailed accusations because, you know, they don't really go as deep in the amendments as they go because they, they already mm-hmm. got the original filings. But I'm assuming this is just the tip of the iceberg that I even got the documents of. Now, Nate, this shit is crazy. 
on top of the Second Amendment to the lawsuit, AAS was so willing and so gracious enough to send me also a copy of the judge's filings on this. So I still was like, well, maybe this, maybe these are fake documents. Somebody done put out there and they catfishing everybody with them. Nope. Judge Milton Young from Philadelphia, black man, black judge, right on Milton. Uh. He has, is presiding over the case and he released his uh, judicial orders, which ordered the plaintiff, August Archibald, to either enter, either file a third amendment to the complaint, which actually puts all of their stuff together because in the second amendment, they start with most of Umar's stuff, but then they also start alleging Shaquem Ra and Poetic Flocko of things. So basically the judge is saying, you can amend this one more time and compile all of your filings into one lawsuit where you're naming each of them as defendants or within 30 days, the second amendment that's currently on file will be the official document used. And that's what he will use to proceed with the court proceedings. So uh -huh. this is definitely gonna be a continuing developing story as this lawsuit actually gets in the way. So we got about 30 days before we find out the next piece. But Uma, my brother, God bless you, sir. I hope that you get the help that you need. I hope that you have find the integrity somewhere to either come out and either stop bullshitting around and get this school going. Because the walls is closing in, champ, quick, man. Like, when you watch just everything that's happening, like, you got a lot of his supporters starting to kind of flip-flop. Like, one of his biggest supporters was on one of his was on a channel that be full of people who don't like Umar. And she was on the panel there the other night. So like, <laughs> you can see like, even his supporters is like, man, this shit getting a little too heavy. So hey, more to I come have... on this lawsuit as details continue to emerge, man. I'm gonna open I up gotta... to y'all before I get into this, the last do you, piece. Do you think there's people just get into the flock so they can see what's going on and then just, then, then exposing stuff or whatever and then I was also going to say um, that name, August Archibald, like to tell you the truth, if I heard that, I'd probably think that name was fake too. So uh, I'm, that's <laughs> how I think some of the people went at, but I don't know, man. I, I, it, the way well, this is fake, that's going to come out too. Cause once this lawsuit kicks off, real names is going to be placed in some court documents. So whoever it is, I think it's that unique enough to, to basically, be a real name or whatever. It's just that's one of those names you just don't ever expect. This now, this speech. is what I think to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Watching Lennon Honor about maybe a month ago, he was on his live stream and he was basically saying, There's some stuff going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to still cover Umar's content, but I'm going to watch how I say things because I want to make sure that I don't cause any problems. He also was saying that a lot of his information that he knows about Umar, because he was the first one that said Umar was actually homeless and was living with his mother and mm. didn't have his own place. Well, a lot of this information is getting fed to him, he said, from people who are in Umar's inner circle or who were very mm. close to Umar. So my theory is that while and Umar and all these people are going against these YouTubers that are just making content on Umar, I think it's really one of his supporters that's filing this lawsuit. And when this shit pop off, it's going to be somebody that we would never guess. It's going to be like somebody that we've seen in one of the videos mopping Ooh. up in the school. So I, I got a feeling that it's somebody that's Plot really thickens. Umar that's going to do this. Um, and then the last thing I saw this week from Umar, uh, Dusty Don. So Don is a former employee of Umar that was like basically like a groundskeeper for the school. It was like cutting the grass and pulling vines out and like doing little small maintenance work. He was the one that I told y'all about that um, had said that Umar owed him $3,000 because he was bringing Umar's clothes into the school a while back. Mm. Well, this dude pulled up on Umar's book signing and security wouldn't let him in. Uh. Umar better watch his back, man, because like he's making a lot of enemies with his <laughs> And the and the threatening folk and the I want not, my check giving people that money like I'm really getting all bullshit aside I'm getting worried for Umar's life because at some point uh -huh. you, you keep taking people money and saying that you're gonna give them information and then basically ghosting them and stuff like people I grew up in the hood man I seen people die over five dollars man so you taking money from folk 
that's just not a safe way to move out here, man. Especially not these days where people are going nuts with guns. Like people. And you're from Philly. One of the cities that you're supposed to know better. So I just, you know, Umar, please get your shit together, champ. Um, Come on out, say you a real, say that you just a YouTuber who like to talk about Afrocentric stuff and talk about, like, just come out and tell the truth about whatever's going on, champ. Because I see you either getting harmed in some way, forced to harm somebody else, or behind bars if you don't come clean, come clean soon. Because this shit, like, is escalating so fast. Like, we literally started in November, and since first Uber update to now, like, it's like every week some shit get realer. And his sphere of influence is getting smaller because he's 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 not making as much. I think Instagram or somebody might have some type of a block or something on him where he can't go mm. live. It, it's something, but I've definitely seen his internet activity drop off go tremendously down. outside of just like pictures that he's posting. So, Uma, get it together, champ. I, I don't even know what else to say to you on that one, man. Face, you, you got would. anything you want to uh, say on it before I go into uh, the segment you asked me for? Actually, I do. Now, I was watching the Umar video earlier, and while he is articulate, and when he's speaking on black issues, he do hit, he does hit on several topics, but none of the topics he hits on are new topics. None mm-hmm. of the rhetoric he retorts is new. Mm-hmm. It's just that he's a new black face who has a the doctor in front of his name. Mm-hmm. So it commands a certain amount of respect. So when black people hear an intelligent or what seems to be an intelligent individual speaking mm-hmm. to That's their fun. plight, mm-hmm. they're instantly to follow. Oh, this this brother for us. Oh, this brother's smart. He can talk too. Oh, yeah. Once again, yeah, everything that glitters, everything that glitters ain't gold. You feel me? Yeah. He says the right thing. Don't be so to pull it Don't be so willing dreams. to follow. Don't be so willing to follow. I was reading his comments. And a lot of people, I believe Dr. Umar, I believe I I follow Dr. Umar. What are you following? What are you believing in? You Where believe you in him in, 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 in Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't see it. I I don't understand it. He he speaks on issues that are already known to be issues. He speaks on facts that are already been brought up. So you're not bringing us no new information. You're personally not doing anything as far as doing anything to these issues, but speaking on them. But you speak on, on action. But where's your action? Don't speak upon what people need to do if you're not about action. Me mm-hmm. personally, I speak on action too. I'm all about the action too. Mm-hmm. So, the things I speak on, I don't just speak on them. I have to practice them first for me to be able to speak on them. Facts. To anybody Facts. else. I'm not going to come on here on a platform and be spitting some out to the people God knows who may hear it. And I'm not practicing what I preach. That's real. Ref- refuse to be a hypocrite. So, if I'm going to get up on a platform and I'm going to speak to the black people, we need to do this, we need to do this. Let me be on the forefront of attempting to do it. If I have the resources to provide that and I can actually spark a movement or spark a change, Mm -hmm. let me do that change. You have this school building, supposedly, allegedly, you have this school building. But where's the change you're supposedly supposed to be sparking with this? I understand you want to do it a certain way. You don't want government assistance. You just want people assistance. But if you're trying to be for the people, realize you, you do realize the people that you get assistance from are broke too, right? Man, he could have took that same seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, bought a small piece of land, put a trailer on it, and he could have he could have been servicing twenty young young black men every year and teaching them already. For, and but then he had to sell proof for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. That man could have bought a, a, a hundred and some acres of land. You feel me? But then he got to show and proof. That's the thing. It's ways to go upon what you want to do if you want to do it and get it done. If you just want to do it and have a process the way you want to do it, regardless of whatever happens, you're going to take the risk of having whatever consequences come with that. But you got to be willing to answer those questions as far as why is this not happening like this? Well, this is is, you're supposed to be doing this because people are going to look up 
Yeah. People are going to look up your facts now. People are all into your business now because you're playing with people's money. You're asking for donations when you're out at dinner. You're not just asking for donations for the school. That's Thank one you. thing. Thank you. That's what I'm saying, dollar man. Sign like, FD, dollar sign cash app FDMG is supposed, to, is supposed to be for the school, not your personal cash app. When you buy us a mm-hmm. coffee, you know it's for coffee. This, I don't doubt man, you. I, 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 this is my thing. I have with no them. personal feelings towards it. I it's, just want everyone to know that we may give you a Uma update every week and point out his flaws. But we also tell you, yes, he is an intelligent individual. He poses yeah. to be an intelligent individual. Like, be yes. clear. He, I don't. He, he, oh. he, he has a good rhetoric. We don't hate on this man at all. But we will continue to point out your flaws as long as you're scamming in our community. That's that is thing. it. That's the thing. For me, if I don't care what he says. I don't care how crazy he is. You can go on mm-hmm. rants. That's your prerogative. My only issue is that you told me back in 2000, what? 13, 2014, somewhere way back there, that you were starting a school for black boys. You got my dumb ass to sit there and send you 50 bucks. And we talking about now, it's 2021. And me and millions or hundreds of thousands or whatever of other people that sent you all this money and you still ain't told us where the money is. What is being used for? All you've done is continue to beg for more. And when people have given you ways that you can get what you claim that you're doing this for, you say no. You turn away black help. You have contractors that get on YouTube and say, I literally texted this man. I contacted this man. I called him and emailed him. Let him know I would come up there and do this shit for free. I'm licensed and never heard back from Uma. So it's like, just tell the truth about the school, man. I feel like nobody would care about Uma. Nobody would be making videos on his crazy behaviors if he's not out here telling people I'm going to make a school for black boys and this is what I'm going to do. But as long as you keep saying this shit, that's what got a lot of people in you. Like they looking for a way to get their children out of a what is a corrupt system. Like the education system needs a lot of help, man. Uh-huh. So if you got this great idea, go ahead and do it or stop lying. Say you a content creator. Say you are really out here and you just want to give speeches and stuff and you want to speak your speech on whatever your platform is, and just say that. Then the people who really love to just listen to you, and that's what they need, Do. they that's will it. keep doing that. <laughs> and the other people, like me and a lot of other people that actually cover Uma, we won't have anything to say, because y'all, I don't care what you ran about. Like, that's your business. But if you're talking about opening up a school for black boys, now you have a personal investment from me. If you're telling me, hey, you donate to this, this is what I'm supposed to see. Well, damn it, send my $50 back there because I don't see no fucking school for black boys. I see two, I see two, three buildings that are completely empty and abandoned that you still have not done the basic renovations on the inside for to even get it close to being able to open up a door to that school. And I see you continuously asking for more money for it. I'm tired of you scamming our people. Like, just say what it is. Say you a YouTuber like everybody else and get your little cash apps in just like every other YouTuber do and do that. I can rock with that. Go back to public speaking and just do that. I can rock with that. Mm -hmm. But my issue has always been, like Faye said, like, we don't care about that stuff. It's not a hating thing. It's a you're you're legitimately doing something that looks crooked, sounds crooked, smells crooked, and you're (laughs) not buckle down and have integrity and give tangible answers that can either exonerate you or just come out and tell the damn truth, champ. It's 2021, man. Crazy shit going on and people just sitting on YouTube all day talking. Like, we come out we come out with YouTube content every week. So I ain't hating on you for that. But we ain't trying to build no school. We ain't told nobody we're going to do nothing that we ain't going to do. We told people, you buy us a coffee, we're going to get a uh, face of Mike. He got a new mic and a new camera. Uma, we done gave you money because you told us you're going to get a school. Where your school, champ? I'm going to say it, man. Either he is the biggest con man ever or he is, again, the worst case of when potential does not meet execution and he just is not the right person to do this. Maybe he needs to turn it over to somebody else who has more business acumen or more understanding of how to make this happen and let them do it. And he just be the face of it. But... Under, as it currently stands, man, Umar can. It, it, you need to do something soon, Umar. They closing in on you, champ. Right on, right on. Well, with that being said, man, please uh, 
podcast dropping Friday morning um, on all podcasts and sites. Video clips will be coming out starting tomorrow. Um, yeah, man. Keep looking forward to the content. Live show, Saturday night, 9.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. You didn't ask us, but we got some fresh topics for y'all this week, and we're ready to open it up and have that dialogue with the chat. So feel free to come on through and, you know, kick it with your boys, man. Oh, yeah, we here for you. Indeed. What y'all got, guys? Content and more always, content. <clears throat> as always, visit the stores, teespring.com, backslash partners, dash closet, dash one, or teespring.com, backslash stores, backslash face, dash code, dash two. Big facts. Big facts. We everywhere, people. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Amazon Prime. T H E P O D N A S. Indeed. Indeed. As always, man, I'm Tiz, one third of the partners. It's the Padawan. It's facing the place that's trying to stay ahead of the race, y'all. And y'all stay ahead of your race out there, people. See y'all later, Pod Squad. We'll be seeing y'all this week for the live show or, you know, enjoy listening. See y'all next time, guys. We out. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am one third of The Partners, your boy Tiz. It's the other third, the Padawan here. Um, and as you can see, we are missing the third this week. Uh, Brother Face had to handle some business, you know, family first at all times. So We'll be seeing him, uh, obviously, on our live show this week and on next week's episode. But, you know, just shoot, shoot some good vibes out to my brother. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, man, we me and Pat going to try to hold it down for y'all this evening in lieu of him not being here. But much love to you, bro. And we can't wait to have you back on Friday, champ. Love and positivity yeah, to you. Indeed, my brother. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um I'm actually going to flip my docket just a little bit because I want to get the, as you would say, the fuckery out of the way pretty early. Here. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into this week's UMA weekly update. Oh, bruh. Yeah, man. Uh, so as with last week, uh, kind of mixing it up here because <laughs> UMA, as always, has been for like the past two weeks, just been pretty calm, quiet. Not trying to do a lot. Um, he's been posting his normal nonsensical posts that have nothing to do with nothing, uh, hawking his book and asking for cash apps. And that's pretty much it. But he hasn't done many lives or anything like that where I can see any new nonsense to really focus in on. So mm -hmm. this week, I will focus on some of the highlights of the FDMG two-year anniversary. This is two years since those trap bandos were built, well, were bought. <laughs> Allegedly, I, I, at this point, I don't even know what to say as fact or fiction, man, because this story just gets weirder and weirder as time goes on. So, yeah, right. um, <laughs> highlight of my personal week, uh, I was in the Cookie Crush chat on Lennon Honor's page uh, as we celebrated the anniversary, and we he had a four-part series, basically, where he was going through from the very first time he mentioned the school, way back in like 2009, all the way up until today, and all of the many promises and excuses and redirects and changes to the program and programs that he's going to implement that nobody ever ends up seeing, mm -hmm. um, he just went through it all. And what I do like about Lennon's uh, platform is it's really a fun community over there because, like, we're talking about the seriousness of this dude frauding, but we get to just roast and just be silly with it. 
You know what I mean? And I like how you, how he kind of mixes the information with just the goofy shit. So hashtag freedom jeans. Um, one of the highlights for me was when they went back to his first like promotional video talking about the school. This was back when he was trying to buy uh, or claiming to try to buy St. Paul's College in Virginia. Uh, and he is walking across this bridge with these rustler jeans, Pat. I wish you was in the chat room. I wish you watched. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, man. These big baggy. I don't know whether it was Jinko jeans or off-brand Jabos or what these were, but he's walking across with these big jeans on and this sloppy looking button up that's like half tucked in, half not with a tie that just like, why you put that tie on? You could have just did the Jay-Z button up with the top button unbuttoned and just called it a day. But you like, he, he looking like 2003. Bruh, and when I say these jeans look so worn out and just tired, like the, the jeans would look like they was just like, please get me away from this fucker. Why are we help dealing me. with this bullshit? Yes. <laughs> the jeans were literally <laughs> reaching out for help through the screen. Like, please. He sits on me every day. You don't know how long it's been since he's washed me. Like these jeans look toe down, through the gate, out the window, could stand by us. themselves. Got some work jeans on. <laughs> yes. Them old construction I'm, I'd have been lit, been riveting beams and shit all day jeans. Like, it was just... <laughs> them uh, um, them uh, that, white boy at the rave jeans. <laughs> yes, the old big, glow, wide legs, glow cut sticks. jeans. Yes. <laughs> and the old, like, they look like dad jeans, but baggy as fuck. Like, I... Hashtag freedom jeans, man. They are the real victim of all of this. Um, and that has nothing to do with nothing. But that was just the highlight of my week, just looking at this dude in these rollout jeans. And it was like, from the beginning, the jeans knew. The jeans knew this long struggle that he would have to go through and, and have his name besmirched by being attached to Uma. Oh, man. Oh, I've been working so that, all my life. Oh, <laughs> them jeans look like, man, please, somebody help me. He is just been, dragging me through this been, with him. I've been fighting. I've been fighting all my life, Gene. <laughs> Oh my life, them missile fears. Yes, them missile fears. Them hitting the head with a rock. You ain't my mammy jeans. I'm, I, I love Hapo. I know I do, but I can't. Man, man God knows I love Uma. Lord knows I do. So, so, but he keep on dragging me through this scam. I'd have been through <laughs> shit lakes in the school. I'd have been outside <laughs> fake painting with this shit. I'd have been hooking up fake fake electricity in these jeans. Like, I'm just tired. My back pockets are wore out. But yeah, so that was just, I just had to give my my highlight of the week. That has nothing to do with anything else that I'm about to talk about, but I had to just... <sighs> and I have to joke, so... <laughs> yes. All right, so now we're to the actual information. So uh, one of our viewers have shouted out and said that Q Butter had an interview with Taz. Now, Q Butter is a dude that around the same time... Um, that I was getting into Umar as far as like still thinking that he was all right. I had donated back in 2014 when he was talking about St. Paul's and then I was still supporting him in 2016, 2017. I think that's when Q Butter kind of got his start as far as school building. Mm -hmm. Now, since that time, Q Butter has, I think two schools, if I'm not mistaken, one is online and then one is actually in person. He not only has these schools where he's talking about it, but he actually takes you into the schools on like tours of the school while the kids are in mm. class. He got like sixth grader, seventh graders working on calculus and trig. Like, Shoot. yeah, like this dude is actually out here doing the work and he's doing it for, I know he probably hasn't collected as like, he's doing it off of donations and people sending in equipment. <laughs> um, he, you know, people donate computers to him, et cetera, et cetera. And instead of him turning these people down, like Uma has turned down contractors come fit the school, this dude actually accepts the help and, and uses it. So you can see the tangible work of these kids in here learning. He takes them on field trips. Like, this dude is putting in work, and he's doing it with less resources than Uma. So on the interview with uh, Taz and them, um, I think the thing that stood out to me the most was that interview... 
and an interview I had seen with Ali Sadiq, and they both and both Q Butter and Ali Sadiq kind of hinted at and talked on the same thing. At this point with Umar, I don't think it's so much. It's not so much that he. Yes, it's a scam because mm-hmm. he has tangible services and products he never does. But I think the main issue with Umar is his lack of. He doesn't know how to execute. Like he doesn't have any real plans for anything. He's one mm-hmm. of those people that you would call a big picture person. He's great at coming up with ideas. Like if his ideas <coughs> were undertaken by any other person, <coughs> by any other person with those resources and the same amount of donations he's had, every one of those things would have come to fruition by now. From the couples retreat to the fourth grade online school for the pandemic to the actual school itself where kids are getting helped to the farming program like all of this stuff is actually stuff that can be done if a person has a real plan like i i'm in the know and i'm kind of cool with people who actually have done the work to open schools and their opening operation budget is like three hundred fifty thousand. so you're not going to tell me that if you really want to do this it's not possible and you've collected at this point over 2.5 million like, you're not going to tell me this is not possible. Uh, so shout out to Q Butter. I, I just really appreciate seeing people that are actually out here doing the work. And the same way we kind of lift up and highlight the, the the jackasses in our community that kind of leech off of us and, you know, take people money and et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it's important, too, that I take a second. You know, I took that second to just kind of highlight and, and shout that out. Taz did a great interview with Q. He asked great questions. And I like how they stayed on topic. Like they didn't get into the the buffoonery of like throwing ad hominem attacks or like attacking yeah. people's person. They attacked the actual facts of what is tangible, what should it be done, and what has just not been fulfilled. You know what I mean? I like when content can stay <clears throat> on that and not get off too far into the personal stuff and digging into people's records and stuff and and I yeah. it, and the reason I mentioned that is I that's kind of my so I'm talking about Uma tonight but I also want to kind of take a second to kind of go back into talking about the Uma sector like I did last week and just kind of highlight some things that we got to get out of this messiness um, mm-hmm. I see a lot of like people who they got good information but the way they're delivering it, they're getting it to the point where they're looking for people's like marriage information and they're looking at people's like personal relationships. And I don't know what that has to do with Uma. Like if we're gonna, it's cool to debate a person that supports Uma on the actual facts of what Uma has promised and what he has not delivered. Mm-hmm. But to start to go into people's like criminal backgrounds and all of that, I think that is really, for one, it's just dividing the, our people more. Yeah. You feel me? Um, but on, on top of that, I think it also <clears throat> takes away from the actual issue of Uma defrauding people. Like, that is the real issue. That's the problem. Not this person over here who disagrees with you. The problem is Uma Johnson is the catalyst for all of this because he's using cult-like tactics to keep his supporters like brainwashed almost and at the same time he is gaslighting people who are going against him and saying like hey this is not correct this is like but you said this this is like yeah. have you on video saying this but this isn't happening where is this at if we're going to keep sending you money you know what I mean and I think we, we want to stay focused on that um this dude uh Smoke God Book of Negroes. Um, he had a lie today where he was kind of saying this, and I already had this on our docket um mm-hmm. this weekend, but it was crazy that he's saying the same thing. Um, and I really like his content because he he's a really unbiased dude. Like the same way he does it, he he sees the fuckery that Umar does. He also is willing to debate with people who support Umar in a civilized way where it's not he's not demeaning them or like character assassinating them he's more getting to the like well this is why i disagree can you explain this um why yeah. do you feel this way why why do you support him what is it that you're seeing that we miss and like he stays on topic really well and i think mm-hmm. that's what we got to give back to in this whole umar sector it's a lot of us out here 
and we make videos either for or against Uma, whatever the case may be. But it's a way to have this dialogue as a people and still remain a people without like tearing each other down. And, yeah. and, and that's just my message and PSA to anybody who makes videos about Uma, um, one way or the other, man, like stay focused on the fact. If you support Uma, cool, that's your business, that's your right. But stay focused on the facts of this is why I support him and these are the facts I have to back it up. If you are a detractor like me and you've been burned by Uma or you understand the fact that, hey man, Uma that took my money and I still not seeing my product, then stay on that topic. Mm. Cause that's yeah. what we try to stay on. Like our issue ain't with the man personally. Like I don't care what he do in his personal life, but if anything he does publicly that he displays to the world and he actually, <clears throat> he himself said, I'm gonna critique that because it all ties back into the school. I'm not gonna go digging for something that he ain't put out there. I'm not gonna go digging for something that ain't out there to the public. That's your privacy and I feel like everybody got a right to that privacy. So, you know, as I get back into Uma himself and I stay on topic, I just want to shout, send that PSA out to all of us out here that make content on Uma in any way, shape, form or fashion. Like, let's do it in a civilized way and let's keep our humanity and our overarching theme of like, we still got to be unified at the end of this. Because once yeah. we get rid of this charlatan, we still got to be a people that can kind of fulfill the things that are necessary for our people to progress. So. That's my yeah. PSA. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Now, yeah. as I mentioned before, I think the biggest issue with Uma is like intention versus impact. Um, and that's a broader lesson for the world. Like having a good intention is only good if the impact matches that intention. Yeah. If I intend to swat a fly to get him out of the house because he's annoying people, but I smack somebody in that house doing so, <laughs> My yeah. intention was good, but this person still got smacked. Yeah. That's the, the impact doesn't match the intent. So I think really putting some planning into this and some uh like thinking before you're doing into this is what Umar needs to really <laughs> focus on going forward. Like stop for one, come up with some transparency. But for two. Go ahead and clean your slate. Admit whatever your wrongs are. Stand on that as a man. Take the backlash from it and then move on with a plan if you're going to keep on being out here in the sector talking to our people. That's it. Like, um, so that yeah. remind That remind me of a quote um, about good intent. Um, uh, I said, uh, most of the evil in this world is done by people with good intentions. Absolutely. Good intentions, yeah, bad planning leads to horrible impacts. Mm-hmm. And that's the main issue. Um, so now, uh, since there's really not much at, at this point, more we can say about Uma until the court case kind of gets into action and we really, or, or he gets back on the public forums more where he's actually posting videos and that type of thing. Um, I've come up with a list of the top 25 questions that we can ask Umar or Umar supporters and that we need to stay focused on mm-hmm. until he answers them. Because I think when we keep getting off into these sidetrack conversations, it takes us away and we end up not focusing in on him and holding him and his people that support him accountable for, the, for these things. So here's the top 25 questions we need to continuously keep asking to Umar and his support. First, I understand the delay in repairs, but why are there so many unpaid bills associated with the school? Why can't you pay the property taxes out of the donations? Why can't you pay the utilities bills, which are much less per month than the taxes? I don't understand that. And as of yet, there has been no logical explanation as to why these bills are unpaid. As a matter of fact, Umar and supporters often don't even acknowledge that these bills are paid. Like, People have literally just seen it on public record. Oh, this is the school. These bills are here online saying that they're unpaid. Why? Why are there so many unpaid bills associated with the school? That's one. Two, why do so many donors, not people who are random off the street, but people like myself and others who have sent money, who have given our hard-earned money, whatever that money may be, we are still 
ground level investors in this vision that we were sold on, why do donors never get any answers? Like I, on, on Lord Jamal's interview, he says, you know, I don't owe anybody else any answers because they haven't donated. Why well, I donated? I know a bunch of people that donated. The Frosters donated to your lawyer donors club. None of us got any answers. None of us got access to the platforms that you said we would, where we would get these answers. And when we and, ask these questions, you yeah. get mad at us. Exactly. And then say that y'all don't donate. Like I've actually seen that before. Don't forget you... my donate, my donation. Mm -hmm. Forget my donation. That's basically what you're saying. So my hard-earned money didn't mean shit. Next, number three. Why did you buy a school that needed so much work if you knew that you were not getting the donations that you may have claimed? You could have bought a smaller building or instead of buying a campus, bought one building and started with that middle school group and then built out over time. Why did you buy a school that needed that much work well, we're now two years since the first day you purchased it. And not nothing, to be honest, not much looks different. Mm -hmm. Got the lights on now. The plumbing's still off. The HVAC's still off. There's still holes in the ceiling. There's still holes in the wall. Wiring is still hanging down everywhere. There's a shit lake in the middle of the gym floor. Old school uniforms are still in this damn school that, from the, from the last school, the name plate on the school still says More Your Academy. Like, why did you get this shit storm and clusterfuck and money pit of a building if you knew that you weren't getting the donations and like that? You just get a sign to say a DMG. Something. Post, post yeah. one of them fake, one of them little signs, like them campaign signs out front that say FDMG <laughs> is coming. Yeah. Something, man. Give me something, bro. Give me something. Question number four. Why do you not give financial updates so donors know how close they are to specific goals? Maybe you don't want to tell me all the details, but why not say, okay, we are at $250,000 we need for the HVAC. At this point, we are $70,000 in. So then people have at least an idea, a gauge, okay, so this is how much more it's going to take. Mm -hmm. Why don't you, why aren't you willing to give financial updates? So we can have like a goal. You could even put a little thermometer on the screen, put some graphics up, draw on the whiteboard and make a, a thermometer and fill it up more and more as you get the donations. Give somebody something. Something. Even, even Kickstarter and GoFundMe got a little, you know, thing that, you know, graph or whatever to tell you that man. far. You done got <laughs> kicked off of GoFundMe already, Umar. Draw you a thermometer. Do something. <laughs> Question number, what are we at? Five? Yeah, we at yeah. five. When did the lights officially get turned on? All of was the it lights. in November when you were in the building beating on the drum saying, FDMG is coming, FDMG is coming. And you were saying, yeah, the lights are on. Yeah, they on now. And you were flicking switches then. Or was it this year, January, when you were on the interview saying, oh yeah, the lights are finally on right now. They just got turned on. Which is it, Umar? Question number six. Why the plumbing is still unfixed? Didn't you say the plumbers done been in there and they done redid the pipes? So why are you still saying the plumbing ain't fixed? And why is there still a big shit lake in the middle of the gym? After you done had the donors come in and after they spent their hard earned money and painted for you, then you had them come in and Come on, help me clean up this gym floor as you walked around on IG Live. And you got these older queens in there sitting there sweeping up filth and shit. And COVID. And breathing in toxic fumes from Fabuloso <laughs> and bleach. Why the plumbing still ain't fixed? Go call Super Mario or something. Come <laughs> back to Luigi, yeah. even. <clears throat> Baby Mario busy. Call that mm -hmm. Luigi. Somebody can help you, sir. Get you Somebody. a rotor rooter, some Drano, <laughs> something. Number seven. When people ask you questions about the school, why do you get angry? If there's no scam, there's no fraud, there's no scheme, there's no yeah. illegal activity going on, there's everything is on the up and up, why do you get angry when people question you? Why does it literally send you into a forehead sweat and rage? When you get to throw a temper tantrum in your mama's corner. 
Why? Why? Why does he get you angry? Yeah, the like uh, Trump. I'm, I I don't forgot what number we on now, people. So y'all just gonna have to deal with me at this point. Um, next question though. Why, if you are the most requested scholar, are your venues and your crowds so small? Most requested scholar, I would at least think, would be selling out a ballroom at a hotel. You got the dudes that go around selling get rich quick schemes that can fill up a hotel ballroom. And your events are mostly free. So why is mm -hmm. it that you can't even get a venue for one to request you? Why are you always online asking somebody, hey, you got a barbershop? You got a restaurant? You got, you got a corner office? You got a convenience store? You got anything that I can sit in? Please let me come to your town. I haven't been there. I haven't been to Kansas. I haven't been to Kansas in three years. When y'all gonna call me back, Kansas? The most requested scholar, the most requested means that most, the, you are the most asked for person. Why are you always asking for a place? And why is all of your places so small? I seen a John today where he was literally on a stage in front of a area that couldn't have been no bigger than my garage. It's 12 people out there. Then he takes those 12 people into the African boutique that's right there. Mm -hmm. And he sits down in the back of that and talks to people and sells them his $70 book. Why are your venues and crowds so small if you're the most requested? Why do celebrities not financially support you? That's question number nine. I count it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See, that's why, see, that's why you got to have your brother. But why do celebrities never want to back you? Interview with Ali Sadiq. They asked him specifically about Umar Johnson. Ali Sadiq, big comedian, very successful in comedy. He said, no, I would not support Umar because he don't have a plan. <laughs> they asked Snoop about, well, will you, will you give to Umar on an IG Live? Snoop ignored the question. Can't play his music. <laughs> Like, why is it that you never have any celebrity endorsements if you are so revolutionary and on point and, and people support you so much and your word is the, is the real deal? Why, why do celebrities who are more, um, more, more savvy in business dealings than I, I am, why do none of them come out and support you? On that matter, why do no celebrity scholars support you? Even some scholars who may be speaking the same type of overall rhetoric. Why is it that they don't even support you? Don't even know you. Michael Eric Dyson has no idea who you are. And you had the promo because you've been on a breakfast club. That's like how the first I found out about, matter of fact. Why do no celebrities financially support you, sir? Next question. I guess it's 10. Mm-hmm. Why do you not display your degrees as most scholars do? I have only a bachelor's. My bachelor's is displayed. My wife has a bachelor's and a master's. She keeps her degrees displayed. Most doctor's office of any type of doctors that can't I go into their office, their degrees right there. are displayed. And can't not wait only that, right, they, they definitely let you know, but they also... They want to make sure that you see their credentials so that you know that they're giving credible wisdom on whatever it is that they're speaking of. Mm -hmm. They want you to see that, yes, you can trust my word because I have the credentials to support the fact that I've done the research and I've done the years of study to speak on this knowledge. Why you don't ever display your degrees, Uma? Question 11. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes back to question number 10. Why don't you have an office? I am in no way going to call myself a scholar. I am well read and I'm very well versed in a lot of different areas, but I'm not an expert on anything necessarily. I'm an expert on health and wellness because that's what my per that's what my expertise is in, but I'm not an expert on everything. But I got an office. How do I have an office? And I'm not the most requested anything. I'm just little old T. But you don't have an office, and you are the most requested scholar with six degrees. Yet you mean to tell me you don't have an actual office for people to come and have business meetings with you? Mm -hmm. If somebody did want to discuss investing with you, 
they have to sit outside on the FDMG rock with you? Or do an IG live together or something? Right, or go to an abandoned FaceTime. playground where you, where you set up shop or go yell in the cemetery with you? That's how they got to have business meetings? They can't sit down in the office? Or the vegan restaurant thing? They be... <laughs> I got to I gotta sit down with you all the time and watch you scarf down food with your tusks. And then and then ask the donors to um, cash app them so you can pay for the meal. Correct. Mm. But you have no office. Why don't you have an office, Umar? I think this is 12. Why mm. are there so many contractors who say that you ignored them or turned down their free work? Let us show the contractor that emailed um, Umar and started the conversation with Umar. Like, hey, you know, I, I work for a contracted company that allows us to do free pro bono work for a certain amount of hours every year as a part of like just giving back. And I could take vacation time on top of that. And I could come down. And if you go ahead and get the permits drawn up, I can come down. Me and my crew, we can come down and knock out all the plumbing and, and a lot of the HVAC for you right now. And this was way back in 2019 when the school first was bought. All your but problems you right there. $250,000 worth of work done. But yet you turned them down or ignored them. Uma literally stopped, stopped responding to the dude. But you claim to keep wanting people to support you, and then the people that support you, you ignore them. Why do you turn down the work? Next question. Why are the halls and ceilings still in disrepair? I looked at a lot of that ceiling stuff. A lot of that ain't number drop, but, but drop tiles. You can mm -hmm. sit there and have, have you can do that yourself, Uma. I've you can get them myself. donors up there. If you can do all that, you can get you can get the paneling. Go ahead and, and, and get some uh, zip ties and some and some wire clips and go ahead and clip them wires up into the ceiling and put your shit down. And when the contractors finally do get there in 19 February, they can come on in and they can uh, jump on it and, and, and finish out, you know what I mean? That they, they can go up in the ceiling if need be and do whatever they need to do as far as electricity. But at least you then have... You can, you can display something. It looks better aesthetically. When you're doing a live from inside of there, you can show the donors like, hey, we're getting it ready for occupation. We're getting it ready for scholars to come on in. We're getting ready for these students to come on in that we're trying to build. Or we're getting ready for these children's minds that we're going to shape. Mm -hmm. I would not feel safe sending my, sending my child anywhere near that school with wires falling out the ceiling and full outlets just hanging down where you got to duck under to get down the hall. Like, what the hell is that? Heck yeah. Next question. Why are your donors doing the work to also paint the school and clean the school? Why, is, why are you putting them to that work when they're already financially supporting you? Why not do it yourself? Which would be a much stronger visual, a much mm -hmm. stronger message to the people like, hey, y'all supporting me financially. I'm out here doing the work. So now when you walk past the school talking about we working, we working, people would actually see you working. We've seen you were painting your beard and hadn't seen you pick up one brush or roller. Smoke God Book of Negroes just painted a whole damn room and didn't get no paint on his face, none of that. So that showed that you were just out there stunting. You were just out there trying to flex for the camera. You just flick some paint at your beard so that you look like you was out here working with these people. And then you go in and eat up all the food, sitting there with a sliced piece in your hand. And then have people say, I will do the work for free and still get the donors to do it. Like, like come <laughs> on. What kind of person are you? Next question. Act. When is the painting going to be finished? You've been having this two-tone school for the past three months. Since we started our podcast, you've had a school that was two-tone. And I don't think you can get them donors to get up on that damn roof and paint down, as you say, which is not even a thing, because painters don't do that. They just get scalped into a ladder and go up and paint yeah. like normal people. Fucking weirdo. Paint down. But you're the most requested scholar. Next question. Why do you not have any new information to teach? The one hallmark of scholars is that they are constantly learning, which is why they're called okay. scholars. They're constantly reading new information and emerging knowledge in their fields. 
So they don't keep regurgitating the same thing. They keep updating their information. They're able to find new things to tell you about that you didn't already know because they've already taught you about the first lesson. So now they're going to keep on building on that. Mm -hmm. You have been regurgitating the exact same information for now 13 years, 14 years since you started your speaking career. Why? Where's the new information? You had that crooked bookshelf in your old crib. You can't read none of those books and give us something new. I know people in the education system. They're constantly updating the, their knowledge on sped education and how to reach out to uh, scholars or students with disabilities and kids that have special needs. They're constantly updating these, their information to be better equipped. You're still regurgitating the same stuff you were talking way back in 2009. And, and so much has changed in education since then. But you're mm -hmm. still on that same old rhetoric. You've taught us nothing new. You've made duplicate copies of the same damn book, basically. Your speeches all sound the same. And when you do talk about something outside of special education, you end up reading it from a book or just regurgitating facts. The same facts. We know Frederick Douglass' birthday now, sir. We got yeah. it. We know Marcus Garvey's anniversary, sir. We got it. You have posted it on IG. You've posted it on Facebook. You've said it a million times. We got it. Give me something new. And we can Google that. <laughs> As a scholar, you should be able to teach me something that I would not normally know to even look up. Mm -hmm. I watch scholars all across the board in all kinds of fields, from medicine to social health to mental health to history to uh, archaeology, all of these people. And they always are giving me something. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that just mm -hmm. happened? Oh, word? It's always something I leave thought-provoking. I don't get nothing from Umar's lines. Even when he's talking about shit that ain't fuckery. You ain't telling me nothing, bro. You said this already. We got that. What's new? Mm -hmm. Why do you never have anything to update it? Now, next question. Why are your books not cited or peer-reviewed at all? In academia and in, scholar and in the world of scholars, most of their works that are worth anything that are not considered um, pseudoscience or pseudo information, their works are usually cited, referenced. They have facts and figures for you to go reference of where they got their information from. They can tell you book numbers and pages and all. Like they give you the whole rundown of where they got their stuff. And other scholars have looked at their information and agreed with it and said, yes. The, According to my knowledge and my expertise and my experiments, this matches. Yes, this is something we can go forward to. Nobody, you haven't cited a reference. You haven't gotten peer reviewed by anybody. There's no other scholars that back your information. Shit, What's even up with your books? Even Wikipedia got references. Yes. <laughs> your books, we can't even get in a real bookstore. We got to get them from you. Just, just text me. Pay, PayPal me. Real I books I can get from stores, sir. I can go to Barnes and & Noble still and get it. Mm -hmm. Real books I can go to Audible and, and pull it up and listen to it. Real Kindle. books. Something. Mm -hmm. How are your books not cited or peer-reviewed at all? Uh, next question. Same vein a little bit. Why will no publisher publish your book? Why, do you, why is it that all of your books are done through copiers and you put it together yourself? Don't give me the independence, Rob. Because if you wanted it to be quality, you would <sighs> invest in quality. And what you're putting out is not that. So why won't a real publisher ever publish your information? You're not saying anything that radical. No more radical than anybody else who has published books. There's people from the Ku Klux Klan that have published books. So you're not going to get give me on that rad I'm too radical for the system. No. 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 Why won't anybody publish you? I'm even getting what? advice. I'm getting advice from publishers myself for my own book, for a comic book. You hear me? <laughs> for a comic book. You know what I'm saying? So 
Like, come on, dude. <clears throat> Next question. What is the official opening date of the school that you can stick to? February. <laughs> Stop pushing the date back. Sit down, plan it out, get tangible timelines for everything you need to do, and set a real date. When is the official opening date? You've given us so many. 2013, 2010, 2014, 2016, 2019, 2020. Now we're in 2021. What is the official opening date of the school? Whole new decade. Yes. And the last question I have, and we must keep asking Umar and his supporters, this is the most important question to me. When will you free these damn jeans? <laughs> Let them jeans go. Hashtag free them jeans. They have suffered enough. Let us never forget the real victim of Umar Johnson. <laughs> them damn jeans. Stay vigilant, my people. Stay vigilant. I got, I got one more question for it, Dad. Uh, keep going. Yeah. I got one more question. Why do you keep looking at other schools? And you haven't finished the first one. Yes. I, I've been wearing it, wondering that for the longest time. Every time I see him, he in a whole different school. And I'm like, you ain't even finished that one. Don't you still got bills on that one? Why are you at this one looking you like you're breaking the one. entering? Why are you looking at it? Mm -hmm. Like, let's come on now. So that's all I have this week for the Uma Weekly Update. Um, the moral of these stories is, I have two. For one, disagree civilly. And that's to all my Umar sector people. And then for two, freedom, damn. Jeans, Umar. I will not stop. I will never forget. Freedom, jeans, Umar. Freedom, damn, jeans. Get you some sweatpants or something. <laughs> Shit. Damn, jeans. I've suffered long enough, damn it. But 12 long years of them damn jeans struggling. 12 long years of them jeans overlapping over your birthday Nikes. As people send you Texas to your, to your phone. Oh. <laughs> Let me add one more question to that list too. Mm -hmm. If you're the most requested scholar, how come you don't have any ability to like pronounce certain words? Like where's your diction? Yeah, I did notice that, man. The hell is a birthday? Birth? This nigga said he's gonna have some midwifery classes. What the hell is midwifery? I've heard of midwifery. <clears throat> what is midwifery? Now I I know that I know I'm probably the last person to talk because I'll be stumbling over words sometimes. Sometimes I skip I'll combine words in general. I don't know, maybe I'm a bit dyslexic, but at the same time, I heard this man read on his live one time. And it sounded like that one kid that don't ever read that got picked to read that day. Please don't pick on me, Miss Johnson. Please don't pick mm. me, Miss Johnson. Oh, damn, I gotta go. Frederick Douglass was born on... <laughs> you feel me? Like, what is wrong? What, what? Some ain't right, man. Some ain't right, man. I cannot wait for this uh, lawsuit. Because mm. I hope he get his come up. I hope so bad. He deserves it at this point. Or he can send me my $50 back and I will get off his ass. But I ain't got my services yet for the money I donated. I want my services. And I ain't pay for you to go to Japan and take a bath. I ain't paying for you to go on these plane rides all over. I, I donated to a school. I want a fucking school. Oh. Simple as that. End of, end of uh, this week's UMA weekly update. <laughs> 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 he's a laughable fucker he's a laughable fucker um so mm. yeah man yeah mm. now to my next topic and I felt like this was poignant today especially cause uh for some reason it just seems like uh so we got a group chat with me and, and, and the rest of the bros man it's like uh five or six of us in the group chat and we we, we just have man talk and we vent and we plot and we discuss things and we figure out what our next business moves are and all of this. And it's just kind of like man therapy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like today in the chat, man, 
a lot of loved ones was just coming at some con with some conflict today. Like everybody seemed to have been, or it was just a big struggle with everybody and their wives and their girlfriends and just just people in, around them annoying them and just coming at them. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to kind of go over. Uh, I got another little list for y'all. Seems like we just getting into lists a lot more lately, but I, I feel like it's just Capricorn's I'm, love list. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, this is something that I'm. I'm getting better with, and I want to share the things that I've. I use personally when conf, when I having conflicts with loved ones. So these are the top eight ways you can overcome and get through conflicts with loved ones. Mm. First. Use logic. If you are thinking about the actual logic of what's being said, as opposed of the emotion you feel behind what's being said, it's a lot easier for you to have a conversation and get through conflicts because you're not getting into such a negative headspace on your own. You're not getting as angry as much. It's literally um, one of the processes for like, stopping negative self-talk is literally to stop and use logic and think like, why would this person say this? Why would this person do this? Why would, what actually led to this? What is the root of what's happening right now? And what, like, what exactly is going on? Not how I feel about it, but what exactly is going on? And then rewire your brain in that moment to get out of that emotion a little bit and be able to actually process the information itself. So first use logic. Second, take you a second if you need it. That doesn't mean wait all day to come back to the conversation, but like sometimes it's good to like take a break for 15 minutes. You go watch a YouTube video or go do the dishes or go- Clear your you know, head. Yeah, go clear your head, go take, go drink you a beer, go, go smoke you a joint, go, go whatever, whatever it is that your thing is that gets you- Your advice. Um, yep. listen, to, yeah, listen to some music, you know, whatever it is, meditate for a second, but- Take you a second and break. When you feel that boiling point coming from you or from the person you're having that conflict with, go to your corners. Even in boxing, they go to their corners for a minute to just kind of regroup. Okay, I'm getting kind of out of hand here. Let me refocus and, and think about how I actually want to go forward with this. So squirt squirt that water. Yeah, squirt the water. Listen to your trainer. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Get, let the <clears throat> man heal you up real quick, then go back in. Sometimes taking that breather mm -hmm. from it can let the emotion get out of it a little bit and allow you to get through your own emotion and get to like, okay, but this is what they really said. I know I ain't like the way they said it, but this is how I can actually say what I need to say next. You know what I mean? Clear, clear out that mental cloud. Exactly, exactly. So take a second if you need it. Next one, stay on topic. Like I said in the Uma, stay on topic. A lot of times when we're arguing, we're having a conflict, we tend to start going back down the road of everything this person has done to upset you or bother you or annoy you, or we start to get off into stuff that they haven't done or stuff we wish they would do, or <laughs> like, or, or we start talking about stuff that they didn't even say. Like, stay on the actual topic of why you're having the conflict in that moment, not why you've had previous conflicts or conflicts that you maybe should have had but didn't take the time to. Stay on topic. When you do that, it, it takes away a lot of the, the feelings of, okay, this person is just saying I'm a bad person now because they just listing off a bunch of stuff. It takes some of that feeling of getting beat over the head out of yeah. the conversation because now I can just focus in on exactly what just happened this second as opposed to me now trying to defend myself against 30 different accusations or arguments, you know what I mean? Let me, so let me pick your brain. Let me pick your brain, Tiz. Because yeah. I like to stay on topic, right? Come These on this this is what usually happens or whatever. Mm -hmm. I like to stay on topic, but the person I may have the disagreement with may change the subject or may try to deflect or may bring up older things that you know, this, that, and the third. So then I tend to say to myself, then I get to that point and like, you know what? This is not going anywhere. I would just be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet, see what you say. And then go about my business or whatever. It seems like when I try to, all right, bring it back to that topic, they get even angrier mm -hmm. or whatever because I keep bringing it up or whatnot. Right. So, like, what do you recommend in that situation? Like, um, 
I'll say what I would do, and then mm-hmm. uh, if it helps people, good. If not, mm-hmm. then you no, know, because everybody's a little different. Um, but mm-hmm. one thing that I found that works best for me is for one to calmly, after that person said they speak peace, to remind them that we can have conversations about these other things, but right now let's focus on just this so that we can tackle this. Like let's focus on one thing at a time as opposed to lumping them together. Cause then neither one of us are gonna be able to like keep up with all of the different ping pong balls that are going. Like let's focus in on one area, go there, and we can we can come back to those other things that you've mentioned. But for now, let's both of us just agree to focus on this, solve mm-hmm. this, get a resolution on this, and then we can go to whatever other issues that you may be having. Um, another thing I do is, and this works with little kids real well. Is to just keep saying, I understand, but this is what happened. And when Mm. you keep on just calmly doing that, the person will go through their cycles of anger, but then eventually they they usually loop back to that. So it's like staying that calm, just, I understand what you're saying. Like you want to validate that person's feelings, but you also want to make sure that, hey, I understand that those things may have been frustrating to you, but right Mm. now, the issue you brought to me right now was this. So that's what we're talking about now. I understand. Mm-hmm. And if and that's that repetition of that calming voice, they might throw their temper tantrum, but now it's not two people going at it. It's one person throwing their temper tantrum without provocation. There's no, mm-hmm. there's nothing from you to initiate more anger. The mm-hmm. anger that they're feeling is just them processing through all of those feelings because they're all over the place themselves still. But you got to sometimes just let people go through that. And you yeah. know, calm what's a reason if you are the person that's actually able to be that calm person. You know what I mean? Um, I can't remember who said it, but a while back I heard somebody, somebody a lot smarter than me said, uh, in every argument or conflict, somebody got to be the superhero. That got to be one of y'all that is willing to keep yourself calm so that the whole conversation doesn't go off the rails. And a lot of times, no person, like we get ingrained in that ego of, but I know mm-hmm. I'm right. How dare you say that about me? I don't like that. Sh- I don't like the your tone. I don't like the way you said that. So now, now it's two people butting heads as opposed to one person beating their head on the wall and the other person just waiting for them to finish it. You know what I mean? So I'm trying that. I can't wait to. <laughs> I'm trying that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be honest. Some people like to argue. And those people, yeah. it may come down to, hey, I understand what you're saying. But if we can't stay on topic now, why don't we table this until later? Mm-hmm. We'll come back in a we'll come back in a little while and we'll set a time right now that hey, this is when I would like to come back to this. And we'll go ahead and I'll just let you go ahead and process through what you're feeling and we'll come back to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But stay on topic. Like that's the yeah. thing, man. Like keeping it directed at the real root of what's happening right now, as opposed to all of the other things that should have been said before that are not that like don't don't let all of that stuff pile up because then you're fighting a bigger a battle that neither one of y'all can win. Yep. Um next something that works for me try to find a solution as opposed to dragging the complaints on and on. Sometimes we just keep on complaining about well I didn't like it, I didn't like it. But Mm -hmm. somebody has to come to the point of like okay I recognize your feelings and I'm sorry for that. But what is a solution that will work for you? And sometimes whoever is the person that is being complained about, like it's like, say, when you have an argument and you're complaining about something I'm doing, it might take me saying, hey, I apologize for that. And this is my solution going forward. Is that something that will work for you? And that sometimes can help that person that's upset. It kind of helps them to say, you know what? Okay, well, they at least try to make amends or solve the problem going forward. And even if that solution don't work for them, it opens up the floor for them to then say, well, no, this is what I would like. I, this is what I think. And now y'all are now compromising on the solution as opposed to arguing about a complaint. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So try to find a solution and not drag the complaints on and on. Um, number five, focus on the actual words the person said instead of how you feel about the issue. Mm. A lot of times we hear what we feel as opposed to what the person said. The person might have said, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that's a great idea. What we hear is, 
we're stupid. You think I'm dumb. You second guessing my intelligence. You don't think I'm able to handle this. You don't think I'm capable. But the person said, they just don't think that that specifically was a good idea. So we got to kind of sometimes make sure that we're focused on just what's being said and not the everything around it. Like, what did you actually say to me? Okay. Okay. So I, I, I may not like to hear it, but these are the words you use. And now I can actually use the right words come back to come back to that. When you, yeah. when you're hearing what you're feeling, you end up coming back with something that makes it, where you're trying to make the other person feel what you feel because mm-hmm. you hurt. So you want them to be pissed. You want them to be hurt. So when you're focusing on their words, their specific words, it gives you an opportunity to then come back with words that actually address what the words they said, as opposed yeah. to the feelings that it caused. That's um, why I was saying, I was saying um, emotions, emotions are your worst enemy sometimes, man. If you, sure. you're too sad, you become depressed, you get unfocused, you know what I'm saying? Um, and amongst all the other things that go along with depression, you get mad, you become unfocused, you start doing bad decisions, saying things out your mouth that you don't even really mean, uh-huh. stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Shoot, shoot! Even if you're too happy, sometimes you be off yes. your guard, and something else happens. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say sometimes emotions, man, they be like the main, your main enemy. It might not even be the person you arguing with. It's just your emotions. That's the main person you're fighting against. Big facts. Mm-hmm. Big facts. That's even like scientifically proven. Like when mm-hmm. your emotional sector of your brain is functioning too much Mm -hmm. the intellect has to kind of kind of reroute some of that power that it normally would be using the process to that which is why Mm -hmm. athletes don't get too high too low at a game they tell boxers don't get angry in the ring because then Mm. you're thinking you lose focus absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely so yeah focus on the wording instead of how you feel about it the next thing and this is one that's hard for everybody but this is something that has to be set up in times of peace. When, when y'all are good and you and that person, whether it be mom, dad, uncle, grandma, wife, uh, husband, uh, auntie, uncle, like whoever the person is that you're having this conflict with, before, when y'all are in a good space, bring up the conversation of how, what can we do during a conversation of conflict to check each other's body tones and body language. Because a lot of times the tone of voice that's used and the body language is what's really triggering to the other person and makes makes the person slip into that I'm now hearing what I feel instead of what you said. So mm-hmm. like kind of coming up with a system between y'all when y'all are good that you can implement in times of friction. Like mm-hmm. is there a safe word we could use when the other person is making that face that always triggers you? Or is there a safe word that you that that person can use with you, or is there a, a signal or a cue that that person can use with you when your tone of voice goes into that level where they're gonna shut down? Like, kind of come up with those strategies around tone and body language yeah, I before work the on that. conversation, and then be okay with receiving those checks in in that moment. Like, sometimes we get mad because the other person ain't responding to, hey, you know. I don't like that tone, but sometimes it may be our tone too. That's all. So sometimes being okay with checking yourself, like, okay, if they're having this tone and this body language, what am I doing that's causing that? What do I need to check? Am I, am am I looking angry when I may not necessarily mean to be? Am I, is my confused face more looking like a dismissal face to them? Like kind of your body language and your, your tone can also be helpful because a lot of times those methods of communication are coming through louder than the actual voices. I have um, a problem with that. I need to work on that. This is a new one that I personally like because what I find is it's harder to communicate real fuckery through just text because you're reading it. It forces the logic part of your brain to kind of kick in because it has to read something. So mm-hmm. use technology to text or communicate through a method like Zoom by going into different rooms and using Zoom. That way you can turn your cameras off so you can't see the person's body language. You can mute yourself or each other as as need be to where you don't like you can take that second. But it also takes kind of that like sometimes when you're face to face, the person's energy almost feeds off on you. And now y'all yeah. like raging bulls. But if you're having that same conversation on the phone, sometimes it doesn't go as far because there's no physical threat there. Sometimes there can be a perceived physical threat in our brain of this person's getting louder. 
So you automatically tense up yourself and now things can go left when they don't need to. So like use that, get out of the same room with each other and text each other real quick, like text each other to have this conversation. Use Zoom, something where you're not face to face, but use technology to your advantage and you know what I mean, to kind of give you that separation so it's not as much in your face animosity. Um, yeah. And then last, number eight, be okay going into any conflict with just agreeing to disagree, especially if what you're talking about is something that is completely subjective. Your idea of cleanliness may not be mine. Your uh -huh. idea of being loud may not be mine. Your idea of too much TV may not be mine. So if we're having a conflict, be okay with coming to the issue of like, hey, you are you, I am me. We may not have to agree on this as long as we can respect each other's boundaries on it. I may not like that you watch TV as much as you do, but hey, how is like, maybe we could come up with systems where I still get what I need, but I don't infringe upon you being able to just do that. Why am I like, why do I have to make you come over to my side on every issue? Or you make me come over to your side, like, be okay with sometimes getting to a space where you can just say, you know what? I don't agree. But I respect your right to feel that way. And we don't have to argue about this. Like, we can kind of just, like, is this really worth us not being cool or not being, having a good mother, mother, son relationship or father, daughter relationship or brother relationship or sister relationship or spousal relationship. Like, is this, is this issue and us just not agreeing on it worth all of this extra animosity between us mm -hmm. outside of this issue. We good. Like there's couples who literally have agreed to disagree on religions. One go to the mosque, one go to the synagogue, like, and they don't agree ideologically on that. One may be a Republican, one may be a Democrat. They may not agree ideologically, but they're able to say like this, you, what you are, what you think or what your opinion is on this or what your take is, doesn't necessarily affect us. Mm -hmm. More of a personal thing. And sometimes we're arguing about stuff that is something personal to that person. Like, why do I care which, how you wearing your, your hair or how you, what, what shirt you got on or like, what are we arguing about here? Like, dress how you want to dress. If you mm -hmm. look crazy, you're going to look crazy. Not me. So why do I need to impress my thoughts and opinions on you? So just be okay with agreeing to disagree. Mm -hmm. And that's just the top eight ways to kind of get through and overcome conflicts and conversations and conflicts with loved ones. Oh, yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely going to try out a couple of them things. Whatever. <laughs> it ain't foolproof, but I will say I leave less conversations causing extra harm mm -hmm. and I leave, I leave more, let me reverse that. I leave more conversations without increasing harm and I leave more conversations without feeling like I've been harmed yeah. by using these tactics. And I'm still growing my toolkit because I, like I said, I'm not an expert on this. This is just stuff that I use and, you know, on this show, even though we be joking about stuff or, you know, having our silly moments, like at the end of the day, usually we're trying to, you know, give our perspective in hopes that it helps somebody else or that it resonates with somebody else so that they can use that same information and better themselves and build on it. And, you know, we can all become great together. So that's Tiz's top ways to get through hard conflicts with loved ones. It's good that you brought that up because it's been some a uh, couple of things I've been disagreeing with the past <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Some things I agree with and some things I disagree with. And uh, that brings it in. A lot of things I agree with is the good and a lot of stuff that I disagree with is the fuckery. So we back at it with the good and the fuckery today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, in hip hop news, let's see. Um, now, the good thing about it is I like how Meek Mills handle himself in this situation. A lot of mm -hmm. people may not have mm -hmm. may have may, about, may disagree with Takashi. Oh yeah, him and uh Ratashi Ratatouille <laughs> 69 
or whatever. Yes, sir. Um, so if y'all don't know, man, and I'm pretty sure y'all know because it's been all over the internet or whatever. Yeah. Twitter this blood. fool, this fool's Takashi Six Nine. I, I, he came out of nowhere, um, in the parking lot after this club in Miami, and just with his phone, he was like, "You with security? You with security? You you with the cops? You with the cops?" Now, mind you. Everywhere he ha- he has to go, he has to have security. He's an informant. He is a federal informant. It is documented that he is an agent. You, Judas and Messiah, he was Judas. Amen. <laughs> he Amen. was Judas for everybody. He is literally on TV. Does he not know that this was on TV? Went through and they have a whole meme with him going like this saying, Jim Jones, this guy, Snoop Dogg, all of them, just ratting away to get himself out of it. Master Splinter, no disrespect to Master Splinter, man. I mean, and and, I, and to tell you the truth, I feel like the way it looked from my angle, I feel like because he can't go nowhere without security because right. that's an endangerment on himself. Yep. There's people waiting gonna try for to him. Yeah. It's people waiting for him to be on his own. And nobody would care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like he came out there with his own security and tried to make it look like they were part of Meek Mill's security. Hell yeah. Or whatever. And Meek the dude Mills, that was like trying to pull him away, that wasn't Meek's security. That mm-hmm. was his people's. And he, you darn right, Meek Mill should have security. He is a rap star. Who wears a rap, lot of jewelry. And rap According to and, and a quote from Jim Jones, rap is a dangerous job. Yep. Like, especially if you rap in street stuff and this, that, and the third or whatever. Any rap rappers we done seen shot and killed this past year. You you damn sure right. Cash, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it was a month, it seemed like one after every week there was somebody, you know. Yep. Like he, he should, he should have that security. It would make no sense for him not to have security or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it's just hypocrisy. Like, it's just, and but we all know why he's doing it. He got to make some kind of money. And ain't no like, nice for him right now. He got to make some kind of money. So the only thing he can do is, is make some kind of spectacle yep. or whatever, yep. or just to keep him in the news. So when he come out with stuff, they go right into it. The only thing is, and this is, I find is the good part of him and his fuckery is, that he can make as many spectacles as he wants, he's still going to get low sales. And yeah, it's been, that, it's happens each time. Each time that like, album with Flopper Rooney, that shit went like, double wood. First, first of all, your voice is annoying. I like, I never liked his music. Like, I like, like I sit there the first time I saw him, and I'm like, who is this fool with these? I want to listen to shit like that. I just put in Onyx. Yo, and good. I mean, and then it's like. No, nah, I ain't even going to disrespect Onyx like that. Like, even though he's using the voice, well, I'm not, like, at least I believe what the heck he said. Like, yeah. you know, I believe Sticky Fingers and his cock eye did the things that he said in his raps. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, Sticky seemed pretty official to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I agree. Yeah. yeah. But him, no, it's like, dog, we literally, you're saying all this stuff. That is the complete opposite of your behavior in your Locking songs. But I did, I, I do realize his fan base is just like him or whatever. I, I saw one YouTuber, I, I like, um, I forgot his name, it's um, Deshaun Wiltshire or whatever. He literally pulled it up and then he saw, he looked through the comments of the people that would disagree with, agreeing with um, um, 6 9 and mm-hmm. they all look like a 6 9 Ah, they're all, they're all birds goofy, of a feather. They're all some goofy looking suburban or whatever that look like, you know, like this is a bunch of colors in their head, goofy as heck, you know. <laughs> Not a um his I know riff spirits. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they they all look like they would do some stupid stuff on camera just to get on, pretty much. We all know six nines, six nines a goofball. He's a trash human being. I mean, we'll yeah. just leave it at that. Or whatever. I think one thing you said that, that, that I like though agreed is uh Meek Mill definitely played it the right way. Because mm-hmm. that could have went left, 
yep. some some other type of some other rapper who may not have been as experienced in the game and just you know may not have had as much to lose as me. Mm-hmm. Might have just went ahead and went at him just off the cloud or just off the fact that like they felt disrespected. You know what I mean? You run up on a King Vaughn or somebody like that, that shit could have went left or, or one of them rappers that be packing on uh, what Rondo Rondo and his crew like NBA young boy like that shit would have went up real fast. So, yeah, I've like, seen like that's, little that's, baby. That's Meek showing his 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 maturity and just the fact that like he's he's understanding the game now. He's understanding like how to recognize real threats as opposed to somebody who's trying to get him to do something. So then he ends up in court or he, he you know what I'm saying, goes backwards. So I I I, I, I appreciated Meek kind of just being like, you know what, man, like this dude is a clown. I ain't about to sit there and put my hands on him or none of that. He learning them hove lessons. That's yep. that's what that is. He learned them hove lessons. I will, I will say that um, mm-hmm. and I, uh, I need to look more look uh more into this dude. But that dude whack one hundred or whatever oh, yeah, he was talking a, junk about him. That's game manager and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like I feel like he's just one of the, you know. Uh, he got uh, hit by uh, Mike Tyson on the interview. And that that. I, hey, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just real. saying, like you, like that should give you a clue right there, because Mike is on some peaceful stuff, you know. Like you know what I'm saying. Like correct yourself. I feel like he's one of them people that want to be famous, but don't have the talent or whatever. Yeah, so he's he using the management. Like, but I that, definitely think that don't surprise me much, man. Like he be way like, and it's a lot of gangsters out there in LA. But mm-hmm. I noticed most of them, like most of the real gangsters I noticed, don't be like real rah rah all the time. They had a yeah. quiet moments where they just like, all right, I see you. Okay. Cause they got, they but got every time I see him, he's arguing with somebody. Yeah, cause he, cause real gangsters got real stuff that they don't want other people to know about, and yep. they don't need that spotlight on them. They don't need it. That's gonna make the block hot for them. So. Right. Uh, I don't know too much about him to be saying too much about his him. Gang, so. His gang credentials? Yeah. So I'm yeah. His, his nah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm never going to question like anybody's. I'm not, I ain't, no, I, ain't, I ain't that guy person. I mean, I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia, and that's a street area or whatever, but I'm a nerd. And I ain't, I'm the first one to say I'm not going to be claiming like I'm the most gangster person in the world or whatever. I'm a man. You know, I'm going to yeah. descend myself as a man, but I ain't going to try to prove. I don't got nothing to prove to nobody, pretty Big much. Facts. But, Big facts. All right. but, all right, from one trash human being to another trash human being <clears throat> or whatever. And this just came in today. Now, I'm not the one to wish death on anybody and um, in general and, you know, peace out to the loved ones. But I, this is this one person, I'm not going to get no sympathy from me. But, um Rush Limbaugh has passed away at age 70. Who? Rush Limbaugh. Oh, hell. Yeah. Yeah, they ain't gonna get I no heard sympathy. About that earlier, but, um, I'm gonna I'm say this. Ooh. Never gonna wish death on anybody because you can't come Ooh. back from that. Mm-hmm. I will say this is the first death of this year that I've heard about as far as a, a famous person where I was like, I could see God coming, coming to inflict that karma. Like I feel mm-hmm. like this was a justified. Like uh, I understand. Long I overdue understand kind of I, song. Like mm-hmm. when you spew that kind of toxic hatred and just bullshit for so long. Like that stuff is gonna eventually manifest in your body. And he got exactly what he dished out for years. So God bless his family because I know they're struggling through it. And mm-hmm. again, I don't wish death on nobody, but I understand. Now, because this guy's been doing it for a long time. He's been, like, as a child, I knew that he was a trash human being. Yeah. Like, this is in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Been like, here in this like, day since, we, since we was little. Kids. Like, he, he is basically was the poster child for media racism. Like, he was the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's he's the Fox News before Fox News. He was probably the grandfather of Fox News, to tell you a the truth. A lot of them dudes on Fox News got their inspiration from him. Um, platform. Absolutely, I, I agree. I can't, Tom I can't Kennedy, even. All them dudes, Glenn Beck. Um, um, Tucker Carlson. Tucker, but all he's, them dudes. 
Yeah. Tucker Carlson is an idiot, though. He just looked like an idiot. Like, I don't everything he said, he'll have people up there that he's trying to disagree with, and they make him look stupid every Man, same you goal wear time. Hair like that, it's not a lot cool. under him here. And there's somebody else, and I can't think of the dude's name. He's famous, but I don't even really care enough to even bring him up. But he's like Russ Limbaugh part two or whatever. Was it um Alex it Jones? Bill? Not Alex Jones, Bill but he's crazy. Bill O'Reilly, yes, that guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's yeah, forget him. But all right. So to um explain even further for people that may not be familiar with Russ Limbaugh, because it was like a long time ago when he was really like that. These are a few things, a few of the fuckeries that he has said. Quote, and I quote, you're a foreigner, you shut your mouth or you get out. Xenophobia. Blacks are 12% of the population. Who the hell cares? Racism. Let stupid and unskilled Mexicans do that work. Xenophobia and racism. Have you ever noticed how all composite pictures of wanted criminals look like Jesse Jackson? Stupid. Yeah. Just stupid. Holocaust, 90 million Indians, only 4 million left. They all have casinos. What's complained about? Nationalism, racism, imperialism. Uh, <laughs> Feminism was established so as to allow unattractive women easier access to mainstream society, mainstream oh, of society. Feminism. So sexism. Hey, uh, what is sexism, chauvinism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chauvinism. Yep. If any race of people should not have guilt about slavery, it's Caucasians. Yeah. Take that bone out of your nose and call me back. Women still live longer than men because their lives are easier. What the? It, the NAACP, the NAACP should get a liquor store and practice robberies. We need segregated buses. And I ask you, do you think I, um, you're going to get any mm, sympathy mm, for mm, me? Mm, mm, mm. There's probably a fiery pit somewhere for him right now. He should be, as um, I believe. Uh, um, a friend that I know named um, Sean said in a quote that he he's probably on the um, on that waiting list on purgar uh, purgatory to get his uh, designated pit right now. Yeah, something is some, something is going to be ripping his body his his body apart for eternity. Mm -hmm. sure. Like some like you can't spew that type of hate all the time and be like, oh yeah. If you believe in a heaven or a happy afterlife or a happy reincarnation or whatever the case, like karma in general, but whatever you believe in, it, it, it ain't good for him after this. Like mm -hmm. he'll be judged at some point. And this, I take this as a sign, and I've been taking a lot of things as a sign that things are slowly changing and America is finally getting the karma that they got. That 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 America deserves, and mm -hmm. in general, like I I feel like right now, if like all if you look at politicians, they are starting to look more nervous. You know, more of the citizens are more aware of the the BS that they pull mm -hmm. and everything. So, I'm I'm kind of taking this as a like January six. That was the first sign. A lot a, that opened a lot of people eyes. Mm -hmm. This past year, since mm -hmm. the start of like the protests against police brutality and, and mm -hmm. defund police and like all of these different movements, um, mm -hmm. since the start of that all the way up until now to the insurrection, like I feel like a lot of people who were asleep politically mm -hmm. and socially, they were waking up. Because of mm -hmm. it was on their front doorstep for the first time. They can't, you can't avoid it now. It's right in right. front of your face. Right. You know? it's like It's like we've seen Bloody Sunday every other month for a while now. So I think a lot of people, you know, just like in the 60s when, when Bloody Sunday happened, like that was a kind of a lot of white people's first time and like even knowing that, oh, that's how people be getting treated. 
Mm -hmm. white people in certain areas that just had never even knew that that was a thing down south or, or knew that was a thing in LA or in, in Chicago or in New York. You know what I mean? They didn't know that it was happening. So like to see it on TV in your face, I think this past year, it's woken a lot of people up. The miseducation of America is, is changing. Like it's a lot of white folk that don't even know about their own history. Let a, you know, like let a, let alone, like they know the ideal um, Barney and friends, happy go lucky American history where they're waving flags and stuff like that. But you know, they don't know too much about their history because you're not even supposed to. They, they're waving flags, they got flags for shirts, they got flags for pants, flags for bandanas. And it, and it says that you're not even supposed to do that with the flag that's disrespecting the flag, yeah, in, in, in general. But um, kind of goes back to that thing we were talking about last week when you were talking about uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and like a lot of people who claim to be so political and so rah rah USA don't know the basic tenets of you of the country. They don't know the basic laws, constitutional rights. A lot of them couldn't even tell you what the amendments are in the Bill of Rights. Like a lot of them just don't know at all. They just follow blindly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. We um. Man, what's that dude on Daily News that we always talk about? Kepper. Uh, Jordan Kepper. The white, Jordan Kepper. Jordan Kepper. He, he, always, he always have a segment <laughs> where he's proving that these people don't know nothing about their own country. Well, Whatever. I'll share my emails with you. Uh, what would you say? You, uh, you've, you've read the whole Constitution? Sure That's a am, long, buddy. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty short. It's pretty concise. <laughs> Like, but uh, not very all right. at all. Let me uh, let me go ahead. Continue with the fuckery and the good and the fuckery. All right. So this is one thing that kind of pissed me off. Okay. And I, Kevin on stage talked about it. Patrick Cloud talked about it or whatever. But My it gosh. is Kevin on stage. It's a uh, saw this video that said tips on on dating a black man. And it was by this white girl uh, yep, yep, yep. with a black man. And now she's from Iceland, so she's ignorant <laughs> or oh, whatever. But that's still no excuse because there's Google uh -huh. um, in general. And it was the most tone deaf. Like, I, it made me think, like, do you even really love that black man? Or you just you just like, excuse me, uh, black dick. I, I feel like that's what it is. I think you just like black dick. Because if you really love man, you would be more, you, you know, like, you'd be more empathetic to the situation you brought up in. And, like, yeah. first yeah. thing she said, the first thing she said that triggered me, and she's absolutely right when she said it, it's just she's tone deaf when she said it. And she starts off like this. For some reason, if you start off with for some reason, you're already involved, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Maybe you need to find that reason before you yeah. open your yep. goddamn mouth well, you in good. general. For some reason, black men are sensitive about their culture. Uh, yeah. And where's the caps of stage? Uh, maybe because when we were brought here, we were stripped from our culture. Uh, we were told our culture was demonic um, and that we... we now and we have totally lost all history and knowledge of our culture coming over here yeah, so, so now that we just hold on to what we do have. get half yeah yes. to make have an identity uh, and um, that in general. culture's been demeaned for hundreds of years so mm -hmm. yes we're sensitive about it because we've been told it ain't our culture ain't shit as we watch people watch people steal our culture for hundreds and, of years and literally built their culture on our culture we made everything you you think you made country music no we made country music Rock and roll. You think you made rock and roll? No, we made rock and roll. Elvis is a copycat of Little Richard. Come on, man. Like, Chuck Berry, too. Chuck, I, I saw a, a YouTube video the other day, and it was a white man that basically told us that we, as Black people, have created civilization. Yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, and the funny part is, back in the day, like, European countries would like, or, or European empires would like give us credit. Like back in Greece, you got, uh, who was it, Plato or somebody who was writing about, you know, how 
their philosophers and teachers had to go down to Ethiopia Egypt. and Egypt mm -hmm. to learn their, to, to learn basic everything. So that mm -hmm. they could then bring it back to Greece and teach their people. And they was, they would talk about how like, you know, stuff was shining like the diamonds in the Ethiopia, you know what I mean? Talking about the riches and the wealth that Africa had. So like, it's only in this more recent history that we've been whitewashed and like, made to feel like we ain't the shit but like we've been doing this shit forever like you don't have baseball if you don't have what is it Ta Kurt El Omaha mm -hmm. like if you don't have these if you don't have Dombe boxing and, and and ancient sports like that you don't get to the point where you got MMA if you don't have Savika you don't have bullfight like if you don't have Imhotep that's who Imhotep. it is Imhotep motherfucker was an engineer the first physician he was an artist. He was like coming up with complex calculations. He was a scholar. He was like all of these amazing things. He was a religious leader. Like this dude was the first Renaissance man before the Renaissance was even a twinkle in the world's eye. Like, now you, we've, been, you know, we've been doing this, bro. When they say black history is American history, no, black history is world it's history. history. Absolutely. Absolutely. You wouldn't even have history if it was us, because we the one that got <laughs> made made all those classes in the first place. So whatever, Bro, believe you be mad. We had the first libraries. Exactly. You know, exactly. you know, you you couldn't study the history of the world without coming to Africa to go to the libraries that was there. So like, because yeah. one, so put the science into it because Africa's in the middle of the Earth and the first place that the sun hits. So if the sun and sun is the thing. That brings life to the earth. So where would the first humans be? Logically. Now, mind you, it's you can't be mad. That's a, it's a reason that melanin works how it does. Mm -hmm. It's a reason why some of y'all have to get melanin shots. Like, literally, and, the further away from the original source, like, dark, deep, dark pigmentation was the first color of humans because they mm -hmm. live closer to the equator so they had mm -hmm. to have those melanin to protect them from UV light. As mm -hmm. people migrated away from that, you got lighter pigmentations because the need for that melanin was a lot less the further you got away from the equator mm -hmm. and the further mm -hmm. you got into colder uh, climates. So like literally you can trace all the way back, just follow the melanin. It'll lead you right back to the source every time. Right. And being that we made this history and we are for like 400 years was told that we had nothing to do with that and we didn't make anything. Yes, we're sensitive. If somebody, if you did something for somebody and they said that, no, you didn't do that for me, you would be mad too. And that's what made Especially me mad about gave quality craftsmanship. Yeah. And, and that's what made me bad about her because I know as a woman, there is something that there is yep. something that she is sensitive about. Yep, that you don't get credit for around the house, that you would cuss him out if he exactly. forgot to mention that you did it. Exactly. He mention that you was the one that take care of the house and, and, and made sure that he got his student loan or, made, or, or was there to support him through whatever he was trying to do, or mm -hmm. you was the one that was bringing home the bacon in some cases. Let you forget to give that white lady some credit for something. He ain't going to hear the mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. You wonder why he says about, about his culture. And he's been basically told that he ain't, he ain't done nothing. And any race would be sensitive about their culture. If you culture. go you go to India and you tell them what they're doing is wrong, and I think yeah, that's yeah. called ethnocentrism uh, ethnocentrism yep. or whatever. Go ahead. Look at you bringing out terms. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, my mom's a teacher, man. This <laughs> is mom's a teacher. If if you go to India and you say, hey, everything y'all doing is wrong or whatever, let me eat this burger, which y'all find uh, right in front of you and y'all find cow sacred or whatever, they'll look at you crazy. If you yeah. go to Japan, you go you go to China and you say all this stuff that they believe in, um, whether it's Shinto or Bu Buddhism or whatever uh -huh. is wrong, they're going to look at you crazy. Absolutely. If if you are Christian and, I, and, and, and you don't have to test this, if you a Christian Boy. and you tell a Christian that none of that stuff is real Ima just imagine how many Bible verses you're going to get smacked in the face with that day immediately so, you, immediately. so don't, don't even go 
So let me get back to her. Oh, whatever. She even, I, I went in a rabbit hole. I actually saw that she has a YouTube video. She has multiple videos about this subject. And each video is just as tone deaf as the last one. And what really, really pissed me off is not even her. It's the simple fact that that dude is just sitting there like, yup, mm-hmm, yup, like, get out. Like, yup, mm-hmm, Black men yeah. are starting to lose their spines. Now, I ain't gonna put it on black men, dog, because this, I already know what type of dude this is, or whatever. He would, Certain men, period. He, he, because right. he, he, she asked him, like, how come you only dated white women, or whatever, whatever. And you can look at him, and you can see why. You can look look right at him, and you can see why, or whatever, because now he probably would re reply back like as the black woman would probably run over him or whatever. But you can't even use that as an excuse because that white woman is running you over on video. Because she's saying that shit, and you sitting there, yes, man. Yeah. Yo, the disrespectful stuff that she said. They said she said for some reason. Um, I'm from Iceland, and we just say, um, we just call our parents and everything by their name. Well, you're not in Iceland no more. You're in America. So she feels some, they have a whole, she has a whole video of how to react with black parents. It's the most disrespectful shit in the world. Yeah, and I'm a like, black parent by their first name. You better throw a miss or a miss on the front of that. I will smack you. <laughs> you, know what I'm yeah. you better I will smack you like I wish my son would call me by my damn name and it's, that's just it. it's like he lost he lost his balls or something she got him trapped up and that's why I say that I don't even think she you, they call it cuckold exactly he's cuckold exactly. like the he man just, in the uh, great Gatsby book you said, she said she said for some reason um, black men are sensitive to about the culture and then here, here you come to the side. I'm not sensitive. Oh, you want a cookie? What do you want? A, you want a special prize? <laughs> you know, I literally want wanted. To, I, I'm not. I'm not a person that employs violence unless I'm watching an action movie or, or drama and stuff, or it's UFC. Or okay, maybe I do a little bit. But <laughs> but I wanted to jump in my phone through that YouTube vid. With a flying fist to his face, like you stupid. <laughs> like, get your balls on, back, man. On, Be a man. Yeah. Like, yep. like, I, I look. I'm not the one. I'll say, I'm not the one. I'm not against that racial data at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. never. I'm not against it at all. Like, I've, I've dated Spanish women. I've dated Asian women. I, you know, and I love my black women. My mom's black. His mom is black. I don't understand them. So I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm not against it at all. But if that lady, if that girl doesn't seem like she's gonna be right there in the front line with you, yeah. then that's not the white woman you should have. Yeah, we don't need no more Baby. pacifists on our hand. We need people that are gonna be allies because mm -hmm. the struggle is real. We need a rainbow coalition like Fred Hampton was talking. Like we can't, if you're gonna be with us and you're from another race, you gotta be down to go through our shit. Yeah, uh, and and be and, there. And I'm, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, and I'm gonna say this right now. Like, um, black men, are, black people are the first one in the front line defending other races. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever we go through, everything that you go through as another race, we already been through it, and we're going to go through it first. Yep. You know, with the coronavirus, they say it's an uprising of like of of asian um just discrimination in, yeah. in general we've been, been through that and by the people that y'all be calling to actually come help y'all them same mm -hmm. people come on the scene and harass us worse mm -hmm. or us worse so like what what, what side do you think because at, at the end of the day you know and I, I might be going on a tangent and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with um speak your speech, advice Pat. speak your and speech, go back Pat go back to the topic but man that man yo that shit pissed me off when i saw that yo like that, yeah, was, that was that was a very cringe word i was triggered just like come on bro so triggered like yo so head crack like dog like what's wrong with you like you you're get out 
you're definitely get out or whatever. But I won't get on that. I won't get on that, but there was nothing good about that. The only thing good about that was Kev on stage and Patrick Cloud jumping on him. And and YouTube and TikTok, they said, I think they made a video about TikTok is mad at us. Yeah, they should be. The whole world should be. Whatever. Get you, you stupid bitch. <laughs> in, this, in this time and age, like you got to be a little more aware, mm-hmm. um, in what you're saying. I guess you know what I mean. Like you got to kind of think it out a little bit more and have some type of something to go with that. Like if you're gonna make a statement like that, then have some 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 that you about to drop or some facts to back it up or some data or something. But you can't just be talking about somebody else's culture like that. And I hope you're gonna and continue getting. Sure. I hope you continue to get that check as a YouTuber because after this, I don't think you're going to get no job anywhere else, man, because we're going to put you on Front Street. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, this is my last fuckery. <laughs> this is my last one. Come on with it. Oh, whatever. Um, it's been more it's been more fuckery than good, it seemed like, on this, but... Um, That's all right. The world is... The good... The world is. The good is the impeachment trials is over and y'all can go back to y'all regularly scheduled programs. The fuckery is it didn't do nothing like it before and the Democratic Party is weak. The Democratic Party is weak. And right there, and my target for this is Nancy Pelosi. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I say this. Now we're going to get on Nancy. And then we're going to get right on Nancy right here because... Like I told, like I said before, when 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 we got um, before we got Biden in the office, and and right after, we need to be on their neck. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi has been numerous times on video said that um, we need to get Trump out, but we we need a strong Republican Party. Stop right there. No, we don't. Yeah. The Republican Party has been strong. Period. Even when they don't have a president. Yes, even when they even when they don't have a president in office, they still run everything. Obama couldn't do nothing his whole That's eight true. years. Yeah, like you know, black people, yeah. we may be mad. We may be mad at Obama because he wasn't able to do a lot of things that we thought he was going to do and everything. But a lot of the main reason because of that is because the whole the whole legislative branch was mostly Republican. Yeah. Or whatever, because now we they just stonewalled him at every at every chance they got. Everything that he could do, pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, like that's why I feel some type of way when I hear about like Obama ain't do nothing. He didn't do nothing because he's only one person against the whole Republican Party, and his party is weak, and it's so weak that they say they are bowed down to the, their opposition, saying we want to we want them to be a strong party now the reason why i feel like nancy pelosi is saying that is because her donors are probably republican and she is good as fundraising and she doesn't want those donors to go against her she wants to be able to keep those donors that are still republican that like republicans because they still want those tax breaks oh yeah so and that's why I keep saying we need to get all these old old politicians out. Yes, yes, yes. These old farts out of here. If they ain't out updated, if if they can't go into their computer and flip a PDF file on their own, they need to go. <laughs> okay? All right, right. Like, they all need to go. Like, like, if you were born in 1930, you shouldn't be making decisions for 2021. Like, if you were born you two Shoot. set your ways at that point. Like, n- your way of thinking doesn't even, com- is, is not even compatible with the time. Yeah. Like, you, 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 it's like, it's like a person that buys a regular TV and want Netflix. That's what these mm. politicians are. Like, why can't I get Netflix? I'm mad I can't get Netflix. Whatever. You have a regular TV. This, you, got you don't even have the connections to connect to you, you don't the have the HDMI cord, sir. I don't like internet, but I want Netflix. You you <laughs> one of them. We they need to go. They're outdated or whatever. Yeah. Like, like you went by a who old hoopty or whatever. 
Most yeah. people don't like old cars unless they unless you're gonna unless you're in the classics. And unless unless and with classics, they still update it with the maintenance. They keep updating the maintenance. That's how they become and stay classics or whatever. Yeah. Even those, you know who's a classic? Um uh, uh I would call him a classic low rider. That's Bernie Bernie Sanders. Oh my he's god, he's a classic. Bernie. Oh now, but, Bernie. But Mitch and Nancy, Big Mitch. Or whatever, they they're like a Model T. With, <laughs> they're like a Model T you running on cranking fields. up this one of the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they just <laughs> just burning up gas, trying to get whatever money out of people so they can keep running because they're they career politicians. The they get their career politicians. They get a uh, they get a, a a raise each year, and I and like I said before, if if I do a horrible job at my job, I'm going to get fired. I'm not going to yep. get a raise. They like are the doing. Worst suspended. I mean, they I are doing. Be suspended. Yep. They're doing a crap job. Like even if it, even if you're not doing a bad job, if you're doing the bare minimum, you can still yeah. get fired because there's probably other people that are doing above and beyond. You ain't gonna get they're, no raise. They're doing a crap job, and and they're still with healthcare. So yeah, people get these people out of office, man. I vote all the time. Like, you know, like I know some of our black people say Hashtag voted at get rid of the farts. Hashtag freedom jeans. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they are. They some old old pair they don't of rustler yeah, Umar jeans. jeans. They just they, they and just they need to go in the bullshit, man. And they need to go. And all so that was the good of the fuckery. Um and go one this week, man. I enjoyed that one. And then this leads off into an, my next cho- topic, because which is more fuckery or whatever. Um, as y'all know, it's the episode of fuckery. It's just all fuckery. fuckery as, as y'all know, um, Judas and Messiah came out or whatever. Yes. Along yes. with it, yes. along with it, uh, that soundtrack or whatever. I still haven't listened yeah, all the way through. Yeah, man. And the main reason why I haven't been able to listen all the way through is because I'm still stuck on that Nipsey Hustle and Jay Z, um, Jay Z song. It's it's just classic. It's grown man Cove music. Is that nigga? It is grown man music, which leads to me. I was on Facebook and I saw a post, and the post mm-hmm. pissed me off. The, the post pissed me off because it, it had nothing to do with nothing. Um, as you know, in, in the song, uh, Jay-Z has this line, and it says, um, um, what did he say up there? You, you, let, you let them crackers storm your capital, but they put their feet on your desk. Man, I, I need to go back to rapping because I could have said this a lot better. You, you let them crackers storm your capital, put their feet up on your desk, and yet you talking tough to me. I lost all my little respect. Mm-hmm. Which fits because he's basically talking about Nancy Pelosi. Like I said, we yeah. Democrats. <clears throat> yeah. We Democrats. It all ties in. You, you, so on. You preaching there, brother. I so I'm on. Uh, survey says there is no lie detected here. Mm-hmm. So I'm on Facebook. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. And then something pops up or whatever. <laughs> And in this in this post, they said, I wonder if Jay-Z will be held to the same standard and ridicule as that country singer in quotations, them crackers, I, in hashtag, I think not, just saying. Mm-hmm. The country singer they're talking about is this guy named Morgan Wallen. And evidently, um, Morgan Wallen, he's, he's um, in the country. I don't listen to country music or whatever because I... I got PTSD thinking about country music because they all all I hear right now is trucks and Confederate flags when I hear country <laughs> music. That's all I that's all I see. Now one of these days maybe I'll get over that PTSD, but mm-hmm. nah, the, the, the January sixth add on to that PTSD, and I'm pretty sure they had country music in the background when they stormed it. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> they had a lot yep. going on. So. Um, Morgan Wallen was caught saying the N word. Now, the way he said it, he was actually drunk with his friends. Who was this? And 
Morgan Wallen is this country music singer. Evidently, um, in the country music world, yeah, he's the, evidently the hot. I saw an article. He's the hottest new country music singer, or whatever, in the, in the country music world. Um, so Morgan Wallen is the new Billy Ray Cyrus. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm probably wrong about that too. So better. But um, he sounds he that com- name just sounds racist. I'm sorry. No offense, but that name just sounds like. Now all I hear is. Now he did. Now mind you, he did not say the N word to an actual black person. He was actually was talking to one of his friends, from what I'm understanding, and he was saying, "You you pussy ass motherfucker, and they called him you you in 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 no." Nigger, and I'm like, I haven't seen the video, so I'm not sure if his friend was black or not. But right. I heard, I heard it because I they were Why talking so about it. Using it though? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna lead to. <laughs> that's what I'll lead to. And then it's not like he's saying nigga with the A, and that he's still with hard me. Hard ER on there. Yeah, and, and and I feel like he he put that hard ER in there because he can't help it. His his southern drawl, and he's been around so many white people so long that he probably ingra- he can't help but say it with that hard ER mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, long term, um, so he got ridiculed throughout you know the social medias and media in general. That he got dropped from his label and everything. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to address this. The reason why. Jay Z is not gonna can say whatever he wants. Um, in in general, I'm gonna say as far as music label terms is because he owns himself musically. Like mm-hmm. he has more pull. He's not the artist. He's the industry. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. You know he has that power he yeah. built he he's in his career he's done the work and everything yeah. that he needs to do so he can have that freedom and control to say whatever he wants to you know and i'm actually going to say what i actually replied back okay on on that um i'm gonna say yeah. like shit fuck that like at the end of the day, too, cracker doesn't have the same connotation or negative, long-lasting stigma that mm-hmm. has on it. Like that, that's, like, that's cracker wasn't used in a term to rape your mother or castrate your father or kill your people or brutal or brutalize your people. Nigger has been used in that way toward our people for hundreds of years. So you gotta stay. It's it's a false equivalence to even try to say like it's the same. That, or, or to that, try to make that, that point. Nah. That term cracker actually brought, brought me back to what we were talking about earlier that some white people don't even know their own history. Cracker, the reason why they call white people cracker is because when they make when they crack the whip, that's the sound it makes. Come on, man. So that's not even Come an on, insult. Man. That's not oh. even an insult no. at all. Nigger is an insult. You can look it Very up in the so. dictionary. The definition <laughs> of it is insulting. Regardless insulting. of insulting. Before you add the racial overtones on it, it's already an insult. And 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 somebody actually put that on the post and she's like, I never even heard that. I'm a white person. I never even heard that. I know because you so were learned. Yes. If you don't you, know, don't say it. Or, or admit when you're saying this, look, I may be ignorant to this. I may, I may need to be taught and then say your statement. But don't say no shit out there like you're an expert on it. And you're, you're literally the first couple of comments and sitting there schooling on some shit. Oh, I didn't know. All, all I... Shit. All I saw was all live matter responses. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm against all hatred. I'm against all hatred. I'm against all that. Like, nah, man, we've been peacefully protesting for 50 years. We we've been peacefully at in in coexistence dealing with barbaric treatment for past five hundred years. Yep. You, I've said this before. You can't go up to a person and say "fuck you" and expect that person to hug you back. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. That's not so. This is this is my reply. I said, Jay and any black person has the divine right 
to call a racist anything we choose until someone builds a time machine and erase 500 years of us being silenced, mistreated, killed, tortured while we built this country that we never get credit for building. That's the only way that's a double standard. The USA has never rectified its 500 years of crimes against humanity. So what you've seen is America finally beginning to see its karma. I'm tired of people making excuses and giving sympathy for those capital invaders that came with Confederate flags and Nazi flags. And when we get shot with no gun on our person by a cop, the first thing the media do is take that victim's humanity away from them and demonize them. If you're not racist and you're, and you're white, he is not talking about you. So Correct. what's the issue? Correct. Correct. Well, what's the issue? Shit. I don't have nothing to say after that. That was exactly what. Yes. Uh, what they said. It's it's the it's the truth for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah I didn't notice that. You you put that. Yeah, that was. You said it's, everything that should have been said right there, Pat. It's 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 a false comparison and, and it's reaching. And I'm like, why 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 do white folks want to be oppressed so bad? Because it's not fun. anything somebody it's, else do, they want to take it. They it want to capitalize off oppression now. Now they want to be the victim. No, everybody did nothing to you. It's, it's but not your fun. Own people. You did something to each other, but we ain't do nothing to you. At we didn't all. ask to be stripped from our land. We didn't ask for our culture to be taken. We didn't ask for you to press your religion on us. We didn't ask for you to uh, brutalize, kill, rape, maim, and torture us for all these years. We don't ask to be shot. We don't ask for you to ridicule our culture and laugh at us and the things that we have to do out of the oppression that you put us under. And then you take those things and commercialize all them. We didn't ask for any of this. And, then, and to this day, black people still are peaceful. We mm -hmm. still out here like we could go the fuck off if we wanted to and be completely justified. And we still mm -hmm. sitting here trying to talk to y'all like some civil people. What is wrong with y'all? Get Y'all need melanin. That's what's wrong. Now, mind you, I'm, not, right. talking, I'm not talking about the white people that's actually on our side as good people no, uh, we're in talking general. About these ones that are still ignorant at this point. Like, there's a lot of good allies from all races that are down with us and they see our struggle and they actually understand and get it. And they may mm -hmm. not be able to empathize with us, but they're definitely able to sympathize with us and stand with us. And they're not with it either. But when we talk about these racist crackers, which is what they are, still with that overseer mentality, mm. they gotta be called out. They gotta be like, like they don't get to write to rewrite history and rewrite the rules. Mm. No, you fucked us over. So if we wanna call you what you are, deal with it. We've dealt I'm, with it for I'm, 500 years without any provocation. I'm sorry some of them may be your cousins. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That some of them maybe your grandfather, your father, your 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 mother, your aunt, your sister, your brother, or whatever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They still crackers. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Else how Actually, to, how to react to disrespect? I'm not the sorry right at all. However, we feel. Because I'm I'm, I'm, I will, I'm lying my tail off. I'm not sorry at all. I'm not or whatever. Because if it if if I had a cousin and or whatever, he's out here doing crazy stuff, and he, uh, whatever, he's robbing, killing people, or whatever, he's doing whatever, and and he gets caught, and it's on the news, or whatever. I I can't make no excuses for him. No. I no, can't. No, we, ain't, we ain't about to justify no bullshit either. Ex exactly. So right. why can't you do that with them? Like, on, man. Preach that it don't make any sense. Like, like, Pat, you own one tonight, boy. You, you, are, um, you, are, you are firing them I'm all. I get it. Stuff, we, we're, we're not taking your jobs. You, you, you're saying they, they're coming over. You, I hear people talking about the Indian people taking all our jobs and stuff. No, they're not. Because those Indian people are going to schools and they got to go to the highest quality schools so they can even make it to America. And, exactly. you, and your country is, is not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. So no. No, we're not. We're not taking the jobs. And if we are getting jobs or whatever, nine times out of ten, we're getting paid lower than our white counterparts. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
It's so, not even close. There's no, there's no excuse. You, you have, you, there's no justification. There's, there's nothing that like kill that noise. Like it's, it's done. Like it don't make any sense. Like you can't. We're hitting you with logic and facts over and it's, over. It's again. no longer okay for you to play ignorant. You got to either be an anti-racist, or you're again like you're either with us and we all together, or you're against us. And that's it's, period. And, and it's no way around that at this point. It's no excuses it's, no more. It's so pitiful now because yeah. even we we hit on with logic and facts, and they they so against the logic and facts that's in. They even brought up another term called alternative facts. There's no such thing as alternative facts. It's either it's facts or it's bullshit. When it's you are fiction. unintelligent and you lack basic critical thinking and reasoning skills, you're always going to go to what's easiest for you, which is to make yourself feel better as opposed to actually deal with the issue. Because if you deal with the issue, you know you're not actually mentally able to deal with the issue. Your brain doesn't even fire on that wavelength. Cognitive dissonance. When mm -hmm. you get some new information that disagrees with everything that you've been taught before, and you you feel that tension, and it's in your head. Preaching that good word tonight. Oh, whatever. America is cognitive dissonance all day. Yes. Yes. All day, because we yes. present you facts all the time. It's, you, I know you feel it because you can see it. You can see it teetering in their head, like. Yeah. He's right. He's right. They probably when they listen to this, they they probably say, "Oh, why is that nigga so right?" But the thing oh, is, when you admit you're wrong, hmm? there's a inherent obligation that goes with that to then make it right, and that's the part that scares them because if they oh. admit that they are wrong, if they admit that they've been wrong for holding these barbaric and archaic ideologies for all this time, then what do they then have to do after that to make it right? Mm -hmm. That's the scary yeah. part for them. Mm -hmm. They want to they wanna get away with it without having to feel bad for it. They want to get away with it without having to be actually accountable for yeah. what's happened. So they know we write a lot of times, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, they, they want to get around it and not address it or act like it's not there because then they don't they, they don't have to have them nightmares at night about what the, what, what the history states mm -hmm. nightmare at the fear of a black planet and then you know this culture for some reason it's a culture this culture is so um being dumb is cool in this culture yeah. yeah and it's always been that way it's like look at look at the media um just look at the characters you see on tv and, and, and the cartoon characters like Everybody's a Johnny Bravo, man. They like some cool Aesthetic, dude, but dumb as it, it looks cool outside, but nothing there. Nothing there, man. Yep. It's Instagram models, like just I don't the our past president. Like it's just for hey, some reason me, it's hey. it's cool to be dumb. Yeah. And then when they get caught up on they they can't like they just make up another lie. It, uh, I'm gonna stop because, yeah, I'm gonna go on a whole nother rant. I told man, this <laughs> shit just be pissing me off, you, man. <laughs> tonight, sir, like you, again, survey says no lies detected here, man. You are speaking that good truth to power, man, and that's no. that. I have no issues with it, my brother. Stupid Not motherfuckers make me mad. Uh, I, I can't <laughs> make me mad. Uh. You own it. You own it. You are hitting on all cylinders, man. Um, but yeah, guys, um, keep up with our conversation. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. Do you agree with us? Do you think that we're incorrect? What are your thoughts and opinions? What are, what does your data say? What do you feel about it? If you're a person of another race, how, like, what do you feel on this? Like, what is your perspective? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments on all, uh, platforms, man, um, we are really enjoying interacting with um, our listeners, our viewers. It, it oh, really fine. brightens up my day every time I get a notification of a new comment because that's a chance to share my perspective with a new person, but also learn mm. another person's perspective, which in the end just makes me a better person because I'm able to not just stay within my own brain, which is 
a lot of the issue with these people who are stuck in these old mindsets. They're so stuck in their own brain, they're unwilling to learn mm-hmm. about other perspectives outside of their own. They just want to keep reinforcing their opinion as opposed to being open to, well, maybe there's more I can add on to my opinion, or maybe I even need to switch my opinion. Because maybe I don't have the, all of the facts together. So, like, we got to be willing to just continue this dialogue and just learn from one another, man. That's that's really the key is just for us. And it's not, to, it's not cool to be dumb, man. It's not cool to no be dumb. Way, Let's c- kill that. If we can kill that, then we probably can kill. We could solve a lot of problems, man. And when we say a lot dumb, of these. Not school smart. Not necessarily saying you had to have the best grades in school or you, you, you had to graduate. What we're saying is, seeking out more knowledge to make yourself a more learned person. So mm-hmm. like, even if you dropped out in the eighth grade, if you've taken the time to still learn how to read better, read more books to enhance your knowledge, sometimes you may be more intelligent than the person that's been through the, 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 acad- like the actual normal academic route because you're not as socialized. You've been allowed to open yourself up to way more stuff than what might've been forced fed to you otherwise. So like, we can't be out here being dumb sheeple. Mm-hmm. Lemmings off the, off the cliff. Like we have to be able to critically think because that's how we actually are able to have the dialogue necessary to push humanity forward. Not just us as a black race, but that's first. But then as humanity, like how do we get from where we are right now to a place where we can actually live in harmony with one another and this world? And, and it starts with just basic critical thinking and like being willing to learn. Don't be yeah. a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Yeah, because y'all, yeah. yeah. That's not they're gonna, bad. That's not they're gonna be they're gonna be lost when the aliens come and just <laughs> Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna have to open mm-hmm. your brain, otherwise you're mm-hmm. gonna open it to eat it. Mm-hmm. Well, man, as we speak about unity a little bit here as we ending off, man. Um, I did want to take a second, you know. Uh we started this last week, but I feel like it's just a good idea to keep it going and keep on supporting our people. So uh, for the Black Business of the Week, I want to shout out the Butterfly Effect. That's D-A-A, Butterfly Effect. Um, the website is D-A-A hyphen B-E dot com. Um, and basically, they are a self-owned, Black-owned um, printing company, and they can literally, cust- they make custom anything. So if you want custom sneakers, if you want custom print uh, hoodies, if you want stuff with your logos on it, if you want stuff that has whatever, if you can design it, they can create it and bring it to life for you. Um, that's the Butterfly Effect, D-A-A hyphen B-E dot com on Instagram, all caps. It's at D-A-A underscore B-E underscore. Um, but their stuff is dope. Um, my homeboy, um, one of my best friends, Bo, he he be rocking the clothes. And when I tell you, like, it looked like something you buy at the store. Like, I was like, oh, who is that? He was like, well, yeah, these are my peoples. You know what I mean? But it's official tissue. Go to the website. Check them out on Instagram. Um, they can literally put anything on anything. So if you got some ideas out there or you're starting a, a new brand or you need some shirts for that company, Picnic, or you just want to have some new fresh gear that's one of one that everybody don't have, like that you can say that this is a real exclusive. The Butterfly Effect, man, can hook you up. And I think it's real dope because she named the company the DAA. The reason it's not DA is DAA is uh, she named it after her three sons. So I thought that was just real dope and just, you know, support black businesses, man. Like the only way we can grow and really get a real voice is if we start with that economic piece, man, and mm-hmm. supporting each other and supporting good quality black businesses. I think that is key to making sure those businesses grow, thrive, and then we're able to build off of that momentum and continue that progress in other sectors. So the butterfly effect, go check them out, man. They, they, they do good work champs. I, I, I can, the partners endorse this product. Oh, show. Oh, show. Um, as always, Follow us on, you know, YouTube. Keep on subscribing. We're up to 147 now. And I feel like the cool part about our fan base is like, it really feels like a family in the comment section. Um, It feels like people are coming in and not only getting their mind fed, they're getting their soul fed and they're able to 
sometimes, you know, peacefully disagree with us. Like we're not mm-hmm. out here saying that we got all the answers. We just want to have a conversation so that we can all grow. And I feel like that's what we really cultivate. And I'm really proud and thankful of all of the people that have taken time to subscribe to us on YouTube and um, any other platform uh, that you're listening to us on, all of our subscribers and listeners on Apple, Spotify, uh, PodServe, Libsyn, Podchaser, Breaker, uh, what else is there? Anchor, whatever you listen to us on. on Amazon, on. Kindle. Yes. Thank y'all for supporting us, man. Thank y'all for being part of the pod squad and really being part of the family because that's what we trying to grow is like a real family environment where we can keep on having these weekly conversations with not just us three anymore, with all of you out there. And we open to hear any comments, suggestions, or just your personal thoughts on what we talked about tonight so we can keep this conversation going, man. Um, New episodes of... Well, this episode, as always, will be dropping tonight, which is Wednesday night at midnight, or you can say Thursday morning at midnight, whichever way you prefer to flip it. Um, mm-hmm. And that's Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we'll also, well, might not get it out by midnight, but it'll definitely be out by Thursday morning when you wake up to go for your morning drive, because I forgot. I still got to edit this, and we're recording this right now, and it's 1059. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, it'll definitely be out, uh, if nothing else, early Thursday morning. Uh, we got our Friday show. Um, you didn't ask us, but usually we're on Saturdays at 9 30, but this week we're going to be um, on a Friday. Um, just we got some scheduling conflicts, so we're going to be on Friday night. So please pull up to Facebook or YouTube and join us in that conversation. Um, the chats be hilarious. And a lot of times, some of the best moments on the show actually come from what the people in the chats are saying to us. Oh my God. Yeah, y'all Friday. hilarious. So you will see all three partners and hear all three partners live and in full effect. Um, and yeah, man, just, we love y'all. What you got for him, Pat? Um, oh yeah. want to give a special shout out to Matriarch uh, Gallery or whatever. Yes, That's why you yes, do this um, the studio slash tattoo parlor out here in Hampton, North Mallory. I um, also want to give a shout out to my, um, my friend Lily. She's like first place right now. She's about, she's trying to, um, uh, get the cover of Ink Magazine or whatever. Oh, respect, respect, man. Go vote for her, man. What's you want to drop her her information or whatever? How people can vote? Now nah, they've been hating on her, man. They dropped her. Um, um, uh, man, they people been um reporting her pictures and everything. But um, y'all yeah, just stay up, uh, stay on my Facebook or whatever, and my um, in my Instagram uh, at the Padawan. I'm always putting up a link for or whatever, letting them know, you know where you can vote for the voting. Voting is free. Um, you can, you can vote daily uh, each day. Uh, she's like at the third one uh, right now. So oh, we got respect. one more day, respect. one more day left. And then she basically um, win that group and she's going to like the semi final round or whatever. So um, uh Basically, I want to big her up or whatever. She's a very close friend of mine and everything. And um, yeah, um, we're gonna get this back together because I know they they basically they've been hating on it so much that they had to they shut down her Instagram and oh, everything. Wow. But she's still first place, so that should tell you something. That's respect. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I keep y'all all updated on my um on my Facebook and Instagram about that and everything. And um, once again, man, uh. Love and appreciate all the comments and the community with the pod squad or whatever. And um, big ups, man. Uh, um, the other third of the partners, Face Mob, yes, man. Yes, 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 yes. We love you, bro. Man, we love you. We wish y'all, to, wish you the best, and we'll see you Indeed. Friday. Indeed, man. Can't wait to have the whole crew back together again. <laughs> um, follow us um, after you finish voting for Lily on uh, on Pat's Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Come on over to the partners. We're at the partners on everything, pretty much. Uh, you can find us everywhere. Um, if you ever want to just drop in and have a conversation, jump in the comment sections on any other post on there or holler at me on Twitter. I'm always uh, on Twitter just giving my giving my three cents on whatever might be going on. So definitely, you know, shout us out, man. We, we really want to continue this community vibe and just keep these conversations going every week, man. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all thoroughly. Um, if you ever want to rep and just show everybody that you're part of the pod squad, please feel free to go to either one of the stores. 
you can go to the partner's closet at teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one or you can go to face and co which is faces uh personal line that he's designing um you can go there by going to teespring.com backslash stores backslash face dash co dash two so support 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 um if you want to financially support us you can holler at us on the cash app at partner tis one i mean dollar sign partner tis one you can go to our buy me a coffee which is our preferred yep. method because you can get memberships you can get exclusive content um people don't buy my coffee they get all of the behind the scenes no edits when we're fucking up when we're talking crazy shit between the uh i fuck up like I fuck no up all edits, time. no filters <laughs> you get the raw partner show every week and um if you sign up for memberships, you'll also get exclusive content. You'll get links to where we'll have uh, special member shows just for y'all, where we just get together with our members and just shoot the shit just like we do on the podcast, but it'll just be exclusively for y'all. Um, y'all get episodes dropped earlier than everybody else, um, especially the video episodes. So buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners is how you can support us there. You can drop a $1 donation all the way up to signing up for a $5 membership. Um, we also got our Patreon back up. I figured why not, just in case somebody is just, that's the, their preferred method of supporting. So you can also go to patreon.com backslash the partners and support us there as well. Um, the membership perks are pretty much set up the same way on either platform. So whichever you choose, I'll let us, man. Um, but we love y'all. As always, man, I am one third of the partners. Signing out, it's your boy Tiz along with the other third, the Padawan here. Love y'all, man. <laughs> Peace. We working. We working. Donations. Donations. <laughs> Hashtag Freedom Jeans, the real victim of the FDMG. Hashtag Freedom Jeans. We out.